It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Prologue. Here's the chapter. Enjoy. Ed. Blast. Prologue. I received an invitation to the award ceremony. One day, I, Kukazuka, was suddenly transported to a different world. With the help of cheat skills such as, creation, and, dexterity, I was able to get my life as an adventurer into shape when a major incident occurred. The Black Dragon of Extreme Annihilation. The Black Dragon that drove the ancient civilization of this world to extinction 4000 years ago had returned to life. Thanks to the help of Iris, a female adventurer of the dragon folk race, and the spirit ring that was entrusted to me by Milia. I managed to defeat the Black Dragon in a battle of life and death. The damage to the town was kept to zero, and it was a happy ending without any complaints. I'm really glad. Ten days have passed since the victory party, but the city of Un is completely at peace, and the people have completely returned to their previous way of life. As for me, these days, I've been exploring the mountains to the west of the city, gathering materials for, creation. A life of leisurely gathering, the life of a carefree adventurer. In the city, I'm sometimes called the Dragon Slayer, but to be honest, I don't like violent stuff. Peace is the best, after all. Ku, I saw a cluster of nose grass over there. What should we do? Of course, I'll collect it. It's a good material for heal potion. In addition to me, there is another person accompanying me on this collecting expedition. Iris Note Fafner, a dragon folk woman. She is very beautiful in appearance. Her hair is long and red, held together with yellow ribbons. Together it looks like the color of a sunset. Her eyes are a beautiful crimson, shining as if they are filled with melted jewels. Despite her clumsy personality, she is very serious at heart, and her knowledge and experience as an A-rank adventurer are very reliable. When it comes to combat, we are strangely in tune with each other, and personally I feel as if we had been fighting together for many years. In reality, though, it's only been a little over a month since we met. The two of us walked through the mountains and eventually arrived at a cluster of nose grass. Let's go and collect some. I'm going to take a look around. Okay, I'll leave you to it. I knelt down on the ground and reached for the grass. When I thought to myself to put it in there, item box. A small magic circle appeared on the ground. The nose grass was enveloped in a golden light and was sucked into the magic circle. I repeated the process over and over again, and in about five minutes, I had 300 bundles of nose grasses in my possession. Phew. Good work, Ku. Iris came back from her exploration just as I was finishing my collection. It looks like there's a lot of wet mushroom growing near the water over there. Okay. Let's go there. Dot thanks for helping me out. No problem. It's what I like to do. Iris has been working with me for a while now. It's almost like we're in a party. I think we should file an official report with the Adventurers Guild. When you form a party, you are assigned a party rank separate from your adventurer rank, and you are introduced to requests that match your rank. In addition, you can receive benefits such as compensation for injuries and housing contracts. Dot so. As we walked along the mountain path, I suggested that we form a party, to which Iris replied regretfully, I'm not sure I can work with Ku. I'd be happy to be in a party with Ku too. But, according to the guild's system, you can't form a party if the members are more than three adventurer ranks apart. Apparently, the reason is that the difference in ability would be too great. My adventurer rank is D, and Iris's is A. The order of the ranks is D, C, B, and A so they are exactly three ranks apart. And to move up from D to C rank, you need to take an exam in the royal capital. There is no need to be in a hurry, an invitation will probably come from the Adventurers Guild in the capital soon, and I think you should take the exam while you're there. Invitations? Dotto, you mean that one? Speaking of which, Milia mentioned it a while ago, when she reported the defeat of the Black Dragon to the Adventurers Guild headquarters, they decided to hold a large award ceremony in the royal capital. I think it's possible that Ku will be exempted from the exam, considering your achievements. After all, you are a hero who saved a whole city. Anyway, at that time, let's formally form a party. Dot will you team up with me? Of course. We're companions who fought the Black Dragon together. After all, thank goodness. I was wondering what I would do if you abandoned me here. Iris said jokingly, brushing her long red hair with her right hand. I could catch a glimpse of the nape of her thin, white neck. I felt somewhat embarrassed, so I turned my gaze to the other side. Dot. There was something that caught my attention, so I paused. Ku, 
What's wrong? It's a monster, isn't it? There were several small shadows floating behind the trees, slightly off the mountain path. They were gradually approaching us. Shouldn't we be wary of them? It's okay. They're just flying mushrooms, as the name suggests. They don't do any real harm. What the heck? The name sounds like a joke, but I activate the appraisal. Flying mushroom. A mushroom with the blessing of wind. It flies through the air by spinning its umbrella at high speed and runs away when approached. Be careful when you bite into it, as your body will float. The body floats when you bite into it. That's kind of a strange mushroom. Anyway, it might be material for creation, so let's collect it. As I took my first step, the flying mushroom, perhaps sensing my presence, began to move deeper into the forest. What should I do? Should I go around to the other side and block their escape route? Don't worry, it's not that hard. I'll be back in a bit. I'm wearing the Fenra coat now. One of the effects that this coat has is the activation of Thagard Speed Blessing X. The magic power consumption is 10,000 MP per second. This is equivalent to using the magic power of 100 average magicians in a second. Although the magic power consumption is out of the ordinary. The effect is enormous. I ran through the trees at super high speed and was able to catch up with the flying mushroom in an instant. I reached out to the jumping mushrooms and stored them in their item box, one by one. A total of 56 of them. It took me about two seconds to get to this point. I deactivated Thagard Speed Blessing Eggs and returned to Iris. I'm done collecting. As always, it's amazing how fast you can go. I couldn't see a thing. Thanks to the Fenra coat, I replied and headed back to the water's edge, where the wet mushroom was growing. The brown mushrooms grew here and there across the calm mountain stream. The number of mushrooms was quite large. The sun was beginning to set when the two of us collected and stored all the wet mushrooms in their item box. Should we go back to Un now? I agree. We don't want to stay out in the open. What do you want for dinner tonight? Meat. I think. Can we stop by the Adventurers Guild first? Sure, I don't mind. Do you have something to do? I want to ask Milia about the award ceremony in the Royal Capital. I'm kind of curious about when it's being held. Yeah, right. It's quite a long way to the Royal Capital, so we need to make some preparations. As Iris and I chatted, we descended the mountain and took the city road to reach on. We entered the city through the North Gate and headed for the Adventurers Guild where we were approached several times by townspeople. Yorku san, right? I'm your big fan. Please shake my hand. I want to be an adventurer like you. Will you take me as your apprentice? Dragon Slayer san, please come to my store for a drink sometime. I'll serve you. After defeating the black dragon, I was treated as a bit of a hero. I guess it's only natural that I saved the city from danger, but there's even a rumor going around that if you have the Dragon Slayer patting you on the head, you'll grow up to be a strong child. I'm on the verge of being worshipped as a god. Of course, I'm just a human, so worshipping me won't bring any blessings. When I arrived at the Adventurers Guild and entered the main lobby, I found Milia standing at one of the reception desks. From her appearance alone, she looks like just another cute receptionist. But in fact, she is an elite member dispatched from the royal capital and serves as the assistant branch manager of the Adventurers Guild Un branch. She has been looking out for me since I first came to this city. Good evening, Kusan, Iris San. Milia greeted us with a bright smile, as usual. Nice timing, both of you. In fact, I have something to give you. Please wait a moment. Is that an invitation from the Adventurers Guild headquarters? Yes, that's right. As expected of Kusan. You are very perceptive. Milia took out two white envelopes from under the reception desk and presented them to us. They were addressed to Iris and me, respectively. It seems that a lot of things happened at the guild headquarters, so it took a while to contact you. I'm sorry. I don't mind that much. I opened the envelope and checked the contents. The invitation included the date of the award ceremony, which was about a month away. Well. I guess they have a lot of preparations to make. The Adventurers Guild has entrusted Scarlet Trading Company with the arrangements for transportation to the capital and lodging. Please visit them at their office tomorrow afternoon at your convenience. When I think of the Scarlet Trading Company, I think of Chrome San, the chairman of the trading company. He was the first person I met when I came to this other world, and since I saved his life, I've been able to get to know him in some way. We might bump into each other when I go to the office of the trading company. As I was thinking about this, Iris muttered to me from the left side, By the way, what are you going to do, Milia? You're going to attend the award ceremony as well, 
right, me? It's a great opportunity for Kusan and Iris San to shine, and of course, I'll be there. However, I have business with various branches here and there, so I think we will meet at the venue on the day of the event. If I had more time, I would have liked to show you around the capital. Miria said regretfully. In any case, the two of you should enjoy your trip to the fullest. There are plenty of places to visit along the way, and it's sure to be fun. Thus I received an invitation from the guild headquarters, but there was one big problem. Where is the royal capital? Fortunately, Iris is an A-rank adventurer, so she knows a lot about the geography. After we left the adventurers guild, we had dinner at the Silver Stag Pavilion. And while we waited for the food to arrive, I asked her to briefly tell me about the location of the capital. To put it very simply, the royal capital is far northeast of Arn. But there's a sea on the way, so you'll need a boat if you want to go the shortest distance. Isn't there a land connection? You have to go around the coast in a counterclockwise direction, so it's quite a detour. Dot in this kind of situation, it's easier to explain if I had a map of the wider area, but I left it at home. Do you want to come and look at it later? What should I do now? Iris and I are on good terms, but as expected, I'm not sure I want to barge into a young woman's house. As I was pondering this, auto mapping was automatically activated as if to make things easier. A semi transparent window appears in my palm. A thick, crescent shaped continent was drawn on it. The direction is north up. Ara, whose skills are really useful. It's a map of this continent. Where's Arn? It's the inland part of the southern point. If you go northeast towards the sea, you will find a port town named Fort Port. Iris pointed to the map and named the town. Inside the crescent is the Foss Sea. There's a direct boat to the royal capital from Fort Port, and it's the most common route to take. I see. It's obvious from the map. But if you want to go to the capital only by land, you have to go counterclockwise along the coast. It's a huge detour, and the sensible decision would be to use a boat. If we took the shortest way, it would take us 10 days to get from Arn to Fort Port and 5 days to cross the Foss Sea. That's a total of 15 days of travel. The award ceremony will take place in the middle of next month. If I count from today, I have about 30 days until the award ceremony, so if I use a ship, I can reach the royal capital with some time to spare. Dot when I was thinking about it, the food was just brought in. This time, I ordered the Arn chicken teriyaki, which was even better than I expected. The skin was crispy, and the meat was juicy. Every time I bit into it, it overflowed with juices filled with flavor. After eating, I refreshed my mouth with lemon sorbet and left the restaurant satisfied. What are you going to do tomorrow? I think I'm going to go to Scarlet Trading Company in the afternoon, just like Milia suggested. Right. Are you free in the morning? Yeah. I don't have any plans at the moment. How about going to the underground city? We'd better tell the helper slimes that we're going to the royal capital, right? To the southeast of Arn. Deep in the cello forest, there is an ancient underground city hidden away where magical creatures called helper slimes live. They were very friendly and called me Master San and adored me from the bottom of their hearts. During the battle against the Black Dragon, I received a lot of help from the helper slimes. It would indeed be ungrateful of me to leave for the royal capital without telling them anything. I guess so. I nodded. I guess we're going to be busy preparing for the trip, so I guess we should go say hello to the slimes before we leave. So, tomorrow morning. Iris and I will visit the underground city. We'll meet up at 9 a.m. in the main lobby of the guild. After dropping Iris off at home, as usual, I went back to my inn. Quiet Moon Pavilion. I took a shower, put on my pajamas, and lay down on the bed. I looked at the clock on the wall and saw that it was about 10 o'clock in the evening. It was still too early to go to bed. Dot speaking of which, today I got new material. I wondered if I could use the flying mushroom to make some kind of item. And then, as if in conjunction with my thoughts, a new recipe popped up in my head. Flying a mushroom x1 plus wet mushroom x1 equals flying potion x5. Flying potion. Would the potion fly? Or would it be a potion that makes you fly when you drink it? For now, let's try to make it with, creation. Flying potion has been added to the list of, item box. Flying potion, a trop quality flying potion prepared by a skilled herbalist. Drink it, and you'll be blessed with the power of the wind, allowing you to fly freely for 30 minutes. Effect colon wind blessing S plus. Apparently, if you drink the flying potion you will be able to fly. This sounds very interesting. I'll do some experiments later. Also, 
It seems that my skill experience has crossed a certain line after executing this recipe, and my creation level has increased from 14 to 15. As a result, a new recipe pops into my mind. The Black Dragon's Corpse X1 Ring of the Flame Emperor Dragon the 10th one. I have a skill called Automatic Collection, and when I kill a monster, the corpse is automatically stored in my item box. It was the same for the Black Dragon. However, Normal monsters are displayed in the form of 20s corpse and are separated into claws and fur by dismantling before being used for creation. The black dragon is an exception in many ways. It's not just a part of the corpse, but a full corpse, and it can be used for creation without dismantling. I wonder if it's because the calamity is an existence beyond the boundaries of monsters that its treatment is also special. Also, I wonder why it's called Ring of the Flame Emperor Dragon instead of Ring of the Black Dragon? Maybe there is another name for the Black Dragon, the Flame Emperor Dragon. Anyway, let's try to make it with, creation. Ring of the Flame Emperor Dragon, a ring that contains the power of the Flame Emperor Dragon. The wearer is given the highest level of aptitude for flame magic. It can only be equipped by Kukauzuka. Effect colon Flame Emperor's successor X exclusive equipment A+. I immediately took out the Ring of the Flame Emperor Dragon from their item box. The ring has a large red gem attached to it, and strangely enough, flames are blazing inside the gem. When I put the ring on the middle finger of my left hand, full assist was automatically activated. It's a skill that fully supports my life in another world. It has a great variety of effects, one of which is that it explains various things to my mind in the form of a system message. Flame Emperor's successor X has been activated. Flame Emperor, will be added to Kakauzuka's skills. Apparently, the number of my skills has increased. One of the effects of, full assist, the high speed installation of knowledge begins, and information related to, Flame Emperor, flows in like a flood, perhaps because of the sheer volume of information, my vision went blank for a moment. Dot I see, I muttered, taking a deep breath, I got the gist of it. Let's get some knowledge out of the way. Magic exists in this world, but it can't be used by everyone, it requires skills such as fire magic and light magic. And, Flame Emperor, is the highest level of fire magic skills and it is only effective when you are wearing the ring of the flame emperor dragon. As for how to use magic, it seems that ordinary magicians need to recite various spells and perform complicated rituals. But in my case, there, full assist, assists me, so all I have to do is say the name of the magic to activate it. The detailed control is done automatically. But I can also specify the target and adjust the power by voice input. I guess that's the general gist of it. The only magic I can use at the moment is Fire Arrow, which is attack magic that sends flaming arrows. It is classified as one of the most rudimentary forms of fire magic, but depending on the amount of magic power of the magician, it is said to be able to wipe out an entire city. Well, it's a shame that I'm going to sleep like this now that I'm able to use magic. I've been thinking about the effects of the flying potion I just created, so let's go for a walk. The curiosity that bubbled up in me had completely blown away my sleepiness. I've been feeling younger and younger since I came to this other world. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 1 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed last chapter one i tried out my new powers flying potion and fire magic i decided to go outside to experiment with these two i opened my item box in my mind and selected my full gear for adventuring my whole body was instantly enveloped in dazzling light and i was fully equipped in an instant my torso was covered in the armored bear armor with the fenra coat and my arms were fitted with the black spider gauntlets on the middle finger of my left hand the ring of the flame emperor dragon glittered with a crimson glow. All set, I guess. It's too dangerous to shoot fire magic in the city, so let's go to the mountains. I looked at the clock and saw that it was already 11 o'clock in the evening. The other guests might be asleep, so I quietly slipped out of the inn. Un is the largest city in the area, and the center of the city is still bustling with activity. I'm still well known, and even if I just walk around for a while, people will call out to me. Hey. Isn't that the Dragon Slayer? Why don't you join us for a drink? Pro Dragon Slayer. Would you like to have some dinner? Our soup is extremely spicy and delicious and will keep you going until morning. Oh, you're Kakauzuka, right? If you don't mind, 
I'd like to hear the story of your dragon slaying. I lightly responded to the people's voices and headed for the north gate of the city. I presented my guild card to the night guard and asked him to open the back door of the city gate. It's unusual for you to be out so late at night, dragon slayer dono. Is there something wrong? Ha ha, it's not like there's a new dragon. No, it's not like that. I'm just about to practice my magic. What? So you can use magic, dragon slayer dono? I'm only a novice, though. Ha ha. You're too modest. Well then, have a good time. Be careful. The guard gave me a neat salute and sent me on my way. As I continued north along the road, I eventually reached a grassland. This was the place where I had defeated the black dragon before. Immediately after the battle, it was a burnt field where not even penny grass could grow. But in just 15 days, it had returned to its original state. It's amazing how resilient the vegetation is. If I could bring plants from this world to my original world, environmental problems would be solved in no time. Well, I'm not going back to Japan, though. As for me, I'd rather live as I please in this other world. Further north in the grassland, I reached the base of the mountain. There are a few trees around, so let's use them as a test subject. If I say the name of the magic, it will be activated, right? I pointed my left hand at a nearby tree and shouted, Fire arrow! The next moment, I felt something hot gather in my left hand and a meter-long fire arrow shot out from my palm. As soon as the fire arrow pierced the tree, it turned into a huge flame. The flames burned through the tree in just a few seconds and then disappeared. It did not spread to the surrounding trees, plants, and flowers. It was an uncommon situation, but it was probably the result of the adjustments made by their full assist. It's quite convenient. The fact that there is no danger of a fire spreading means that fire magic can be used without hesitation even in the forest. This is something I should keep in mind. On the other hand, is it possible to spread the fire intentionally? Since I'm here, let's give it a try. I turn around and face the grassland. The power and other adjustments were done by voice input, right? The target is a grassy area 30 meters away, burn down a radius of 10 meters around that point. Fire arrow. A single fire arrow was fired from my left hand. As a result, the result was exactly as specified. The flames burned down one grassland area in a circular pattern and naturally extinguished without spreading to other areas. Amazing. The ability to specify the range of the attack with such dexterity will greatly expand the scope of the battle in the future. It's quite interesting. As I was nodding to myself, I heard a growl from the forest behind me. Gra-ra-ra-ra-ra-ra. I turned and saw a lonely wolf there. It is a wolf-type monster and it prefers solitude as its habit. In fact, there are no other lonely wolves around. There was only this one enemy. It was just perfect. I wanted to experience magic combat, so I'll let you practice with me. Immediately after setting up my left arm, the lonely wolf roared and attacked me. Ka. Fire arrow. Jian. The lonely wolf was pierced head on by the fire arrow and was sent flying backward. It doesn't move a muscle. As I got closer to check it out. I noticed that only the heart was burned out with pinpoint accuracy. In the end, automatic collection was triggered, and the corpse was collected in my item box. It's not going to be burnt to a crisp, is it? As soon as I muttered that, full assist was automatically activated to supplement my knowledge. It seems that when using magic in the battle against monsters, the corpse will be minimally damaged so that it can be used as material. That's quite thoughtful, isn't it? As I was admiring this, I heard the sound of grass rustling in the distance. It seems that a new monster has arrived. Pippi, Pippi. The next thing that appeared was a rabbit-like monster. There are about a dozen of them, and they all have thick arms and repeat movements like shadow boxing. I activated my appraisal. Punch rabbit, a rabbit-shaped monster with enlarged arms. Its signature attack is punching. Its fur can be used to make underwear. It's a rabbit that can punch. So it's Punch Rabbit. It's an easy to understand name. Pip -pip -pip -pip. As soon as the Punch Rabbits squealed in unison, they attacked me. But, they're moving so fast. Wipe them out, Fire Arrow. Ten Fire Arrows shot out of my left hand. The Fire Arrows pierced the chests of the Punch Rabbits and precisely burned out their hearts. The battle was over in an instant. Automatic collection was activated and the corpses of ten punch rabbits were collected in their item box. At the same time, an inorganic voice echoed in my mind. With this experience acquisition, you are now level 92. Your HP and MP will increase, 
and your physical abilities will improve. Since I'm taking the opportunity, let's check out my current status. Level 92, 950 horsepower, 47,800 MP. My MP is a relative value to which the magic power of an ordinary magician is 100. I think I have an impressive amount of magic power. My skills are, transmigrator, full assist, creation, dexterity, artisan's divine eye, item box, dismantling, appraisal, automatic collection, auto mapping, material alchemy, calamity summoning, and, flame emperor, for a total of 13. It is said that the inhabitants of this world only have 3 skills at most, so I can say that the number of skills I have is out of the ordinary. After that, I continued to test with fire arrow. As it turned out, it is a very useful attack magic. It can fire multiple shots at the same time, and its power and attack range can be adjusted to a very fine degree. Depending on my imagination, I might be able to find a use for it outside of combat. So that's it for magic for now. Next is the flying potion. I wonder what it's like to fly. To be honest, I'm really curious. I opened my item box and took out the flying potion after putting it in a water bag. The liquid is clear, and when I put it in my mouth, it spreads a rich, mellow flavor. It's delicious. The aftertaste is clean and smooth, like a fine sake. At the same time as I finished drinking it, I had a floating feeling. The flying potion apostrophe s dot wind blessing s plus effect must have been activated. My body was floating about 30 centimeters off the ground. Immediately afterward, dexterity, is activated. This is a skill that allows me to use all kinds of items, and in the next moment, I completely understood how to use the wind blessing s plus. Let's try to gain some altitude. Apparently, I could move by changing my posture. I straightened my back and looked up. Then my body rose higher into the sky. I was not afraid. Rather, I was more excited to be flying freely in the sky. Perhaps it was thanks to the mental resistance of the transmigrator. There seemed to be no limit to the altitude, and before I knew it, I had reached the top of the clouds. There were stars shining in the sky. Dot amazing. A natural planetarium. Nothing was blocking my view. It's almost as if I could grab the stars if I reached out my arm. Surrounded by such a spectacular view, I began to practice flying. Tilt my body forward to move forward and backward to move backward. It seems that the posture of the body is the direction of travel. In a way, it's similar to skiing or snowboarding. Now that I've got the hang of it, I try out zigzagging trajectories like a UFO and somersaults. Good. I can move freely now, and I think I can fight in the air with this. I returned to the ground with plenty of time to spare before the flying potion expired. It was time to end the night's play. I should get a good night's sleep since I'll be busy preparing for the journey tomorrow. After that, I walked back to Arn. It was past midnight when I returned to my room at the Quiet Moon Pavilion where I took a shower and lay down on the bed. Oh, right. The corpse of the punch rabbit was dismantled to obtain its fur, which was then used to create the punch rabbit's underwear. The effects granted were texture A plus and temperature control S plus. When I tried it on, I found that the texture was indeed smooth and comfortable. Moreover, it is said to always provide a comfortable temperature for the body. I've got a good thing here. I was very satisfied and went to sleep. Good night. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 2 Here's the chapter. Enjoy. Ed. Blast. Chapter 2 I made a carriage. The next morning, when I went into the main lobby of the Adventurers Guild, I found Iris there. Our meeting time was 9 a.m., so there were still 15 minutes to spare. Good morning. Iris, did I make you wait long? No, I'm just arriving. Iris smiled cheerfully and lined up beside me on my left. Whenever we walk together, we are always in this position. Recently, I sometimes glance to my left side even when Iris is absent. Well, it's probably inevitable since we see each other every day. I guess it's a kind of habit. We left the town of Un and headed in the southeast direction. We entered the forest near the road, opened the door hidden under the cliff at the back and descended the stairs into the underground. When we finally exited the tunnel, even though this was supposed to be underground, there was a blue sky and grassland. We've been here many times, but it's still a strange sight. Indeed. I nodded at Iris' words. It's just my personal opinion, but I guess that sky is like a three-dimensional image. The technology level of ancient civilizations is very high. It should be easy enough to create a fake sky. In fact, 
When I looked closely, I could see the stone ceiling peeking out from behind the cloud like white blur, and when I returned my eyes from the sky to the ground, I could see houses standing side by side in the distance. This is the city that I built with, creation, before. As we started to walk towards the city, four translucent round creatures approached us from the other side of the grassland, jumping up and down. They are the helpless limes, magical creatures created by ancient technology. They have an amicable personality and are experts at cleaning, washing, cooking and other personal care tasks. I'd like to take them along with me on the journey to the royal capital, but there are restrictions on their range of movement, and they can't seem to go outside of the underground city. I wish there were a better way. The slimes stopped moving in front of Iris and me and bowed a little vertically. Welcome back, Master San and Iris Neen. The helper slime said this in unison and welcomed us with happy expressions. The sight of them is soothing to the soul. Hey. Iris put her face close to my ear and muttered in a troubled tone. Isn't it very awkward to say we're going on a journey in this atmosphere? Well, yeah, the slimes will be lonely. When I think about it, I feel bad. However, postponing the problem will not solve anything. I need to say exactly what I need to say. I took a deep breath and said to the slimes, Actually, I'll be leaving on soon. I won't be able to return to the underground city for a while. With these words, silence fell. The slimes immediately stopped moving and turned their gaze towards me. And then, e e e e e e e e Master San, you're disappearing? But you'll be back soon, right? Have a safe journey. I want to go out too, but I can't leave the underground city. A single helper slime sighed in disappointment. That's when it happened. One of my skills, full assist, was automatically activated, and an inorganic voice sounded in my mind. By rewriting the main system of the underground city, it will be possible to bring one helper slime to accompany you above ground. Would you like to carry out the rewrite of the system? Sure, do it right away. As its name implies, the helper slime is good at treating humans. If they accompany me, the journey will be very comfortable. Soon, a single helper slime was enveloped in a soft glow. It will take 96 hours to rewrite the system. Please wait for a while. Apparently, it would take 96 hours or four days to get the helper slime out of the underground city. Ah, I feel warm and fuzzy. Master San, what happened to me? I'm rewriting the main system of the underground city. When it's done, you can go out. E -e 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 -e. Then I can go outside with you, Master San. Yay. The helper slime wrapped in a shiny light and bounced around me happily. Yay, yay, yay. I can be Master San's friend. I'm a friend slime. That's great. Take care of Master San. You'll have to take care of Master San for us, too. The other three slimes were as happy as if it were themselves. In the midst of this friendly atmosphere, I hear the voice in my mind again. Please give a name to the helper slime that will be accompanying you. Excuse me? I don't like being told that all of a sudden. As I groaned, Iris, who was standing next to me, called out to me. What's the matter, Ku? I'm thinking of a name. Could it be a name for her child you're taking to the surface? How about OCs or Suawa? T slash N, Osuwa can mean helper since the Japanese name for the slimes is Osuwa slime. Iris suggested that name to Ku. That's a bit of a stretch. But it's not a bad idea to take the name of the race. How about Zurara? T slash N, this is taken from Zure Aimu. I think it's good. It's prettier than my idea. Iris agreed with me. So I'll go with Zurara. The helper slime that will be accompanying you will be registered as Zurara. Is that okay? It's okay. As I nodded, the helper slime that was to accompany me stopped moving and turned around. Master San, I just got a call from the main system of the underground city. Did you give me a name? Yeah. Hey, hey, I want you to call me. Zurara? Yes. My name is Zurara. Thank you, Master San, for the wonderful name. Uh, apparently, Zurara liked the name. After that, Zurara remained in a good mood for a while and said, My name is Zurara. Yay. He kept jumping up and down in the grass, saying that. But after about five minutes, he seemed to get tired, and his movements became slower and slower, and his expression turned sleepy. Munya, I'm starting to feel sleepy, Su. Zurara closes his eyes and begins to breathe peacefully in his sleep. It's very sudden, but is it because of the system rewrite in progress? It might be like a computer update that requires a reboot. Zurara, he's gone to sleep. Shall we put him on the bed? Yeah. That's a good idea. The three helper slimes huddled together and consulted, 
finally nodding to each other. Then let me, I'll carry Zurara. Be careful, I'll give Master San a present. The two helpless limes reached out their hands and carried Zurara like a portable shrine, carrying him to the city beyond the grass. I watched them go and then spoke to the one remaining helpless lime. You said you had a present for me earlier. Whoa. Master San, did you hear me? Well, you were talking very loudly. When I thrust in that way, Iris chuckled a little beside me. Right. It's normal to be heard. Um, Master San, you're going on a journey soon, right? I've got some good stuff in the warehouse in the underground city that I'd like you to take a look at. The slime said so and opened its mouth wide. What popped out of it was a carriage about the size of a camper. The warehouse in the underground city is a subspace like an item box, and it is connected to the mouth of the helper slime. There was a time when a chair came out of the mouth of the helper slime. But this time the carriage was even bigger than that. I think they are ignoring the laws of physics and many other things too much. There's more. Immediately after the helper slime announced this, four carriages popped out of its mouth. If you include the first carriage, there are five carriages in total. When I use appraisal to check, it seems that all of them were made in the ancient civilization, and each of them has a different interior. This one has a kitchen inside the carriage. That one has two fluffy beds and that one is small but has two floors, dot wouldn't it make a great carriage if you combined them all into one? When Iris muttered this, the helper slime nodded loudly and said, yes, you have, creation, right, Master San, if you want, you can use this as material, you can make a great carriage out of it, that sounds interesting, since we're going on a journey, it would be a good idea to travel around in a luxurious carriage of our own making, okay, Let's give it a try. I store the five carriages in their item box. Then a new recipe popped into my mind. As the helper slime said, it seems that by using all five carriages as materials, I can create a new large carriage. I immediately activated my skill. Dot creation. Grand cabin. One of the world's largest and the most luxurious carriages, created by Kukauzaka. It is a two-story carriage with a living room, dining room, kitchen and bedroom. Granted effects colon physical defense enhancement s plus comma magic defense enhancement s plus comma wind defense a plus comma gillum combination x. The description says, the world's largest and the most luxurious carriage. This was also a huge carriage that was made. It's called the grand cabin because it has physical defense enhancement s plus and magic defense enhancement s plus its defense performance is extremely high. Even if surrounded by monsters, it would be possible to stay in the carriage safely. Few wind defense A plus is effective in blocking the negative effects of the wind, allowing you to accelerate without being hindered by the headwind, and the strong winds from the side will not cause the carriage to tip over. But the most important point is Thegalum combination X. It seems that this carriage the grand cabin was designed to be pulled not by a horse but by a gillum, and by combining the two, it shows its true performance. Combining is a man's romance. As I was thinking about this, I heard a voice in my mind. With the acquisition of skill experience, creation, is now level 16. Skill functions will be added. Oops, it seems that the skill level has been increased. Apparently, the function has been expanded, but what on earth can it do now? Whenever I have a question, full assist, immediately supplements the information. I see. In the past, I could only use the items in their, item box, as materials for, creation. But from now on, it seems that even objects outside the item box can be the target of creation, as long as they are touched by my hand. For example, the ground. If I continue to level up, I will be able to create a forest in a wasteland, for example. Of course, you'll need to procure these as materials for the forest, but even with that out of the way, it's a fantastic effect. I guess that's why they call it God's skill. Now that I've confirmed the function, Let's take a look at the actual grand cabin. I opened my item box list in my mind and thought of taking out the grand cabin. A magic circle appears on the ground, and a huge object slowly rises from it. Wow, it's huge. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash o two slash o o o one five dot jpg. The helper slime and Iris were both amazed. The grand cabin was truly one of the largest carriages in the world. It was more than fifteen meters long and had two floors. Its overwhelming sense of size gave it the appearance and dignity of a mobile 
fortress. At the front of the carriage was a platform that barely gave away the fact that it was a carriage. The door to get in and out was on the front left side of the carriage. Why don't we go inside for now? Yes. Dot I've never seen such a magnificent carriage in my life. Master San's carriage is amazing. I took Iris and the helper slime and got into the grand cabin. As soon as we enter, there is a staircase on the left and a door leading to the platform in front of us. The first floor was divided into three areas, from the front, these are the living room, dining room, and kitchen. In the living room, there is a large sofa facing each other with a window looking out to the outside. There is a rather large clock on the wall, showing the time past 10 in the morning. The dining room seats four people, and the table and chairs are made of warm wood. Beyond that was the kitchen complete with a magic stove in the front and one in the back, running water, and a large cooking table. The cupboards were fully stocked with dishes and cooking utensils. I guess I can cook on the road. With all this, it would be a good idea to stock up on ingredients and seasonings before we left on. I'd love to cook in a kitchen like this. That's about it for the first floor. Let's go to the second floor next. As we climbed the stairs, there was a straight pathway leading to the back. There were two bedrooms in front of us each with a king-sized bed. At the end of the passageway was a toilet and bathroom, complete with a shower and bathtub. What can I say? It's blissful. Iris seemed to agree with me and said with a sigh of admiration. It's so gorgeous, and it looks so cozy. I'd love to live here. It's got a bathroom and a kitchen, so it could be used as a home. It's like a moving house. After saying that, the helper slime folded its round body into a shape as if it were tilting its head. But Master San, how do you make this carriage move? I was wondering the same thing. It's a lot of weight, and it would require at least 10 horses. Don't worry, the golem will pull them. What do you mean? I'll demonstrate now. Let's go outside for now. So we went downstairs and got out of the carriage. Let's get started. I select the destroyer golem from the list in my item box. The Destroyer Golem is a new type of ancient weapon that I created based on the Orichal Golem that I defeated at the entrance to this underground city. The term new type of ancient weapon may seem like a huge contradiction, but putting that aside, it has very high combat capabilities. In the recent battle, just before the Black Dragon resurrected, more than 30,000 monsters rushed towards the city of Arn. At that time, the destroyer Golem instantly wiped out most of the monsters with the super high-powered magic laser cannon on his head. For me, it's one of my most reliable companions. Or should I say unit, since he's a robot. One destroyer Golem in the family. The power to destroy the world is delivered to your home. Dot such a world is too disturbing, so I'd rather refrain from it. Well, let's leave the jokes at that. When I thought to myself to take out the destroyer Golem from there, item box, a magic circle floated on the ground. A black giant of steel slowly rises out of it. It looked like a scene from a robot animation. Long time no see, master. Please give the order. Despite his rugged appearance, the destroyer Gillum was full of energy again today. I'm actually going on a journey, but the carriage is huge. Can you help me pull it? Oh, ooh, that's a very nice carriage. Please leave it to me. The destroyer Gillum tapped his chest in a trustworthy manner and approached the carriage. At that time, full assist, was automatically activated, and a voice was heard in my mind. Do you wish to combine the destroyer Gillum with the grand cabin? I nodded vigorously. The next moment, metal parts flew out from the front of the carriage and clanked into the arms and waist of the destroyer Gillum. It seems that one of the granted effects comma Gillum combination X has been activated. Combination. Grand destroyer Gillum. The destroyer Gillum shouted and struck a pose with its arms outstretched as far as they would go. It looked like something out of a robot animation. I wondered what had changed as a result of the combination. I activate my appraisal. The Grand Destroyer Gillum, a destroyer Gillum that was strengthened by combining with the Grand Cabin. Due to the effects of Gillum Combination X, the basic output of the Magic Core has been dramatically improved. Granted effects colon advanced calculation function A plus comma monster detection S, eternal engine S plus, increased power S plus. The five letters grand have been added to the destroyer Gillum's name. In addition to this, there is also the added effect of th increased power S plus, which means that even though it is pulling the huge mass of the grand cabin, its movement speed has increased. Everyone, please give it a try. The destroyer Gillum said, 
and the carriage doors automatically opened. This is probably also due to Thegelum Combination X. We got into the carriage again and sat down on the sofa in the living room. The carriage is now ready to depart. The destroyer Gillum's voice was heard from the ceiling. It seems to have a built-in speaker type magic tool. The carriage began to move, its feet shaking slightly as it grumbled, slowly at first, then gradually increasing in speed. The scenery around us began to flow rapidly. Wow, it's fast, it's fast. The helper slime cackles happily as it looks out the window. That's an amazing speed. Iris sighed in admiration. I think we'll make it to Fort Port in no time. We could do some sightseeing on the way. Agreed. Let's have a nice trip, shall we? While Iris and I were talking about this, auto mapping started up, and a pale window popped up. It showed a map from on to the port town of Fort Port as well as the recommended route and the number of days required if we were to use this carriage to go directly to Fort Port. According to the route recommended by, auto mapping, after leaving Un, we would spend one night in a town called Tu, then another night in a town called Surya, and then arrive at Fort Port. It would take us three days in total. Iris, what do you think of this route? Dot not bad. Does that mean it could be improved? Both Tu and Surya are famous tourist destinations. It would be a shame to spend only one night there, and if we could just adjust that, it would be a perfect itinerary. Iris nodded her head in admiration and looked at the, auto mapping, window. This carriage is so fast that it can reach Fort Port in three days without sightseeing. As I said yesterday, it would normally take ten days to get there. In other words, the Grand Cabin can move at least three times as fast as an ordinary carriage. The destroyer Gillum takes the place of the horse so we don't have to worry about encountering monsters, and it is a bedroom and kitchen. As a means of transportation, it's just perfect. I'm starting to get excited. The carriage drove around the grasslands of the underground city for a while but eventually slowed down and came to a gentle stop. We got up from the sofa and walked out of the grand cabin. Good work, master. How's the ride? Good. Keep up the good work on the day of departure. Understood. Please leave it to me. The destroyer Gillum put both feet together and saluted with a clang. I smiled bitterly at his appearance and ordered him to store it in my, item box. A magic circle appeared on the ground, and the destroyer Gillum and Grand Cabin were absorbed into it. Well, I guess that's about all I have to do in the underground city. In the afternoon, we'll go to the Scarlet Trading Company to discuss our travel schedule. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 3 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 3 We discussed our plan for the journey. Iris and I said goodbye to the helper slime and left the underground city. After returning to the city of Un and finishing a light lunch, we headed to the Scarlet Trading Company office. You must be Kakauzaku Sama and Iris not Fafna Sama, right? I've heard about you from Milia Sama. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to come here today. The woman at the reception desk was young but very polite. The Scarlet Trading Company is a large organization, and it seems that its members are well trained. We were taken to a reception room on the second floor of the office. Please wait here for a while. I will call the Grand Master now. In the center of the reception room, there were two three-seater sofas flanked by a black wooden table. They all had a luxurious look. Iris and I sat down on the sofa side by side for a moment. I'm starting to get nervous. You don't have to be so nervous. I think the Grand Master is probably Chrome San. I don't feel that much pressure because he is a close friend of mine. The door to the reception room opened with a click. It's been a long time. Kusama and Iris Sama. The last time I saw you were at the victory party for defeating the Black Dragon, wasn't it? I am relieved to see that you have not changed. The one who came to the reception room was indeed Chrome San. In his left hand, he was carrying a luxurious leather bag. I'd like to congratulate you on the award you received from the Royal Capital. Please leave the travel arrangements to the Scarlet Trading Company. I owe you a debt of gratitude for saving me from the Armored Bear and I will do my best to help you. Thank you very much, Chrome San. You've always been a great help to me too. No, no, don't worry about it. It's only natural. First, let's talk about how to reach the royal capital. With that, Chrome San sat down on the sofa across from me and took out a map from his bag. The map shows the location of towns and roads in great detail and the habitats of monsters are also written on the map. The city of Un is located in the lower left corner of the map, 
with the Fatos Mountains and Cello Forest nearby. It is common practice to take a boat on the way to the capital. Are you both okay with that? Yes, I'm fine. Yeah, it would be too far to go by land alone. Iris and I answered, and Chrome San nodded in agreement. That's right. If that's the case, it's probably best to take the road northeast from Arn and take a boat from the port city of Fort Port. Northeast or upper right. Let's check the map on the table. The road out of Arn passes through several towns along the way and finally leads to Fort Port. It's almost a straight line and very easy to follow. By the way, as for transportation to Fort Port, I'm thinking of arranging for a carriage. However, it seems that Kusama has a variety of useful skills and items. If you want to use them, please do not hesitate to tell me. Thank you for your concern. Actually, I have my own carriage. Is that so? Since it's Kusama, I'm sure it's an extraordinary carriage. If you don't mind, I'd like to see it later. Of course. By the way, I'd like to ask you about our travel schedule. I explained that the Grand Cabin could move so fast that we could reach Fort Port in three days if we wanted to. Therefore, we have plenty of time to spare, and I'm thinking of stopping into Ansuria for some sightseeing. I see, that's a great idea. When Chrome San finished listening to me, he nodded with a smile. There is a large ranch in too, and Surio is a very famous hot spring town. Both places are sure to entertain you, Kusama. We then discussed the number of days we would stay in each city. It was decided that we would stay one day and two nights in too, two days and three nights in Surya, and finally two days and three nights in Fort Port, which also seemed to be a city with many interesting parts, before boarding a ship for the royal capital. The itinerary can be summarized as follows. Day 1, departure from Arn, arrival into, day 2, sightseeing into, day 3, departure from to, arrival in Syria, days 4 and 5, sightseeing in Syria, day 6, departure from Syria, arrival in Fort Port, day 7, 8, sightseeing in Fort Port, day 9, depart Fort Port and board a ship for the royal capital looking at it this way. It's quite an eventful journey. Suddenly, Iris muttered as she remembered something. I've never been to a casino before, so I'm curious. What kind of place is it? I have heard a lot about the casinos in Fort Port. Chrome San nodded and said, The casino offers basic games like cards and roulette, but also athletic games with cash prizes, a maze that takes up an entire floor and riddles to solve in order to escape from the basement. It seems to be getting good reviews. That sounds very interesting. From what Chrome San said, I imagine the casino in Fort Port to be like another worldly version of a comprehensive amusement center. It's starting to get my gamers blood pumping. I'll make arrangements for you to stay in each town. Don't worry about the cost. We have already received a budget from the government and the Adventurers Guild, and if there is any shortfall, the Scarlet Trading Company will cover it. Is that okay? Yes. Kusama and Iris Sama risked their lives to protect the city of Arn. Please consider this as a small return for that. Besides, it is in the best interest of the trading company to have connections with people who are being acknowledged in the royal capital. Now that the general schedule of the journey was set, we had to work out the details. First of all, we decided on the departure time to the afternoon five days from now as this would give us time to prepare for the journey. By that time, the underground city's system would have been rewritten, and it should be possible to take Zurara, the helper slime, with us. Huh? Speaking of which, can Zurara enter the city or stay at the inn? It could cause trouble if people mistake him for a monster, so I'll have to consult with Gromsan about it. Very well. So, you're going to let one of the helper slimes accompany you on your journey, right? In the past. When the Black Dragon resurrected, I had evacuated the people of Arn to the underground city, and Chrome San had also met the Helper Slimes. Therefore, I didn't need to explain in detail about the Helper Slime, and the conversation went smoothly. There are some skills that allow you to turn monsters into pets, although you won't find them in Arn. The most common is, Tame. Is this such an interesting skill? Using monsters is a bit of a romance, isn't it? Just imagining an adventure with an armored bear in tow. For example, makes me excited. With that in mind, I listened to Chrome San's story. It's customary to put a collar or other ornaments on a monster you've tamed. This is a great way to show the people that the monster is safe. I know that the helper slime is not a monster, but how about using this as a reference? I see. I nodded heavily. Even in modern Japan, when you keep a dog or cat, 
you put a collar on it. That's how you distinguish them from strays, and I suppose it's the same with having monsters as pets. I've seen tamed monsters in other cities in the past. Iris muttered as if she had just remembered. It was a lonely wolf with a ribbon tied to its tail, and it was pretty cute. So you're saying that any ornaments other than a collar will do? It seems they sometimes dress them in human clothes. That's easy to understand. The helper slime would look good in a hat. Do you want to go buy one later? Ah, all right. I was about to say that when I suddenly remembered. Come to think of it. Didn't the helper slimes have their own hats and clothes? In the past, when I went to the underground city, I remember seeing a chef's tile helper slime in a chef's hat and apron and a farmer's tile helper slime in a straw hat and overalls. Immediately after, full assist, was activated to supplement the information. The helper slimes outfit, cosplay, is said to be prohibited from being taken out of the underground city. In other words, I need to prepare Zurara's hat here. Foo foo. I wonder how I'll dress him up. I am starting to look forward to it. Iris seemed to be excited, and in a way, it was a good result. Anyway, the problem of getting in and out of the city was now solved. As for the lodging, Chrome San said that he would find an inn that allows pets. All of these lodgings are affiliated with the Scarlet Trading Company. I've prepared a letter of introduction, so please hand it over to the local staff. They won't refuse to let you and the helper slime stay at the inn. Thank you very much. Chrome San, I'm sorry for the trouble I've caused you. No, no, that's fine. Chrome San smiled a good natured smile. I think it's really fortunate that the first person I met after arriving in this other world was Chrome San. Now that the conversation is over, could you please show me Kusama's carriage? In fact, I have a weakness for unusual carriages. I understand, but it's a pretty huge carriage. So I think it's better to go outside the city. Are you sure you have time? Of course. As I told you before, I'm going to hand over the position of chairman to my son, and I've almost finished passing it on. I have plenty of time, so please don't worry about it. So, I took Iris and Chrome San and left Un through the north gate for the time being. I stopped at a grassland a little farther from the city and opened my item box. When I reminded myself to take out the destroyer Gillum and the grand cabin, a large magic circle appeared on the ground. The magic circle shines, and a giant and a giant carriage appear. The Gillum combination X seems to have been activated from the beginning, and the two are connected by metal parts and wires. Woo -oo -oo Chrome San shouted in admiration. He was more excited than ever, perhaps because he was faced with an unusual carriage. His eyes twinkled like a child's as he looked at the carriage from various angles. This is wonderful. I've never seen anything this magnificent before. Thank you very much. I am honored by your praise. The destroyer Gullum bows to Chrome San. T this is very polite of you. Kusama, is this Gillum the one from the Great Flood? Yes, that is correct. The Great Flood is an extremely frightening phenomenon. In which thousands or tens of thousands of monsters appear at once and avalanche into neighboring towns and villages. In the previous battle, the Great Flood occurred at about the same time as the resurrection of the Black Dragon, and more than 30,000 monsters flooded towards the city of Arn. Normally there would have been a great deal of damage. However, the destroyer Gillum's super high-powered magic laser erased the army of monsters and protected the city of Arn. As for me, I am very grateful to the destroyer Gillum because I wanted to avoid being worn out before the decisive battle with the Black Dragon. Iris is also an invaluable friend to me. Aside from that, I called out to Chrome San and showed him around the grand cabin, the living room, dining room, kitchen, two more bedrooms, and a bathroom. As we walked out of the cabin, Chrome San looked blissfully happy. Oh my goodness, this place is like heaven. I wish I could travel in a carriage like this. No, I wish I could live my daily life in one. I think Chrome San really likes carriages when he says this. Iris and I looked at each other and lightly chuckled. By the way, Kusama, may I ask you a question? After a while, Chrome San came back to himself and spoke to me with his usual calm face. It is very rare for a Gillum to pull a carriage and it may be mistaken for a monster attack. Shall we notify the guards in each area through the Scarlet Trading Company? If you ask me, there is certainly the possibility. To avoid any complications, it's best to contact them in advance. Chrome San, can I ask you to do that? Yes, I'll have everything in place by the time you leave, so please don't worry. After that, I stored the destroyer Gillum and the Grand Cabin in my item box and we returned to the city. There were no additional matters left to discuss, 
so we parted ways in front of the Scarlet Trading Company office. I would like to say that all we have to do now is wait for the day of our departure. But there is still much to be done. Greetings to those who have helped me, cleaning up the inn, restocking items. There is also the possibility of cooking in the grand cabin, so I need to prepare the ingredients and seasonings and I also need to buy a hat for Zurara. It's going to be a busy five days until our departure. Nevertheless, it's much easier than moving in Japan, so I'll take care of everything one by one. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 4 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 4 I witnessed an unexpected side of Milia. It was three days later, on the night of June 14th that we finished all the preparations for our journey. I guess we're all set. Good work, Ku. Our departure is in two days, so let's take it easy tomorrow. Agreed. I think I can sleep until noon for the first time in a while. We'll see each other again on the day of departure. Well, good night. Yeah, good night. After I dropped Iris off at home, I returned to their quiet moon pavilion. It was a little past 10 o'clock in the evening. As I walked by the front desk, I was stopped by a male employee. You must be Kakauzaku Sama, correct? You have received a letter from Relic D. Hubert Sama. I've put it in the doorpost of your room, so please check it. Relic is the third son of a duke family, a slender young man with a scholarly appearance. We became acquainted when I discovered the underground city of an ancient civilization, and we've been good friends ever since. Currently, Relic is not in Arn. He should be on his way to the city of Millard where the mansion of Count Millard, the lord who rules this region, is located. I opened the letter from Relic in my room, thinking about that. The writing was polite and easy to read, giving me a good sense of his personality. Dear Kosan, it seems that the lord, Count Millard, is staying in the northeastern city of Surya to recuperate. I'm curious about his condition, so I'm going to visit him. On a different subject. I heard that Kusan is going to receive an award in the royal capital. Congratulations. I'm planning to attend the ceremony, so I'll see you there. Relic D. Hubert. The casual text was devoid of nobility, but considering Relic's character, it was understandable. But Surya? It was one of the towns where Iris and I would be stopping on our journey starting the day after tomorrow. It is famous for its hot springs and we plan to spend two nights and three days touring the hot springs. Maybe we can meet Relic there. With that thought in mind, I put the letter in my item box. After taking a shower and lying down on the bed, sleepiness came quickly. The past few days had been busy with preparations for the journey, but now that it was over, perhaps my thread of tension had been broken. The next day, I woke up to the voice of, full assist. The system rewrite has been completed. The individual named Zurara will be able to leave the underground city. Please specify the place and time where you plan to meet up. It seems that the system has been rewritten. My modern Japanese senses tell me that this kind of work is bound to have errors, but there has been no trouble or delay. It's a wonderful story. My previous workplace should learn from this. Fewer. I let out a small yawn and raised myself up from the bed. In front of me was a pale blue window with a map of the area around Arn. Do I use this to specify the meeting point? I thought as I looked at the map. The road from Arn to Ter heads a little to the southeast at first and then curves sharply to the northeast. You can imagine it as the letter J tilted slightly to the right. At the bottom of the large southeast curve, it skirts the cello forest which is not far from the entrance to the underground city. It would be the perfect place to meet up with Zurara. I reached for the window map and touched the bottom edge of the curve. Immediately after that, I hear a voice in my mind saying, Do you want to use this as the meeting point? I nodded my head slightly. With a slight nod, the map window disappeared, and a new window appeared. There was a dial clock on it. I guess the next step is to specify the meeting time. The clock's operation was similar to setting a timer on a smartphone. I scrolled the numbers around with my finger and set it for tomorrow afternoon. Okay, I guess that's it. I took a deep breath and lay down in bed again before I knew it. I had fallen asleep again. The next time I woke up was in the early afternoon. After leaving the quiet moon pavilion, I finished my meal outside and went for a walk. As I walked leisurely through the city, I came to a place called Bookstore Street. As the name suggests, there are many bookstores lined up on both sides of the street. The image of a fantasy world is that of the Middle Ages, but the civilization of this world has achieved its own development through magic technology, 
and printing technology has already become commonplace. Bookstores sell novels, travel magazines, May guides, and even weekly gossip magazines, creating an atmosphere similar to that of modern Japan. Since I'm here, I might as well go shopping. I'm going on a journey tomorrow, and I don't have a single tourist guide. This would be a big problem. I skimmed through it and bought something that looks good. In addition, I bought five novels. I'll read them during the carriage ride. It's hard to carry around all the books I've bought, but I have an item box. If I store them here, they weigh practically nothing and don't take up much space. It's great. Just as I was leaving the bookstore with a smile on my face, a woman crossed the street in front of me. She was carrying a large paper bag as she staggered down the street. She was dressed in a white blouse and a navy blue flared skirt. It was simple but elegant. Her fluffy chestnut colored hair is arranged in a braid. Huh? I've seen her face before. She's Milia, isn't she? I'm not sure if I should call out to her or not, but the woman who looked like Milia let out a small scream. Kaya. It seems that she stumbled on the ground, and her body stumbled forward. The woman managed to stay on her feet, but because her center of gravity was shifted forward, the paper bag ripped open in a big way and the many books that were stuffed inside it fell out all over the place. Of course, I wasn't going to let it go. I selected the Fenra coat from my item box, and immediately activated Thagard's Speed Blessing X. I ran through the slow motion world and caught the books that spilled out of the paper bag. Twelve books in total, quite a few. I'll put them in their item box, for now. When I'm done, I turn to the woman. The somewhat young and cute face was definitely Milia herself. The time that has passed up to this point is about two seconds, and I cancel Thagard Speed Blessing X. https colon slash slash Nike's translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash o two slash o o o o two one dot jpg a r dot goku san are you okay? Why yes, I just stumbled over, huh? Milia scurried around to look at her feet. Kusan. Have you seen my books? I dropped about ten of them. Sorry. There were quite a few of them, so I had them collected in my item box. I see. Thank you very much. Wait. I couldn't see it at all. That was very fast work. It's no big deal. More importantly, isn't the book too heavy? The top half of Milia's paper bag was tong, but there were still about ten books that needed to be carried. They were all large and thick. It seemed to be difficult to carry them. I've got their item box over here, so leave it to me to carry your stuff. And Milia has always taken care of me, after all. Um, can I ask you to do it then? Yes, leave it to me. I nodded and took the paper bag from Milia and stored it in my item box, including the ones I caught earlier. That brings the total to 24 books. I heard that Milia's house is located a little far from here, so I decided to go with her there. We left the bookstore street and walked down a relatively narrow street together. I'm sorry to have caused you trouble. Thank you, Kusan. No problem. But you bought a lot of books. I love books. It was my day off, so I went around bookstore street, but I bought so many books that I ended up in a big mess. I see. I can't help but understand that feeling. When I was a student, I was a gamer. But I also read a lot of novels and manga. As a result of impulse purchases at bookstores, I've heard countless times when I've had trouble carrying them around. Could it be that Milia is a bookworm? I'm not sure about that. There are many books that I have bought but are still piled up, and the god of books would be angry with me if I called myself a bookworm. She seems to be a real bookworm in her modesty, doesn't she? However, Milia has an image of being very active. So the fact that she likes books is a little surprising. I guess people are not always what they look like. After walking for about 15 minutes, we soon came to an upscale residential area in the southwest part of the city. The surrounding area was lined with large houses. Milia's house was in the center of it, a two-story house with a garden. When you become a branch manager or assistant branch manager, the guild provides you with a place to live but it's too big for one person to live in. It's obviously designed for a family of three or four. Milia smiled and unlocked the front door. She opened the door and entered the house. Where should I put the books? There's a shoebox on the right, just put them on top of that. All right, I'll do it right away. I took out the books from my item box, divided them into several piles, and placed them on top of the shoebox. Is this good? Yes, it's perfect. Thank you very much, Kusan. 
for bringing them here. Millie bowed on the spot. I want to thank you for all the trouble I caused you. What would you like? You don't have to worry about that. You've been a great help to me, so I'm just returning the favor. I'm really sorry about this. Well, I guess you owe me this one. You're coming to the award ceremony, right? You can return the favor to me when we meet in the royal capital. You can tell me what restaurants are recommended, or take me to tourist spots. I'll leave it to your taste. Oh. You mean my taste. I felt Milia's eyes light up as if they were glowing. I understand. Then I'll think of a way to return the favor with all my might. Fufu, instead of regretting to have given me time to prepare, look forward to the next time we meet. I don't know what it is, but I can feel the great spirit. Either way, things are going to be interesting in the royal capital. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 5 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 5 I left on One night later, it was the day of my departure. After a quick lunch at the Golden Bear Pavilion, I met up with Iris in the lobby of the Adventurer's Guild. Did I keep you waiting? No, I just got here. Dot foo foo. What's wrong? Nothing, it's fine. I'm looking forward to the journey. Iris was in a good mood for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I think it's because she's excited about the journey ahead. We exchanged idle conversation as we headed towards the south gate of the city. Many people had come to see us off around the gate. It was like a festival. Dragon Slayer Nitchin. Be careful, Dragon Folk Nick and too. Have a good time. Thank you so much for protecting the city. You're the heroes of Arn. What can I say? It's a huge crowd. It's so lively. Iris sighed in admiration. I know exactly how she feels. I didn't expect such a large number of residents to come, either. Kusan, Iris San, have a good day. Just before the departure, Milia presented a large bouquet of roses on behalf of the residents, and at that moment, the people's excitement reached its peak. The applause rang out with loud cheers and someone blew a finger whistle. A volunteer band played a brave melody on cymbals, trumpets, and drums, and the sky was filled with the sound of bang, 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 bang. As fireworks went off in the sky, I was happy that they were giving us a grand send-off, but as expected, I was a little embarrassed. I smiled and opened my item box, and reminded myself to take out the destroyer gillum and grand cabin. A magic circle appears on the ground, from which a steel giant and an even larger carriage appear. T that's huge. I've never seen a carriage that huge before. He's using a gillum as a replacement for the horse. As expected of the dragon slayer. He does things on a different scale. From the people's reactions, it seems to have quite the impact. Everyone seems to be very surprised. Just to my left, Iris gave a small laugh. I know what they mean. I couldn't believe my eyes at first either. Feeling a little better. I took Iris into the grand cabin. We walked to the living room at the front of the first floor and sat down on the sofa side by side. From the speakers built into the ceiling, I hear the voice of the destroyer Gillum. Master, are you ready to go? Yes, please. I answered, and the carriage began to move. Now the journey begins. With a lot of people watching us go, I left on. Ten minutes later, the grand cabin stops near a forest. This was the place I had designated yesterday as the meeting point with Zurara. As Iris and I stepped outside, a round creature jumped out from behind a nearby tree. Master San. It's me, Zurara. How have you been? Yeah, I'll do my best to help you out, so please take care of me too. Then Zurara turned to Iris and greeted her cheerfully. Iris Neen, you too, hello. Hello. Zurara, nice to meet you too. Iris said and reached for the pouch on her waist. The inside of the pouch is a subspace lichen, item box, and although it has a limited capacity, it can hold much more than it looks. This time, she took out a white hat from the pouch. It was tied with a red ribbon and had a round brim. It was a hat that Iris had bought at the general store in on a few days before our departure. In this world, it is customary for pet monsters to wear ornaments such as collars. I heard that ornaments other than collars are acceptable, so in Zurara's case, we decided on a hat. Wow, that's a cute hat. Zurara cackled. Is Iris Neen going to wear it? No, it's a present for Zurara. Iris then put the round hat on Zurara's head. Wow, thank you, Iris Neen. Zurara became a little taller and bowed to Iris. Then she bounced up and down on the ground and headed towards the destroyer Gillum. Hello, Gillum San. I'm Zurara. Hello, Zurara San. Nice to meet you. The destroyer Gillum bowed, leaned forward, 
and extended his right hand. Is this supposed to be a handshake? Zurara also put out a hand, tentacle, from his squishy body. Then, he touched the destroyer golem's right hand. Wow, nice to meet you too. We're friends now. We're friends. The destroyer golem muttered happily. Since he's a machine, he's not supposed to have any emotions, but he might have something close to a heart due to the advanced computing function A plus effect he has been granted. Hey, 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 I would like to know what your name is, golem san. Name. The destroyer golem tilted his head. By the way, I haven't given him a name yet. It's a good opportunity. I should decide here. For some reason, when I looked at Iris, she had a confident look on her face. Heiku, how about Desu Desu or Toma Toma for the Gillum's name? T slash N, taken from the Japanese Desu Troy and Toma from T from Desu Troy and Mu from Go Emu. I don't really feel right about it. I don't know why Iris insisted on repeating the phrase. I thought about it for a while, then decided to go with the idea that was easier to understand. How about Dest? T slash N. The same as above. I think it's a good idea. I'm all for it. Thank you very much, Master. That sounds like a really strong name. It seems that Destroyer Gillum, Dest is happy, and both of his eyes are flashing repeatedly. Zurara-san. I'm Dest. Dest, right? I'll remember it. I'm glad to learn your name. Yes, Dest and Zurara are chatting happily. It's kind of a peaceful scene. We boarded the carriage once again and resumed our journey towards the royal capital. Our destination today was the city of Tu, which is known for its beef dishes. According to the May Guide, there is a place called Meat Street where many meat restaurants are lined up. I am looking forward to dinner. The carriage slowly moved northeast along the highway. Rattling rattling. Zurara swayed happily as he gazed out the window. I sank deeply into the sofa and leisurely read the novel I had bought before we left. It's been years since I've been able to read like this without worrying about time. Since I became a member of society. Society. I've been so busy with work every day. Heiku, is that book interesting? Iris was sitting on the sofa to my left, looking at a tourist guide, when she suddenly asked me something like that. It's interesting. Dot, do you want to read it? Is that okay? I've just finished it. I closed the book and handed it to Iris. Thank you. Ku was reading it so intently that I was curious about it too. That's true. It does happen. I gave a small nod and took out the second novel from my item box. The content of the book is a mystery about a murder in a locked room, and I was amazed at the tricks that only a world with magic and skills could pull off. Apparently, there is also a sequel. If I get a chance, I'll look for it at the bookstore. After finishing the second book, I fell asleep on the sofa. Maybe my head was too tired from reading for the first time in a long while. Good morning. You slept well. Iris smiled softly beside me on my left side. Zurara was on her lap, and he said cheerfully, Master San, we will soon be in the city of Tu. I'm looking forward to it. Looking out the window, I saw that the sky had turned a deep red. It seemed that it was evening. In the distance, I could see the city surrounded by walls. About ten minutes later, the carriage arrived at Tu. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 6 Here's the chapter, enjoy, Ed, Blast. Chapter 6, I tried to defeat Devil Treant. We had sent word in advance that we were heading to Ta in a huge carriage, but when we arrived at the north gate, we found dozens of armored guards gathered there. Master, there are so many people there. Are they welcoming us? But the atmosphere is too noisy for that. Maybe there's a monster near the city. We got out of the carriage while talking about it. One of the guards hurriedly rushed over to us. Excuse me, sir. Are you the dragon slayer, Kukauza Kusama? Yes, that's right. Understood. I'll be calling the branch manager of the Adventurers Guild right away. Please wait a moment. The guards bowed to us and hurried back inside the city gate. It seems that the branch manager of the guild is coming here. But what on earth does he want? Dot I have a feeling there might be trouble. Right. Iris nodded. Maybe the branch manager will ask you to do an urgent quest soon. Work. The slime shouted cheerfully and did a somersault on the spot. I'll help you too, Master San. If there is anything you want me to do, just let me know. Yeah, I'll be counting on you. A slim, middle-aged man came from the city gate as we talked. His expression was dark, and he had a serious vibe about him. I'm Popolo. The branch manager of the Adventurers Guild of Two. Dot you must be Kakauzaku Sama, right? I've been waiting for your arrival. The man then suddenly dropped to his knees and bowed deeply. He shouted in a clinging voice, 
adopting a dojezo-like posture. I'm terribly sorry to interrupt your journey, but please, please, please save R2. Please. I was puzzled by the suddenness of the situation but decided to listen to what he had to say in the carriage. I asked Chief Popola to sit on the sofa on the first floor. I, Iris, and Zurara also sat down on the sofa across from him. Branch Manager San. Can I ask you to explain the situation first? Why yes. Popolo began to speak in a tone of fear and trepidation. According to the report, a monster called Devil Triant appeared in the northwestern second plains about an hour ago. Devil Triant is a giant tree-shaped monster that walks on two legs, and its danger level is classified as S+. It is said to be extremely difficult to defeat, as it has the power to destroy a city like to in half a day once it starts rampaging and it also has very advanced regeneration ability. Currently, I've asked a traveling priest to use special magic to stall the devil treant for a while. But it happened so suddenly that we haven't been able to evacuate the residents or organize a subjugation force in time. Chief Popola made a heartfelt expression of apology and bowed his head again. I am aware of Kusama's activities. I heard that you defeated a powerful monster called the Black Dragon. Could you please use that power to defeat the devil treant? Dot I understand. I nodded. I have the option of refusing but abandoning them would be a bad aftertaste. I have plenty of cheat skills and cheat items, and the odds are good that I will win. But let me correct one thing. I did not accomplish the defeat of the Black Dragon by myself. She also fought with me. I said that and looked at Iris. Dot me. Iris blinked her eyes in confusion. Apparently, she didn't expect to be the topic of conversation. I know that. Zurara shouted. Iris Nain used the Dragon God Shield to protect Master San from the Black Dragon's flames. So that's what happened. Popolo nodded and bowed again. Kusama and Iris Sama, please save too. We are counting on you. Thus, we received a request from Chief Popolo and set out to defeat the Devil Tree and the situation is critical. We'd better hurry. After Chief Popolo stepped out of the carriage. We used the ladder on the back of the carriage to climb up to the roof. The view was good, and we could see all around us. The roof was flat, so there was no need to worry about falling off. Master San, Iris and Ayin, why don't you go inside the carriage? Zurara asked curiously. It's to get a better view. We're going into battle, and it's better to be able to see things with your own eyes. Iris and I were in agreement. Even if it's a small detail. I'm kind of glad that I'm in sync with her. Feeling a warmth in my chest, I told Dest. Let's go. Northwest direction, full speed. Understood. We are moving. The carriage begins to move. At first, the speed was like walking, but it gradually increased, and soon the surrounding scenery began to flow rapidly. The carriage is equipped with wind protection A+, so the effect of the wind is minimal. If it weren't for that, we'd have been blown off the roof. Hey. Iris whispered to my left. Thanks for what you did earlier. Eh? It's about the Black Dragon. Didn't you correct the story about me fighting with you? Iris is a very important friend, after all. Dot foo foo. What's wrong? Nothing. You can leave the defense to me this time, too. Iris said and raised the Dragon God Shield. It was an item that I originally restored with, creation, skill, but since it can only be handled by Iris, who is the owner of the, Dragon Shrine Maiden skill, I left it with her for the time being. Normally, it seems to be stored in a pouch on her waist, but as it was before the battle, she was holding it firmly in her left hand. She seemed to be fully motivated. After 15 minutes of driving the carriage at full speed to the northwest, we saw the shadow of a giant in the distance. No, it wasn't. It was a tree in the shape of a giant. Its size could rival that of a condominium tower in the city. It was over 50 meters tall. The trunk, the tree's body, was covered with crumbly bark, and countless branches and roots twisted together to form the arms and legs. The position of the head is obscured by the lack of a neck, but a devilish face appears on the torso slightly above the arms. I activate my, appraisal, devil tree and, a giant tree-shaped monster. Its character is extremely violent, and it loves destruction and slaughter more than anything else. It has a high level of regeneration so defeating it is often a long battle. It seems that this huge tree is definitely a devil tree and there were many silvery chains wrapped around its limbs, blocking its movements. I wondered what those chains were. Just as I was about to question it, 
Iris explained it to me as if she had sensed it. Celestial chain it is a high level light magic. It is a chain of magical power that restrains the opponent. But there aren't many magicians who can hold back devil tree and I remember Popolo saying that. He said he asked a traveling priest to stole the devil tree and yeah. The priest must be quite skilled. Master San. The chain is going to break soon. It was just after Zurara shouted, oh, ooh, 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 ooh. the devil tree and let out a scream and swept its right arm wide open. It broke several chains, and they disappeared. With its free right hand, it now tore off the chains on its left arm. The chains that bound its legs were also torn apart by its slight movement. Coo, look, Iris pointed to a spot just in front of the devil tree and there. I could see a small figure. It was probably the traveling priest. The priest's body was enveloped in a flashing silver light, and a chain of light extended from the ground around the priest and wrapped around devil tree and that priest must have activated the celestial chain again. However, the chain disappeared like a mist. Perhaps the priest had run out of magic power. The priest's body slumped and fell to the ground. I commanded Dest. We'll retrieve the priest first. Hurry up. Copy that. Accelerating. The speed of the carriage increased rapidly. In the meantime, the devil tree and swung its right leg wide open. <laughs> it seems that the devil tree and intends to crush the priest. Before that, however, our carriage made it to the priest. The sudden breaking shook the roof. I jumped out of the carriage and immediately ran to the priest's side. Dot she's just a kid, isn't she? I couldn't help but be surprised. It was a small, slender, silver-haired girl who held Devil Treant in place. Her face was neat, but her eyes were closed. She must have been about 14 or 15 years old. Suddenly, the surroundings became dark. I looked up to see the Devil Treant's right leg approaching. But I'm in no hurry. When I turned my eyes to the roof of the carriage, I saw Iris holding up the Dragon God shield. With a shout, the Dragon God barrier X effect is activated, and the light barrier spreads out. Bang! The right leg of the Devil Tree and hits the light barrier. But there was not a single crack in the barrier, completely shutting out the enemy's attack. The Devil Tree and repeatedly stomped its right foot in frustration, but it could not break through the barrier. I picked up the priestess in the meantime and returned to the carriage. Then. Zurara suddenly plopped down from the roof. Master San. I'll take care of the girl. Okay. I'm counting on you. Yes. I'll swell up a little. Blub, 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 blub. Zurara's body quickly increases to about five times his original size. Dot what on earth was happening? I doubt it very much. But I'm in a battle now. I can think about it later. I put the girl on Zurara's back. Put her in the bedroom upstairs. Yes. Zurara moved. Crawling along the ground with the girl on his back, opened the door of the grand cabin, and went inside. I watched him go and then climb the ladder back up to the roof. The protective barrier is still under the onslaught of Devil Tree and, but it's not shaken at all. Iris glanced back at me with her dragon god shield raised. Welcome back, Ku. I'm back. Are you okay? I'm better than I was with the black dragon, but I still need to get some rest. Okay. I nodded and said loudly to Dest. We have to leave the Devil Treant for now. Get away from Devil Treant as fast as you can. Understood. The carriage began to move immediately. It made a sharp turn and turned away from the Devil Treant. I think it's safe to say that we've gotten pretty far from it. When Iris lowered the Dragon God shield, the protective barrier disappeared. On the contrary, I took out the Dragon Slayer's magic sword Gram from my item box. It was a huge sword with a length of over two meters, and its blade shone with a dazzling silver color. I'll leave a little present for you. I held Gram on my right shoulder and readied it. When magic power is poured into the blade, I activate one of the granted effects. God of War slash S plus. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. I swung the sword down from the upper left to the lower right with great force. The magic power in the blade was released, and it became a huge slash that sliced through the devil tree and its left leg. Gwa. The devil tree and screamed in agony. In the next moment, an amazing phenomenon occurred. The left leg, which was separated from the body, melted into a gooey mess and collapsed. At the same time, Countless roots grew from the cut surface of the body side and intertwined to form a new left leg. What an incredible regeneration ability. As I was admiring it, the devil treant's whole body trembled. What in the world is it going to do? Ku, be careful. The branches are coming. Immediately after Iris shouted, countless branches sprouted from the devil treant's body. With a roar, 
the branches shot out. They changed their trajectory in the air like guided missiles and rushed towards our carriage at a furious speed. Of course, I'm not received the attack quietly. I took out the flame dragon emperor's ring from their item box, and put it on the middle finger of my left hand. The ring will activate the flame emperor, increasing my aptitude for fire magic to the extreme. The target is all the branches, don't let even one of them get close. Fire arrow. When I held up my left hand, fire arrows shot out from my palm like a machine gun, shooting down every branch. A flower of flame bloomed in the air one after another. Beautiful. Iris couldn't help but blurt out a word. But Ku, when did you learn to use magic? Just recently. You really can do anything can't you? But if you can use fire magic, it's a lot easier. What's the matter? There are two ways to defeat a devil tree and one is a prolonged battle of brute force. Just keep attacking until its regenerative ability reaches its limit. You mean I could just keep running around while shooting figured of wars slash s plus from a distance? Yes, that's what I mean. It will take a little time, but it's possible with Ku's strength. What's the other way? A short battle with fire magic. If you burn off its head completely, the devil treant will die before regenerating. That's what I'd recommend. Right. I nodded. The longer the fight goes on, the more likely that an unforeseen event would occur. The sooner it's settled, the better. Dot but where is the devil treant's head? You see the face at the top of the torso? Just imagine burning all of it. I see. However, the devil treant was so huge that aiming at its face from the ground was a little too far. I think I should try an aerial battle here. I took out the flying potion from my item box. What's that, Ku? You remember that we collected some flying mushrooms before, right? It's a flying potion made from it. If you drink it, you can fly. I didn't know such potions existed. You never cease to amaze me, Ku. Iris sighed in admiration but quickly regained her composure. You mean... You drink the potion and attack from the air? Yes. It's hard to attack from the ground. I'll be back in a bit. Wait. Iris reached out with her left hand and grabbed my right hand. I'm coming with you. It would be easier if we split up our roles, Ku attacking and me defending. Indeed. Considering the possibility that the devil treant will shoot branches at me as it did earlier, it would be best to leave the defense to Iris. That way. I can spend all my magic power on attacking. Then hold on to my right arm. That way, we can fly together. Okay. Iris pulled herself closer and wrapped her left arm around my right arm. Is this okay? Yeah. We were arm in arm as if we were lovers. But there was no embarrassment on my part or Iris's part. We were in the middle of a battle, and it was necessary. I guess we're similar in that we can think of things dryly. I gulped down the flying potion. The rich, mellow aroma hit my nose and my body floated. Iris's feet have not yet left the roof of the carriage. Full assist, is activated, and a voice is heard in my mind. Do you want to include Iris not Fafna in the area of effect of wind blessing S+. Plus? When I gave a slight nod, Iris's legs lifted off the ground. It's a strange feeling. It feels a little light and fluffy. Aren't you afraid? I'm fine. Ku is with me, after all. Apparently, she trusts me a lot. Well, I guess I should respond to that. I gained a little bit of altitude and went around in front of Dest, who was pulling a carriage and running fast. You'll have to get away to a safe place. Is that clear? Yes. Good luck, Master. Dest gave me a thumbs up with his right hand. I nodded and took Iris up into the sky with me. Don't let go of my arm. Of course. But you don't have to hold on so tightly. Do you? The wind is supporting us from below. It's like I'm being lifted lightly all the way up. That's true. Iris's description was something I could understand too. It is true that the sensation of flying with few wind blessing S plus is similar to being lifted up by someone. When I looked back, I saw that the devil treant was approaching us, shaking the earth with its two legs. I decided to maintain my altitude and wait for the devil treant. It was almost within range of my fire arrow. That's when it happened. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. The devil treant let out a yell and suddenly began to charge at us at full speed. The speed was unimaginable given its huge body. It raised its left fist to strike at us. I won't let you. Iris raised the dragon god shield with her right hand. The dragon god's barrier X was activated and a light barrier blocked the devil treant's fist. Now, Ku. Yeah. I nodded and thrust my left hand forward. The target is the devil treant's head, and I will use all of my magic power for a one-shot kill. The normal fire arrow is fired instantly from my left hand. But this time, 
Perhaps because the power was raised to the maximum, the situation was very different from usual. A large magic circle spread out, starting from my left hand. The magic circle began to rotate at high speed, and a huge flame arrow slowly appeared from its center. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash o two slash o o o two six dot jpg. Iris and I glanced at each other for a moment and gave each other a slight nod. I'll release the barrier. Go, fire arrow. The protective barrier suddenly disappeared and a huge flame arrow was shot out from behind it. The recoil shattered the magic circle, and we were blown backward. Q. Kaya. While adjusting my posture to avoid crashing, I followed the fire arrow with my eyes. The fire arrow hit the devil treant's right fist directly and proceeded to crush it and burn it, reaching the head. Q. The devil treant screamed. Immediately after, a huge explosion occurred. The torrential flames consumed the upper half of the devil treant's body completely annihilating it from this world. All that was left was its left arm and the lower half of its body. The left arm was blown off by the impact, spinning around and crashing into a distant mountain. The lower half of its body tilted backward and fell to the ground. There is no sign of regeneration. The subjugation has been completed. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 7 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed blast. Chapter 7, I tried to clean up various things. I blew away the entire upper half of the devil treant's body with a fire arrow of maximum power. With this experience gain, my level has increased from 92 to 95. This means that my MP has finally surpassed 50,000, but how much more can I grow? Is there a limit, or is it just like an infinite sky? Well, it should become clearer as I continued to fight and level up. The Devil Treant's left arm and lower body are stored in my item box, by automatic collection. I might be able to use them as materials for new items, and that's something I'm looking forward to. Koo, you really are out of the ordinary. Iris sighed in admiration as she held onto my right arm. Ku is probably the only person in the world who can defeat Devil Treant with a single blow. It's because Iris took care of the defense. Thanks to you. I was able to pour all of my magic power into the fire arrow. Thank you, Fufu. I'm glad I could be of help to Ku. While exchanging such a conversation with Iris, I slowly lowered my altitude. As I landed on the ground, Dest approached from afar, pulling the carriage. Master, congratulations on your successful victory. Are you injured? I'm fine. How about you? Are you okay? The damage rate is 0%. We're doing great. Dest stretched his chest and saluted. Do you want to go back to the city? Yes, that's the plan. Go to the north gate of two. Understood. Then, please, get to the carriage. I nodded and got into the carriage with Iris. Then, just as we entered, Zurara was waiting for us. Master San, Iris and Ain, welcome back. Hi, Zurara. Zurara Chan, are you okay? Are you hurt? No, I'm fine. Speaking of which, Where's that priestess who collapsed? She's upstairs. Follow me. Zurara led Iris and me up the stairs next to the entrance. There are two bedrooms on the second floor of the carriage, and the priestess was lying in the back room. When we entered the room, the girl was lying peacefully with her left side facing us. On the right shoulder of her white clothes was a crest that looked like a cross. Upon closer look at the crest, it was a combination of a sword, a spear, and a bow. It's quite an interesting design. But what exactly does it mean? When I asked Iris about it, she replied, it's a symbol of the god of war. God of war? It's a religion whose main deity is the warden, the god of war. This girl must be a priest of the god of war religion. Ara, what's wrong? I just realized that the sword on this crest looks exactly like Ku's sword. Dot you're right. I nodded my head. It was true if you asked me. The sword depicted on the crest of the god of war religion is very similar to the dragon slayer's magic sword which I have. The description on the gram when I used, appraisal, mentioned that it was a magic sword said to have been given to heroes by the god of war, so maybe it is an item related to the god of war. As I was thinking about this, the carriage eventually stopped moving. Master, we've arrived at the north gate. Dest's voice could be heard from a speaker type magic device built into the ceiling. It seems that we have arrived at two. Well then, Let's get off. What about the priestess? Should we wake her up? Dot I wonder. The priestess is sound asleep and is not likely to wake up yet. It's a bit pitiful to wake her up. Master San, 
I'll take care of her. Zurara shouted energetically and grew into a huge, fluffy creature. He seemed to be planning to carry the girl. I gently picked up the girl and placed her on Zurara's back. Now that the preparations are complete, let's go. I walked out of the carriage with Iris and Zurara. First, I went to Dest's place and called out to him. Thank you for today. Get some rest. Yes, it's a pleasure to be of service. Please call me when you're ready. He bowed with his left arm on his stomach and right on his back, like a butler. I touched his body and thought of storing him in my, item box. A magic circle appeared on the ground, and Dest and the carriage disappeared as if absorbed into it. Now, let's enter the city. Just as we started to walk toward the city gate, people who looked like adventurers appeared one after another from within the city. There were more than fifty of them, and they were rushing towards us. You're the dragon slayer Kukauzaka, right? A middle-aged adventurer with a beard spoke to me. Judging from the atmosphere, this person must be the group leader. I nodded and answered. Yes, that's right. What is this all about? We're, well, we're like a death squad. Death squad? Adventurers help each other. We may be small fry compared to you, but we can at least act as decoys. That's why I gathered a group of brave souls. From the looks of it, it looks like you've defeated the devil tree and... Dot I'm sorry. No, no. Number. No need to apologize. Thanks for saving the city. Thank you very much from the bottom of our hearts. The middle-aged adventurer smiled, looked around at the other adventurers, and shouted loudly. You guys, the one here is a great benefactor of two. We're going to carry him back to the adventurers guild in the big hall. Oh, uh, 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 eh? Before I knew it, I was being carried up by a group of adventurers and carried to the adventurers guild like a portable shrine. More than ten minutes later, I was ushered into the adventurers guild of Tiz chief's office to report to Chief Popolo on the defeat of Devil Tree and Popolo and I are sitting across from each other on a hard sofa. Iris and Zurara were not here, as they were bringing the priestess into the guild's infirmary. Kusama, thank you very much for defeating the Devil Tree and Chief Popolo stood up from the sofa and bowed deeply. If you had not come, the city of Ta would have been destroyed. I will be sure to inform the Adventurers Guild headquarters of your achievement. So, can you tell me about the process of how you defeat it? I understand. I explained what had happened since we left the North Gate of Tu. When I finished telling him everything, Chief Popolo had a stunned look on his face. I've heard rumors, but you really do have non-standard abilities, don't you? If I had been alone. I'm sure there would have been casualties. The priestess might not have survived, and the city of Ta might have been damaged because it took so long to defeat the devil tree and it was thanks to the help of Iris, Dest, and Zurara that things worked out well this time. You are a humble man, Kusama. Chief Popolo muttered admiringly. You have great power, but you are not conceited about it, and you are able to recognize the people around you. I believe that a real hero is someone like you. When I left the branch manager's office after finishing my report to Chief Popolo, Iris and Zurara were waiting for me in the hallway. Ku, good work. Thank you. How'd it go over here? The priestess is fine. She's been checked by a healer. But it looks like she's just tired. She's going to wake up in the night. So we're leaving her in a bed in the infirmary. She was sleeping like a baby. I see. Zurara's statement was full of onomatopoeia but the meaning was understandable in its own way. The priestess must be sleeping peacefully. I guess that's all over now. Yes. What are you going to do after this? Now that our business at the guild is over, why don't we go to dinner? I agree. I'm starving too. Yay. Dinner comma dinner dot. It seems that both Iris and Zurara were hungry. The clock on the wall in the corridor shows that it is already 8 o'clock in the evening. This is the time when you would normally finish your meal and I'm pretty hungry too. Damn you, devil tree and the city is safe and sound, so I guess we're all happy. For your information, the reward for defeating the devil tree and, including the rescue of the priestess, was subject to evaluation, and the total amount was more than three million comza. However, since it was impossible for the to branch to prepare such a large amount of money immediately, I was paid 300,000 comza or 10% of the reward and the remaining 2,7 million comza was to be received at the Adventurers Guild headquarters in the royal capital. Well, for me, even 300,000 comza is quite a lot of money. I've been earning a lot of money in Un, and I'll be able to live happily for a few years. After we left the branch, we headed to the meat street in the northwest part of the city. There were so many meat restaurants lined up that we thought, 
This must be it. The streets were crowded with people, having already recovered from the chaos. As I walked around looking for a place to eat, I could hear voices coming from everywhere. Well, I'm glad the city is safe. When I heard about the devil tree and, I thought it was over. Thank God the dragon slayer was into. That's right. Kahahahaha. <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be the tropic of conversation, but at the same time, I'm filled with a sense of accomplishment. I'm in the mood for a little drinking today. Let's go to a place where we can enjoy not only meat but also alcohol. We went to a restaurant called Rand Cat Restaurant, which was one of the best places to eat, according to the May Guide. The restaurant was crowded, but luckily there was one open table left. We ordered that a beefsteak with her breadcrumbs and homemade wine to go with the meat. Both were served immediately. Dot delicious. The wine is good. Too. Master San. It's so juicy. The crispy surface of the to beef steak with her breadcrumbs overflows with the flavor of the meat as you bite into it. The refreshing flavor of the herbs neutralizes the fat in the meat, so it's not overpowering, and you can eat as much as you want. The richness of the homemade wine was a perfect match for the meat. The vanilla ice cream for dessert was also excellent, and we left the restaurant very satisfied. Now then. Let's go to the inn. Our inn from the night was called Moon Viewing Pavilion, located in the northeast part of town. It was a red brick building with an air of luxury. When we entered the lobby, there was a fluffy carpet on the floor and a large chandelier shining brightly from the ceiling. The inn's atmosphere was similar to that of the quiet Moon Pavilion in Arn. The name was also similar, and this place may be affiliated with the Scarlet Trading Company. I went to the front desk and handed the woman at the reception desk the letter of introduction from Chrome San. Then the manager came from the back and bowed deeply. I'm so glad you're here, Kukauzuka-sama. Dot. I would like to thank you very much for protecting the city of Tu. On behalf of the entire staff, I would like to express our sincere gratitude. After that, we were escorted to our room by the manager himself. It was on the fifth floor the top floor of the inn. As for the rooms, instead of one large room. For the Kukauzakusama group, Iris and I were separated. There are many problems with men and women sharing a room, so this is very considerate. Both rooms were VIP suites, complete with a bedroom, living room, bathroom, kitchen, and home bar. It's just perfect. I heard that you will be staying here for one day and two nights. Is it correct to treat Zurarasama as Kusama's pet? I'm not a pet. I'm a helper slime, you know. Zurara said, then jumped up and down a little. But, since this is getting complicated, I'll be a pet for now. Woof, woof, meow meow, cock a doodle doo. Thank you for your cooperation. The manager dutifully bowed to Zurara. Kusama, Iris notes Sama. Do you have any other questions? I don't have any. I'm fine, too. Yes, sir. Enjoy your stay. After the manager left. We decided to gather in my room and discuss our future plans. When I entered my room, there was a living room with several sofas in front of it. Iris, I, and Zurara sat down side by side on the biggest sofa in the room. Tomorrow we'll go sightseeing into, right? Is there anywhere you want to go? Right. I opened my, item box, and took out a sightseeing guidebook from there. Opening to the page onto. There were beautiful farm scenes on the page. The southern part of the city seems to be entirely devoted to ranching, so why don't we go there? Sounds good. Oh, they also offer sheep shaving for tourists. Sounds interesting. Helping sheep San. Zurara's A's lit up. I'll do my best. I wonder if shaving the sheep is a kind of caring. I don't know the details, but Zurara seems very happy. Master San. What are you doing the day after tomorrow? We'll leave to in the morning and be in Surya in the evening. Surya is located northeast of here and is famous for its hot springs. I'm planning to stay a bit so I can take it easy and visit the hot springs. Well, it's still a few days away, and we can decide the details then. We agreed to meet at the front desk at 9am tomorrow morning and then broke up for the night. Good night, Ku and Zura Chan. See you tomorrow. See you later. Iris Nain, Zurara and I waved Iris off to the hallway. Well, well, let's take a shower to refresh ourselves. As I headed for the bathroom, Zurara followed behind me. Master San, bath time? Can I come in too? Sure, why not? Yay, bath, bath. I don't have to tell you this now, but Zurara is no ordinary slime. He's a magical creature. That was artificially created by the technology of an ancient civilization. The best thing about him is that he can take care of people. This ability was demonstrated beautifully in the bathroom. Master San, I'll wash your head. Yes, 
Please, I'm going to scrub your head. Do you have any itchy spots? I'm fine. I'll wash it off. That's it. Next, I'll scrub your back. I'll rub your shoulders, too. Do you think I'm too stiff? Master San, you're tense like a Norigel can kill him. I'll give you a good massage. Ah, creak, creak, creak. There was a dull sound that rang out from my shoulder. Master San, are you feeling better? Dot yes. I am. I rotate my arms. It seems that the stiffness in my muscles is gone, and my movements are lighter. It seems that helper slime is also a first-rate masseuse. I feel much better. Thank you. I patted the helper slime with gratitude. Foo foo. I've been praised by Master San. That's great. After that, I took a shower and went into the bathtub. Of course, Zurara was with me. If I left him alone, he would sink to the bottom of the tub. So I decided to hold him with both hands. Master San, the bath is so warm. Be careful not to overheat. Yes, uck, it's so hot. Now that we're all warmed up, let's get out of here. After finishing the bath, I lay down on my bed. The clock in my bedroom was already striking midnight. Master San, good night. Munya, Zurara was right beside me, snuggled up to me like a cat in winter. His body was warm and cozy. I close my eyes and reflect on the events of the day. The send-off when we left Tan was amazing. It was like a parade, with fireworks and musicians playing. I was so lucky to be surrounded by so many people. One day, when I return to An, I want to say thank you to everyone. The trip in the Grand Cabin was much more comfortable than I had imagined, and come to think of it, I hadn't read in a long time. The second mystery book I read was interesting. There seems to be a sequel so I might have to look for it in a bookstore. Here into, I had a battle with Devil Treant, but there was no damage to the city, and I was able to save the priestess. It's a happy ending without complaint. I'm glad, I'm glad. I wonder what kind of event awaits us tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. Well then, good night. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 8. Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast. Chapter 8. I went sightseeing into the following day, I woke up at 8 am. It seemed I had slept well, and my mind was clear. The morning sun shining through the window was dazzling. Zurara was sleeping peacefully beside me. Q. Supi. At this rate, he will probably remain asleep for a while yet. I activate my dexterity, and slowly leave the bed, taking great care not to wake Zurara. I washed my face in the bathroom, fixed my hair and sat down on the sofa in the living room. I looked at the clock and saw that it was 8.20 a.m. Today's departure was at 9 a.m., and I would meet Iris at the front desk. I still have plenty of time to spare. Dot okay. I'm going to use, creation, since I defeated the Devil Treant yesterday. I open my, item box, in my mind. I chose Devil Treant's left arm x1 from the list and first performed, dismantling. Then, I got about 200 devil tree and branches. Because of its large size, the number of materials is also quite large. Next, I put the lower half of the devil tree and under, dismantling, and obtained about 400 devil tree and trunks and 200 devil tree and roots. Now, is there a new recipe? What came to my mind was not a recipe for creation, but for Material Alchemy. Devil tree and branch x500 Idrisal branch x1. Material Alchemy is a skill that allows you to create a higher level material by multiplying the same material. In the past, I've collected lonely wolf pelts and converted them into Fenra belts. The Fenra coat that I created from it has a powerful effect called Edged Speed Protection X, which is useful even in situations outside of combat. What kind of items can I create from the Drissel branches? I'm really looking forward to it. With my heart filled with anticipation, I executed, Material Alchemy, Drissel Branch. This is a branch of the Divine Tree Drizzle, which supports this world. It holds sacred power within it. Drizzle is a name that often appears in Japanese anime and video games, but the origins of that name is a huge tree from Norse mythology that supports multiple worlds from below with its branches and leaves. I took out a Drizzle branch from my item box. It's light green in color and glows with a divine radiance, and just looking at it makes me feel solemn. However, I couldn't come up with a recipe for creation, using the drizzle branch as a material. Perhaps I don't have enough skill levels. Well, there's no need to panic. If I continue to repeat the creation process, my skill level will eventually increase, and I should be able to come up with a recipe that uses a drizzle branch. I'll save it for then. I store the drizzle branch in my 
item box. About five minutes later, Zurara woke up. Master San, good morning. Oh, good morning. I'll get ready right away. Please wait a moment. Zurara said and headed for the washroom, bouncing up and down. Dot what do you mean by getting ready, helper slime? I was curious, so I followed behind. Zurara climbed up on the edge of the wash basin and posed in various ways while looking in the mirror. Yes, I'm perfect today, too. I don't know what it is. But I'm sure that confirmation is important to Zurara. Then he opened his mouth wide, took out the white round hat Iris had given him yesterday and put it on his head. The connection with the warehouse in the underground city is broken, but it still functions as a subspace for storage. Master San, I'm ready. Let's go. I descended the stairs and headed for the first floor. It was a little early, but Iris was already waiting for us at the front desk of the inn. Good morning, Ku. Zura-chan, did I keep you waiting? No, I just got here. Dot foo foo. What's wrong? We always have this exchange in the morning, don't we? That's true if you ask me. Dot I think we should try to change it up a bit in the future. After that, we left the key at the front desk and went sightseeing into. The city of Ta has a rather strange shape. It resembles a snowman with a small circle on top of a large circle. We are at the head part of the snowman and this part is called North too. The atmosphere is that of a typical city. A lot of buildings are lined up, and people and carriages are busily coming and going along the paved streets. But as we walked down the street into the body of the snowman, in South too, we saw a peaceful pasture. It's a completely different world from the North to the South, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's hard to believe this is all one city. Iris said as she walked on my left. I read in a book once that two is an old word that means two faces. It fits this town perfectly. Oh, Master San. There's a cow. Moo, moo. Zurara was frolicking around like a child, bouncing from place to place. There were wooden fences on either side of the road and many cows lazing around beyond them. The sky was blue, and the sun was warm and sunny. After walking for a while, I saw a herd of sheep gathered on the other side of the fence. Wow, now there's a sheep. Me, me. I guess this side is a sheep farm. Hey, Ku. Where do they let people shear sheep? Wait a minute. I took out the tourist guidebook from my item box and confirmed the place for the sheep shearing experience. It seems that the place is definitely nearby. The reception area seems to be a hut with a red roof. But where is it? Dot it's right there. I continued straight down the road for about 20 meters and found the hut on the right. There was a signboard at the entrance that said, come here to register for shearing with a picture of a sheep. This seemed to be the right place. Let's go in. Yay, I'll do my best. As we were talking, the hut door opened, and a middle-aged man in a straw hat came out. Come on in. Are you guys here for a shearing session? Yes. Are you open right now? Oh, we're just about ready in a moment. Feel free to come in. The middle-aged man urged us to go inside the hut. The entire floor of the hut was covered with straw and three sheep were making their way around. You can pay later. Just wait for me to get ready. The middle-aged man spread a large cloth in the middle of the hut and brought a sheep from the back. I'll tell you in advance, I have, sheep herder, skill. Don't worry, the sheep will never harm you. In return, please don't be rough with them. I understand. Please take care of us. I nodded, and the middle-aged man smiled. All right, then. Let's get started. There are some useful magic tools these days that make sheep shearing a lot easier. The middle-aged man said and brought out a clipper-like magic tool that was hanging on the wall nearby. The name of this tool is Sheep Clipper, and it's easy to use. All you have to do is move it while holding it against the route of the fur, and it will automatically trim the fur neatly. Give it a try, brother. Oh, come on, that's so sudden. I'd like you to show me how to do it first. But that's okay. I took the clippers, or sheep clippers, from him. The moment I did, my dexterity kicked in, and I became one of the top hair cutters in the world. Ha! Ah, me. When I wield the sheep clipper, the sheep's wool is shorn from the roots and falls to the floor. This feels good. The sheep seem to be in a good mood and are bleating. Ha! Ah, me. Me. Ha! Ah, me. E. Dot few. It took about three minutes. I had finished shearing the sheep leaving it completely naked. W wow. The middle-aged man gulped. Iris and Zurara also seemed surprised and looked at me with their eyes rolled up. C can really do anything. You're an expert shearer, aren't you, Master San? Yay, yay. It's thanks to my skills. So, Iris is next. Right. I wonder if I could do as well as Ku. Good luck, 
Iris Nain. The middle-aged man brought in another sheep, and Iris began to shear it. It's not easy. It seems there is a trick to the angle of the sheep clipper, and she is struggling a bit. I'll help you. Sheep San, I'm going to pull your fur a bit. Me. As you would expect from helper slime, as soon as Zurara stepped in to assist, the shearing began to go smoothly. Iris seems to be enjoying herself. As I watched, the middle-aged man came up to me and spoke. By the way, brother, what city are you from? Arn. So you know the story of the Dragon Slayer, right? E. Well, in fact, I'm the Dragon Slayer myself, but I don't think I need to tell him my name. For now, I'll just nod vaguely. Brother, what kind of person is the Dragon Slayer? If you don't mind, let me know. He's a hero who saved too, and I can't help but be curious about him. Um, well, how should I answer? While I was pondering, the man continued to speak. I've heard that the Dragon Slayer is a young man with black eyes and black hair, accompanied by a red-haired dragon folk and a strange, round creature. Dot. Wait a minute, brother, could it be? No, I think you've got the wrong guy. By the way, how much do you charge for the shearing experience? It's 300 coms per sheep. This is the second sheep you have sheared, so the total will be 600 coms. I'll pay it while I'm here. I opened my item box and paid for the shearing experience. That's right, 600 coms. Thank you. Dot by the way, brother, you are the dragon slayer, right? Yes. Oops. I was asked casually, so I answered honestly. I knew it. The middle-aged man grinned and handed me back 600 coms. Then you can have it for free. I can't take money from a hero who saved the city. That sounds rather apologetic. Then this is the fee for the sightseeing. That was some expert shearing you did there. I understand. Let's do that then. I nodded. It would be rude to refrain from doing so here. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. It's okay. In the meantime, let me introduce you to the other guys. Many of them would want to thank you. After Iris and Zurara had finished shearing, the man led us on a tour of the ranch. Everywhere we went, we were told, thank you for protecting the city. You've been a great help to us. We were thanked with words of gratitude and even given gifts in return, but before we knew it, a spontaneous feast had started. What exactly was the flow of events? Dragon Slayer brother, since you're here. Why don't you drink some of our milk? Would you like some homemade cheese? Oh, our cheese is second to none. Cheese and wine goes together, doesn't it? This is my father's special wine, let's drink it together. Yes, at first, it was just a matter of tasting the farm's cheese. However, when someone brought wine, the tension around us rose, and before we knew it, all the people from the ranch had gathered together in a big feast. No, that's not all. Cows, sheep, chickens and other animals had also gathered. A toast to two's safety and the dragon slayer's achievements. Cheers. Under the blue sky, the cheerful voices of the people echoed. At the same time, the animals also raised their cries. Moo, -oo. me, Kluwa, ah, ah. It seems that in this world, not only humans but also animals are in a groove. Dot, it's pretty chaotic, isn't it? But I don't hate it. We had a great time surrounded by the people and animals of the ranch. The feast lasted for a while and finally broke up in the evening. Come again, Dragon Slayer brother. You're always welcome here. The cows are waiting for you, too. The people, and animals, of the ranch saw us off, and we left. The sky was tinged with red, and the sun was about to set in the western sky. We've stayed here quite a while. It's not bad to spend time like this. Dot, but I drank a little too much. Iris seems to be drunk and her steps are a bit unsteady. I'm worried that she might fall. Zurara is tired and asleep, so I carry him in my right arm. The soft and cool sensation is pleasant. K looks fine. But didn't you drink more than me? It's thanks to the transmigrator. I have resistance to abnormalities. I can be tipsy, but I would never get drunk. That's enviable. Dot Kai Iris let out a small scream. It seems that her legs got tangled and she lost her balance. Oops. I stretched out my left arm and hugged Iris around the waist to support her body. Are you okay? I'm fine. Thanks, Ku. Iris let out a sigh of relief. I thought about it for a while and then took out an antidote potion from my item box. This is one of the items that I produced with creation in the past, and it includes detoxification effects enhancement S plus as a granted effect. You can drink it if you like. It should make you feel a little better. I appreciate it. Iris received the antidote potion and immediately sipped it. Her throat rumbled up and down. Dot wow, 
This is amazing. Iris's expression was one of surprise. I feel so much better now. My head feels clearer like I'm back to the way I was right before I drank. It's a trop quality detoxification potion. I guess I can drink as much as I want with this. Iris giggled and began to walk with a light step. Heiku, where are we going next? We're almost there. Eh? It was the east gate of the city. There was a staircase right next to it that led to the top of the city walls. Are we going out of the city by any chance? No. We're not. I shook my head. At the east gate of two, they opened the top of the wall as an observation deck. Would you like to go there? Oh, that sounds interesting. Iris smiled at me. Well, let's take a little detour, shall we? The stairs leading to the top of the city walls were much longer than expected. It would be about eight or nine stories high if applied to modern Japan. There was no one but us on the observation deck. The view from the observation deck was breathtaking, perhaps due to the time of day which was dusk. Looking toward the city, we could see a peaceful ranch in the foreground and a bustling city in the distance. The city named Two Faces, too, was now colored red by the setting sun. Dot it's beautiful. Yeah. Iris and I spent a while just quietly gazing at the city of Two. We were the only two people on the observation deck. No, it was just the two of us and one animal. Zurara was sleeping comfortably in my right arm. The people at the ranch, they were so grateful. Iris said, looking back at the earlier feast. How are you feeling? Hero of Tusan. To be honest, I was surprised. I smiled bitterly. I was completely unprepared for such a welcome. Well, I can understand how the people at the ranch feel. You do? Over the years, the de ranch has grown to its present size by passing from parent to child and from child to grandchild. If it weren't for Ku, the entire history of the ranch would have disappeared, and for that, I'm sure they would be very grateful. Dot I see. It seems that I was protecting a lot more than I imagined. The property of the people of the city and the history built up by the ancestors. That kind of thing is certainly important. As the sun began to set behind the mountains, we left the observation deck. Thank you, Ku. It was a beautiful view. That's good to know. Iris seemed pleased with the view, and I was satisfied as well. The next step was dinner, but there was one big problem. Iris. Is there anything you want to eat? Um, to be honest, I'm not really hungry yet. Me neither. Perhaps it's because the food and drinks from the lunchtime feast are still in my stomach. It seems that the feeling of fullness cannot be nullified by the transmigrator. Shall we have dinner later? Yes, let's go somewhere to kill some time. Is there somewhere you want to go? Right. I thought about it for a while and then asked her. Do you remember yesterday when we brought the girl to the guild's infirmary? The priestess. The one with the silver hair? She might be awake, but I just want to make sure. Can we stop by the Adventurer's Guild? Okay. I was wondering the same thing, so let's go. We agreed on a plan, so we started walking towards the western part of the city. I thought Zurara was asleep, but he woke up with a big yawn. Munya. Good morning, Master San. I must have fallen asleep. I'm sorry. Did you sleep well? Yes, very well. Zurara replied and jumped down from my right arm. Well. In my dream, I chatted with everyone in the underground city. I wonder if by everyone he means the other slimes. I think so. I nodded at Iris' words. Right after that, full assist, is activated to supplement the information. Fume, fume. Apparently, the consciousnesses of the helper slimes are connected as one at the deepest level, and Zurara is able to share information with other slimes during sleep. Synchronizing while asleep, that's like a computer function. Eventually, we arrived at the Adventurers Guilds to branch. The main lobby was deserted, and the clock on the wall showed 7.30 pm. The adventurers had already received pay for their quests and were probably out drinking. There was only one counter open, and a female employee was sitting there. When I asked her what happened to the priestess, she said that she had woken up in the afternoon. It seems that she left the Adventurers Guild in the early afternoon because she had urgent business to attend to. Dot speaking of which, I have a letter for you from that girl. Please wait a moment. The female employee said and took out a white envelope from a drawer near the reception desk. In the center of the envelope is written to Kakauzaku Sama, and in the lower right corner is signed Lily Luna Lunaria. Perhaps this was the girl's name. I opened the envelope and decided to read the contents of the letter. The first half of the letter was an explanation of what happened to the girl, Lily, 
before she fainted. According to the letter, Lily was a traveling priestess who happened to be visiting too when she learned of the devil treant's appearance and volunteered to go and stop it. Although the celestial chain of light magic blocked the devil treant's movement, Lily's magic power eventually reached its limit and we rushed to her just in time. The second half of the letter was a carefully written thank you note, and it ended with the sentence, I will be back to thank you soon. It seems that this girl Lily is a very disciplined and serious person. Personally, I have a very good feeling about her. After we left the Adventurers Guild, we stopped by a bookstore in the city to buy a few books and then headed to Meat Street. There was a sandwich store specializing in to beef, so we went in. The sign was true to form and the menu was lined with impactful texts such as salted grilled beef tongue sandwich, grilled meat sandwich with thick sauce, and melted meat sandwich. The most shocking menu was this specialty menu, the meat meat sandwich, which consisted of it a beef hamburger steak sandwich between two to beef steaks. Where's the bread? Where did they get the idea to make a meat sandwich with meat? I'd like to try some. Since we were going on a trip, the three of us ordered a meat meat sandwich, which turned out to be a surprise. The delicious taste of the meat flooded us like a torrent, and before we knew it, we had eaten an entire sandwich. Afterward, I returned to the inn, took a bath, and lay down in bed. Tomorrow, we will leave to at around 6 a.m. Our next destination was Surya, a city famous for its hot springs. Hot springs are the heart and soul of the Japanese people, and I'm looking forward to it. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 9 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Blast Chapter 9 I met the priestess again. The next morning, after checking out of the inn, we headed for the city's north gate. I opened my item box and retrieved Dest and Grand Cabin. Good morning, Master. Good morning, Dest. Take care of us today. Yes, leave it to me. Dest replied in a strong voice and gave a vigorous salute. On the other hand, Iris and Zurara seem to have not slept enough and are repeatedly making small yawns. Fewer. Are you not sleepy, Ku? Master San, you are more energetic than me. Munya. It's true if you ask me. Since coming to this world, I've always felt refreshed when I wake up. The quality of my sleep has probably been greatly improved thanks to Transmigrator. This time, I decided to leave very early, but there were guards, adventurers guild staff and people from the ranch at the north gate to see me off. Take care, Dragon Slayer San. Come again. Thank you for protecting the city. I'll never forget you guys. It's really a blessing to be sent off with such warm words like this. We waved to the people of the city and got into the carriage. Zurara jumped onto the sofa on the first floor and started to sleep soundly. He didn't look like he was going to wake up even if I shook him so it was probably best to leave him like that. I think I'll have a nap too. Why don't you take the bed upstairs then? The carriage has two floors, with two bedrooms on the second floor, one in the front and one in the back. It's very comfortable and will be perfect for a nap. I think I'll do that. I'll be in the back room, so wake me up if you need anything. Iris yawned widely one last time and walked up the stairs to the second floor. Soon after, the carriage began to move. If we continue along the road to the northeast, we will reach Surya in the evening. I sat on the sofa on the first floor for a while, looking out the window, but I was getting bored, so I opened the door at the front of the carriage and stepped out onto the platform. I could see Dest's back right in front of me. I sat down on the right side of the platform. I could see the surrounding scenery clearly from here. Master, is there something you need? As Dest pulled the carriage, he glanced at me. I just wanted to get some fresh air. Do you mind if I stay here? Of course not. You're more than welcome. That's good to hear. Well then, I guess I'll take my time. I looked at the scenery in the surrounding area. The grasslands around here provide a great view. Birds were flying in the distant sky. The morning sun was shining brightly, and a refreshing breeze was blowing. Dot I guess I'll read a book. I took out a novel book from my item box. I've already finished reading two volumes of this book, so this will be the third. It's an action entertainment novel about 13 pirates with rich personalities battling for treasure. I found myself finishing the book before I realized it, as it was a fascinating intellectual battle using skills. Phew. I put the book back in my item box, got up from the seat, and stretched widely. Dot. I looked ahead and saw a little girl sitting on a stump along the road. 
Her silvery hair glistened in the sun. https colon slash slash Nike's translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash oh two slash oh 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 six dot jpg. I recognized the girl, Lily Luna Loon area. She was a priestess of the god of war religion, and in her letter to me, she had left a note saying that she would be coming back to thank me soon, but was she waiting for that? Dest, stop for a moment. Very well. The carriage gradually slowed down and came to a complete stop just past the stump. I jumped off the platform. The girl stood up from the stump and came trotting up to me. You're Kakazaku san, right? Yes, that's right. I nodded, and the girl bowed her head. I'm Lily Luna Loon area. I would like to thank you for saving me from a dangerous situation the other day. It's no problem. What are you doing here? I just wanted to thank you for saving me from the devil tree and the other day. I knew it. It seems that Lily is a very disciplined girl. But why was she waiting for all the way in a place far from the city? When I asked her about it, she gave me this answer. I have a skill called, foresight. My dream told me, today, at this time, Kusan's carriage will pass by here. You mean you followed the dream's instructions? Yes. Lily nodded with a serious expression. I feel like it's kind of rude to ignore my dreams when I'm being told what to do. That's kind of an interesting way of thinking. I think this girl is truly a very serious person, and she's so righteous that she even tries to be polite to her skills. I personally like the way she behaves. Um, Kusan. What is it? In my dream, I was asked to ask you this question. Dot do you have the transmigrator, skill? Well, how should I respond? It's not that I'm actively hiding my skills, but it's complicated to explain about, transmigrator, so I basically keep it to myself. When I wasn't sure how to answer, she continued. I have a skill called, God of Wars Shrine Maiden. If you have, transmigrator, I have something important to tell you and something to give to you as well. God of Wars Shrine Maiden. When I heard that phrase, what crossed my mind was Iris. She had a skill called, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden, and had a mission to hand over the Dragon God's Red Jade to the, Transmigrator. Maybe Lily has the same kind of mission. The name of the, God of Wars Shrine Maiden, and their, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden, are also very similar. I thought about it for a while and then told Lily. It's true that I have, Transmigrator. Dot this is going to be a long story, so why don't we talk about it in the carriage? I understand. I'm sorry to bother you. So, I walked back to the carriage with Lily. Since Lily was also planning to head for Syria, I instructed Dest to continue along the planned route. When we got into the carriage, Zurara, who had been asleep on the sofa on the first floor, had just woken up. Fewer. Good morning, Master San. Dot are you? After yawning widely. Zurara noticed Lily's appearance and raised his voice. Hey, hey, that's the girl you saved before, isn't she? Yeah, you remembered well, Fufu. I'm a clever slime, you know. Zurara looked a little proud of himself and then jumped down from the sofa and came to Lily's side. Hello, I'm Zurara. I'm Lily. Nice to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you too. Zurara grew a little taller and bowed. Is Lily Anichan here for Master San? Anichan, for some reason. Lily nodded her head with a sullen expression. Yes, I have something important to tell Kusan and something to give him. Oh, really? I want to hear the story too. I don't mind. What about you, Kusan? Zurara is an important friend of mine. Of course he'll be fine. Yay, Master San said I'm an important friend. I'm a companion slime. Zurara jumped up and down happily on the spot and did a somersault. He looked very happy. When it comes to important friends, Aris is one of them and I would like her to be here, but it would be rude to wake her up when she's asleep, so I'll share the information with her when she wakes up. Dot as I was thinking about it, Iris came down from the second floor. It seems that she has woken up. Good morning, Ku. The bed upstairs is very comfortable. Thanks to it, I slept very well. Dot Tara, that girl. Yeah, she's the priestess we rescued the other day. Apparently, she was waiting for us on the road. Thank you for the other day. Lily turned to Iris and bowed her head in a polite gesture. I'm Lily Luna Loon area. Please take care of me. I'm Iris Note Fafna, an A-rank adventurer. You can call me Iris. Then please call me Lily. We are both shrine maidens, and I look forward to working with you. From her words, it seems that Lily knows that Iris has their, Dragon God's shrine maiden. Perhaps she learned about it from the effects of her foresight. The same? Um, what does that mean? On the other hand, 
Iris doesn't know anything about Lily, so naturally, she had a puzzled look on her face. Lily has a skill called, God of War's Shrine Maiden. I told Iris that and then turned my attention to the sofa by the window. For now, why don't we sit down? Let's get settled, and then we can talk. Right, let's do that. All right, yes. We all agreed, so we headed for the sofa. I sat down on the sofa by the window at the back of the room and the three of them sat down as well. I've already told Kusan that I have the, God of War's Shrine Maiden, skill. The first one to speak up was Lily. She began to explain the situation with a serious look on her face. It is a skill that is only available to human women once every few hundred years. As an effect, it can bring out the power of items with the name of the God of War. Dot that sounds just like, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden right? I nodded a little at Iris's words. If we replace the word god of war with dragon god and the word human race with dragon folk in Lily's explanation, it will be the same as the explanation of, dragon god's shrine maiden. I know that. Zurara shouted cheerfully. The ancient scholar said so. There, dragon god's shrine maiden, and, god of war's shrine maiden, are paired skills, and when the two are combined, Something amazing happens. Something amazing? Yeah. Something amazing. Dot but I don't know the details. Sorry, Master San. Zurara's eyes were downcast. Lily patted him on the head as if to comfort him and then continued to talk. There are two missions of the, God of War's Shrine Maiden. The first is to gift this bow to the, Transmigrator. She then took out a large wooden bow from inside her priestly robe. It was about two meters long clearly taller than Lily. I wondered where she had hidden such a large object. My priest's rope has become a kind of magic tool. Lily said in a supplementary tone. It has a limited capacity, but it can carry a small amount of luggage. In other words, it's a pseudo item box. It's the same as Iris's pouch. After my questions were answered, I received the bow from Lily. The bow is very old fashioned, but when I held it in my hand, it was warm and pulsating as if it were alive. I've seen this bow somewhere before. I looked up and turned my gaze towards Lily. The right shoulder of her priestly robe has the God of War religion symbol painted on it. It was a cross between a sword, a spear, and a bow, but the bow design was very similar to the one Lily had handed me. Did you notice that? As if she sensed my inner thoughts, she said. The emblem of the God of War is a drawing of three sacred weapons that bear the power of the God of War the Warden. They are the Magic Sword Gram, the Drissel Bow, and the Unmarked Holy Spear. The one I gave to Kusan is one of those, the Drissel Bow. Dot wait a minute. Iris raised a small hand to speak. I've heard a little bit about the Drissel Bow. It is usually enshrined in the Great Temple of the Holy Land and is only seen at a big ceremony once every fifty years. Dot is it safe to take such a thing out? As the name suggests, the God of War religion believes in the Warden. The God of War. Drissel Bow has the power of the God of War in it, so naturally, it should be a very important item for the God of War. If you think about it normally, it doesn't seem like something that can be taken out so casually. However, Lily said with a calm expression, there is no problem. There, God of War's Shrine Maiden, mission is to give the Drissel Bow to the, Transmigrator. I have been entrusted with the full authority to handle the sacred weapon. So you're saying that there's nothing for the God of War to complain about? That's good. To be honest, I'd rather not be in a situation where I have to make enemies with a religious organization at all costs. Anyway, now that I have the Drissel Bow in hand, let's use appraisal. First, Drissel Bow, sealed, also known as the Bow of the Calamity Slayer. It is the natural enemy of all calamities. It can only be handled by those who possess the Transmigrator. Currently, its power is sealed. A sealed Calamity slaying bow. What a tantalizing setting. I don't know what the conditions are to break the seal, but there are more than calamities after the black dragon, and it may come in handy when they return in the future. I store the bow in my item box. Drizzle bow was added to the list in my mind. The list was sorted in Japanese syllabary order, and just above the bow was Drizzle's branch X1. This was the one I had produced yesterday morning with. Material alchemy. Both the bow and the branch have Idrissel in their names, so I wondered if I could use them as materials to create a new weapon with creation. The recipe is not available. However, there seems to be some kind of connection between the two, so let's leave that for the future. When I was thinking about this, Lily breathed a small sigh of relief. I'm glad I was able to hand the bow over to you, 
Kusan. Now I have accomplished one of my missions. You have one more mission, right? Yes. Lily nodded. The second mission is to find another sacred weapon, the magic sword Gran. I've heard that it was lost thousands of years ago. Kusan. Do you have any idea what it is? If it's Gram, it's right here. A. Lily rolled her eyes in surprise. I got up from the sofa and went out to the left corridor. I opened their item box and take out Gram from the magic circle that floated in the empty space. It was a big sword, over two meters long, with a silvery blade. Dot that's a tremendous amount of divine energy. Lily gulped. Perhaps she sensed the power of the god of war that resided in Gran. That's the dragon slayer's magic sword Gran. I can't believe Kusan already had it. This development was completely unexpected for Lily, and she had a stunned expression on her face. So the place where Gram is located didn't appear in your foresight. Yes, what I saw in my dream was only to the point where I handed the drizzle bow to Kusan today. In other words, from this point onwards. This is an unknown development for Lily. Where did you find Gram, Kusan? In an underground city near Arn. Can I keep this in my possession? It is probably one of the most important items for the God of War religion, and there is a possibility that it might have to be returned. However, Lily said, Gram is also one of the sacred weapons, and its handling is left to me. You can keep it. I understand. Thank you. For me. Gram is like a partner who has overcome the battle with the Black Dragon together with me. I'd like to thank Lily for her words because, to be honest, I didn't really want to give it away. As I was feeling relieved, Iris raised a small hand. Can I have a word? What's the matter? I was wondering from what you said earlier. Do you have the, foresight, skill, Lily Chan? Yes, I do. I have been helped by, foresight, many times since I was little. I see. Thank you. Dot you're just like her. When Iris turned her eyes out the windows, she whispered to herself. Her is probably Iris's twin sister, Felice. Felice had passed away three years ago and possessed two skills, there, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden, and, Foresight. In that sense, she was similar to Lily, and it was natural that Iris would remember Felice. I was nodding to myself, and eventually, Zurara opened his mouth. Hey, hey, what are you going to do now? Lillian Eachin, from the God of War's headquarters, I've been told that after I complete my mission, I'm to be an escort for the, Transmigrator. If you don't mind, can I accompany you on your journey? I'm fine. How about Iris and Zurara? I don't mind either. Best regards, Lily. I'll be glad to welcome you, too. Yay, yay. Thank you very much. She stood up from the sofa and bowed her head. Once again. Please take care of me. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 10 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Blast, and Lonely Matter. Chapter 10, We Cooked Together. Thus, we had a new companion on our journey. Lily Luna Loon Area. She was a priestess of the God of War religion and had the rare skill, God of War's Shrine Maiden. She had a serious and disciplined character. Considering that she was able to hold the devil tree and at bay by herself, she must be quite capable as a priestess. The sun was already high in the sky when I looked out the window by the time we finished talking. The wall clock in the living room showed that it was past twelve o'clock. Hey, Ku, shall we have lunch soon? Yeah, you're right. I nodded at Iris's words and opened my, item box, in my mind. There are a variety of dishes stocked in it, but now that we have a new companion named Lily, I want to do something out of the ordinary. Yesterday, I got a lot of souvenirs from the ranch into a block of to beef, homemade cheese, butter, yogurt, fresh vegetables and fruits, as well as freshly baked bread, and much more. With all these ingredients, I guess I can cook by myself. There is a splendid kitchen in the rear of the carriage, and if I grab a knife or a pot, there, dexterity, will provide me with assistance. The Lonely Wolf Sapron, which I created with, creation from Lonely Wolf's materials, also has cooking skills attached to it, so I should be able to make more than just a few things. Okay, let's give it a try. The next moment I thought of that, to my surprise, full assist, was automatically activated. I propose the following as today's lunch menu. Beef stewed with tomato sauce, cheese omelette, banana yogurt, full assist, is a skill that supports various aspects of my life in this other world but it was indeed unexpected that it suggested a menu for a meal. While my eyes blinked in surprise, full assist, installed the recipe for the meal in my mind. This skill is handy. Anyway, 
The menu for lunch was decided. I get up from the sofa. I'll cook lunch today. Is there any food you guys don't like? Coo. Iris sounded surprised but soon looked convinced. Come to think of it, I remember in Un, you used to help out at a restaurant on a city quest. You were well known among adventurers. I heard that the food tastes so much better when Koo is in the kitchen. I am honored to hear you say that. Well, I'm going to make something. I'll help you. I'll help you. Too. I'll do my best too. Apparently, everyone is fully motivated. Since we're going to this trouble, why don't we all make it together? It's kind of exciting, like camping at a forest school. And so we all decided to cook together. I created two more aprons with creation, and gave them to Iris and Lily. Since I have such useful items, it would be a loss if they don't use them. Of course, I'll wear the aprons myself. Next, I took out the ingredients and seasonings from there item box, and place them in the kitchen. The main ingredient this time is a block of to beef, and the part of the beef is the shoulder loin. It has a good amount of fat on it and looks very tasty. Okay, let's do it. When I picked up the meat knife that was provided in the kitchen, there, dexterity, was activated. I moved the knife along the muscle fibers of the beef and cut it into bite-sized pieces. At the same time, I give instructions to everyone. Zurara, please peel the tomatoes. When you're done, Stew them in the pot. Yes, it's supposed to bring out the acidity and richness. I'll take care of it. Zurara said that, and then he lengthened his length to the size of the cooking table, which he could reach. He picked up a knife and peeled the tomatoes. He is quite good at it. As a helper slime, he must be good at cooking. Iris, please cut the vegetables. First, the onions, please. Roger that. Dotuck, my eyes are watering. Even as she said this. Iris picked up a knife and cut the onions into skewers one after another. I see you're used to it. I'm not as good as Koo, but I can at least cook. Foo foo. Iris puffed out her chest proudly. Her expression showed certain confidence. When you're done with the onions, please prepare the garlic, carrots, and mushrooms too. Leave it to me. The apron made by Koo is very effective. My hands move more easily than usual. Iris seemed to be feeling the effects of cooking skill sand was humming as she chopped vegetables smoothly. This way, it seems that I can take my eyes off of her. I then called out to Lily. Can you wait a little? We'll do it together when we're done here. Yes. Thank you for your guidance. Lily bowed her head, stiff and nervous. According to her. This was her first time cooking. She said that all her previous meals had been prepared by people from the church. Perhaps she was treated specially by the church because of her special skills as a God of War's shrine maiden. After I finished cutting the block of meat, I washed my hands at the tap and headed for Lily's place. Well then, let's get started. Shall we crack some eggs first? I'll do my best. It's not that hard. Just take it easy. After I finished cutting the beef, I washed my hands and then took the egg. I smashed it against the corner of the table, cracked it, and broke it with both hands. The fresh egg meat falls into the silver bowl. If you hit it too hard, it will shatter, so you should be careful there. I, I understand. Lily fearfully reaches for the egg and hits it against the corner of the table. After a few repetitions, a small crack eventually appeared. It cracks. No, I think you should make the crack a little bigger. Before I could say so. Lily held the egg in both hands and crack. The egg cracked, but because of too much force, the shell shattered and went into the bowl. Their cooking skill sis also granted to Lily's apron, but it seems that she can't follow through to the point where she has zero cooking experience. I I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. It's like this for everyone at first. Don't be in a hurry to get used to it. I used to cook for myself when I was a student, but when I was a beginner, I made a lot of mistakes. After removing the shells from the bowl with a spoon, I told Lily. Let's try it together. Hold the egg in one hand. Like this? Lily held the egg in her right hand. I went behind Lily and lightly placed my right hand on her right hand, and knocked the egg against the corner of the table. Looking at the egg, there was a reasonably large crack in it. That's about right for force. Kusan is very good at this. Anyone can do it once they get used to it. Let's crack it open then. Yes, there is a cracking sound, and the eggshell breaks in two. The contents fell into the bowl and shook delicately. It's done. Lily breathed a sigh of relief. Well, next time, try it on your own. I understand. Apparently, Lily had already gotten the hang of it, and although her movements were a bit awkward, 
she was able to crack eggs properly. Their cooking skills must be having an effect. I should get back to my work. Two magic stoves are set up in the carriage's kitchen, each at a distance from the other. Zurara is stewing tomatoes on one, so I decide to use the other. I take a frying pan out of the cupboard, put in the cut shoulder loin and the garlic that Iris had cut and turn on the magic stove. The shoulder loin oozes fat and begins to crackle in the heat of the frying pan. Soon, the delicious aroma of garlic wafts through the air. It smells good, Iris muttered. I'm done chopping the veggies. What do I need to do next? Prepare the cheese for the omelette. If you could chop it finely, that would be great. I understand. It's fun to cook together like this. I agree. Not bad once in a while. I proceed with the cooking as we talk. I remove the brown beef and garlic to a platter and throw the onions, carrots, and mushrooms into the frying pan. After frying for a while, return the beef and garlic and add more wine. The heat of the frying pan evaporated the alcohol, and a cloud of white steam rose. Wow, Lily who had finished cracking the eggs, looked at the contents of the pan with sparkling eyes. They look delicious. Do you want a little taste? Um, I'm fine. Lily said this with reserve, but her eyes were glued to the frying pan. I smiled wryly and took a small plate and fork from a nearby cupboard. The beef and vegetables are well cooked, and I'm sure you can eat any of them. I chose a smaller beef piece and moved it to a small plate. Then I handed it to Lily with a fork. A child should not hesitate to eat. Just give it a taste. A, oh, um, I'm sorry. Thank you. Lily shrank back as if afraid, then took the fork and brought the beef to her mouth. Delicious. Her expression broke into a smile as if a flower was blooming. As I was smiling, Zurara called out to me. Master San, the tomatoes are ready. I understand. Bring it over here. Yes. Zurara holds up the pot with both hands and carries it over to me. Where should I put it? The magic stove I use has two side by side burners, and the pan is heated on the right side. Put it on the left side. Yes. Looking into the pot, the stewed tomatoes are tender and look very tasty. I turn off the pan and throw all the ingredients into the pot. When the pot is boiling, I turn the heat down to low, put the lid on and watch for a while. I put the pan on a sink nearby. Master San, I'll do the washing up. Yes, please. I'm going to scrub. With Zurara by my side, I set about my next menu item. Let's make the cheese omelette. Iris, how's the cheese? I just finished cutting it up. Thank you, that helps. I make an omelette by adding salt, pepper, fresh milk, and Iris's chopped cheese to a bowl of eggs. I take a new frying pan out of the cupboard and heat it on the magic stove while I pull out the butter. When it was warm enough, the omelette batter was poured in. This is where their dexterity comes into play. I shook the pan to shape the omelette, and when it was just one step short of half cooked, I moved it toward the edge of the pan. With a simple motion of my wrist, I flipped the omelette over. That's amazing. Lily sighed in admiration. Each of her reactions was so cute and innocent. It's not so difficult. Do you want to try it with me? Um. Lily was puzzled for a little while but eventually replied, if it doesn't bother Kusan, it's all right. Then come over here. Please take care of me. I let Lily hold the pan and put my right hand on it, just as I did when he cracked the eggs. Then we go dot three, two, one. I the well-shaped omelette spins halfway through the air and returns to the frying pan. It's done. Perfect score. Thanks to you, Kusan. Thank you very much. Lily looked up at me and smiled happily. Seeing that expression made me happy too. Well, I'm getting really hungry, so let's finish the rest of the omelette in one go. I take out the third frying pan from the cupboard and start cooking omelettes on both sides of the stove at the same time. Ku is really dexterous isn't he? Iris murmurs in admiration. It's all thanks to my skills. Anyway, can I ask you to do one more job? Of course. Anything you need. Thank you, that helps. I asked Iris to cut up a banana and mix it with yogurt. This is for dessert. Five minutes later, lunch was ready. On the first floor of the carriage, there is a dining area in addition to the seating area with sofas. The food was laid out on a large table, and everyone took their seats. Then, Let's enjoy the meal. https colon slash slash Nike's translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash oh two slash oh 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 four dot jpg. The beef stewed in tomato sauce is a brilliant red color, and just looking at it makes my tongue salivate. The acidity of the tomatoes accentuates the sweetness of the beef, making it a dish that everyone was pleased with. The cheese omelette was soft and fluffy 
and the egg's gentle taste combined with the cheese's rich flavor created a taste that I never grew tired of. Koo's cooking is superb, after all, Iris says with sincerity in her voice. If you opened a restaurant in the royal capital, it would be extremely popular, you know. I think so. Too. Lily nodded vigorously. Dot, huh? It had been less than five minutes since the meal began, but Lily had already finished both the tomato stew and the cheese omelette. On the contrary, she seems to be a little unsatisfied. Lily, would you like a refill? Um, I'm fine. As I said before, a child should not be reserved. You're growing up, so just keep eating. Dot, sorry. Thank you. Lily was a little embarrassed and reached out a plate of stewed tomatoes. The after dinner dessert was banana yogurt another very satisfying dish. We all cleared away the dishes, washed up, and returned to the sofa. I had never had a meal that good before. Lily let out a sigh and muttered sincerely. The aftermath of lunch still lingered strongly on her face. Cracking eggs, flipping omelettes. Cooking was fun, too. I remember you said you'd never cooked before in your life. Yes. Lily nodded and began to talk about what had happened to her. My parents died in an epidemic. I don't remember it because I was very young, but thanks to the fact that I had the God of War's shrine maiden, I was taken in by the God of War religion and went to live in the Holy Land as it was. How was life in the Holy Land? I was very blessed. Everyone around me was very kind. Dot dot so as a way of repaying the favor. I made it my top priority to learn what I needed to know in order to fulfill my mission as, God of War's Shrine Maiden. So that's why you put cooking on the back burner. I'm sorry. No, you don't need to apologize. Lily is very earnest. Is that so? Lily tilted her head in wonder. Well, you never know with these things, do you? Anyway, you have completed your mission, and I hope you will be able to experience many things from now on. Iris nodded next to me as I said this. Ku is right. Lily is still young, and it would be a waste if you don't enjoy your life. Dot I see. Lily pondered for a moment and then gave a slight nod. That may be so. Playing with me is fun. This was right after Zura innocently said so. Suddenly, the carriage shook violently. Dest's voice echoed from the speaker-type magic device built into the ceiling. Earthquake. Emergency stop. Whoa. Kai ah ah. Hi ah. Whoa. The recoil from the sudden stop sends Zurara bouncing off the seat. I reflexively reached out with both hands and caught his round body. Several more earthquakes followed, but fortunately, we were in the middle of a plane. There were no trees falling or landslides. Just to be sure, I checked the map of the area using auto mapping, but the ocean was far away, so there seemed to be no danger of a tsunami. Phew, what a surprise. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 11 Here's the chapter. You can also read up to 4 chapters for all novels by joining our Patreon here click Enjoy Ed Lonely Matter Chapter 11 I tried to create a bridge using creation. The earthquake that just struck was quite violent, but fortunately, it did not cause the carriage to overturn. The dishes in the kitchen are safe, and the only damage was that Zurara was thrown off his seat, but I caught him with both hands so there was no problem. Zurara, are you hurt? I call out to him and return Zurara to the sofa diagonally across from me. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you, Master San, for catching me. That was brilliant. Lily made a small clap. It was a pretty big quake, but I hope the bridge is okay. Iris muttered to herself. Is there a bridge ahead? Yes, it's called the Zard Bridge, but it was built long ago and looks very old. That's worrisome. If there's something wrong with the bridge, We'll have to take a big detour to the south. Our arrival in Syria would be delayed by a couple of days. I would certainly not want to be delayed. The plan for the future is to spend three nights and four days in Syria, relaxing and enjoying the hot springs. If we arrive two days late, we will only be able to stay two days and one night. I don't think I will be able to fully enjoy the hot spring resort of Syria in just that short time. Of course, we could rearrange our travel schedule. But all I can do is hope that the bridge is safe. However, it seems that the more incidents you don't want to happen in this world, the more likely they are to happen. About 30 minutes after the earthquake, the carriage stopped near the Zard Bridge. Dest's voice echoed from the ceiling. Master, the bridge is broken. I decided to get out of the carriage to check the situation of the Zard Bridge for the time being. Ku, I'm coming with you. Please take me with you too. I'll be an escort. Master San. I'll go with you too. Alright. Let's all go. It would not be right to leave anyone out. I walked out of the carriage with Iris, Lily, 
and Zurara, there were many people gathered near the railway bridge, adventurers, peddlers, tourists, etc. They were probably planning to cross the Zard bridge to Seria. They looked at each other, hesitant to go for a detour to the south. But one by one, they turned their eyes toward us. We're kind of getting a lot of attention. Well, of course, Iris chuckles. It's an uncommonly large carriage, and we have a golem pulling it, so it's no wonder it attracts so much attention. Well, it's a good thing we weren't mistaken for monsters. Deciding to put the people in the surrounding area aside, I look toward the Zard Bridge. It is about 10 meters wide wide enough for two ordinary horse-drawn carriages to pass each other. The bridge is covered with rust, giving it an old-fashioned look. It had been deteriorating for a long time, and the earthquake of 30 minutes ago seemed to have dealt a blow, causing collapses here and there. Especially in the center of the bridge, the footholds were completely gone for more than five meters. I think it will be difficult to cross this. Lily muttered with a difficult expression. It would be impossible to walk or swim directly in the river. The distance to the other bank is quite far, more than 50 meters. The river is flowing very fast, and we would probably end up drowning. As I was pondering this, Iris said, How about using the flying potion? Not that I didn't consider that option for a change. With wind blessing us plus it would be quite possible to carry Iris and Lily together. Dest and Grand Cabin can be put in their item box. However, if we cross the river that way, my personality would make me think things like, I wonder if the others are still in trouble, or I wonder if those who chose to take the detour will make it to Surya safely. That would be too much of an aftertist. Hey, hey, Master San. I have an idea. Suddenly, Zurara spoke up. Why don't you just use, creation, to repair the railroad bridge? What do you think? Dot it's worth a try. The iron bridge is too big to fit in my, item box, but due to the previous level up, it is now possible to exercise their, creation, skill even on such items as long as I can touch them with my hands. The question is whether a recipe will come to mind. First, let's touch the iron bridge, I headed toward the bridge. Then, people opened the way with quizzical expressions on their faces. I'm wearing armored bear armor under my Fenra coat, and one of the effects of the armor is dot hearing enhancement which allows me to hear people whispering about us. Hey! Isn't that guy the dragon slayer from Arn? He's got a big wagon, a big golem, and a round creature, no doubt about it. Don't tell me he will cross that old bridge. Of course not. I reply inwardly as I reach the railroad bridge. As soon as I touched the bridge with my left hand, a recipe popped into my mind. Zard bridge, collapsed. X1 plus devil treants trunk X800 new Zard bridge X1. Zurara is right. It seems that my skills will allow me to rebuild the Zard bridge into a new one. I didn't expect that the material for this would be devil tree and strunks, but let's do it first. Creation. I activate my skill with all my energy. The next moment, the Zard bridge was enveloped in a dazzling light that turned into silver particles that scattered around the area. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash o two slash o o o one one dot jpg. Then, one by one, timber appeared out of the void, and with a clattering sound, new bridge sections were being built at a tremendous pace, as if to fill the gaps. Silver particles rained down and became metal parts connecting the trees. New Zard Bridge, a new bridge made by Kukauzaka. It is made of devil tree and strunks, and when a monster approaches, it automatically attacks by extending its branches and roots. Granted effects colon durability S plus automatic regeneration s automatic interception A plus. Somehow, again, it seems that I ended up with more than I expected. The durability S plus automatic regenerations effects are literally true, and the combination of the two makes the bridge not susceptible to aging. Moreover, because of automatic interception A plus the bridge seems to function as a kind of safe zone. Dot isn't this bridge too good? As expected of the power of Devil Tree and well, this is how I created a new bridge, and naturally, the surrounding crowd was astonished. The dragon slayer has created a bridge. What in the world is going on? Everyone is astonished and staring at the new Zard bridge in stunned amazement. Dot amazing. Lily muttered with a sigh of admiration. I've heard that their, transmigrator, has extraordinary power. But I never thought they could do something like this. As usual, what could is extravagant. Master San, 
You are like a god. It's all thanks to my skills. It's no big deal. I muttered shyly and looked at the bridge again. It was more than three times as wide as it had been before, and it looked wide enough for our wagons to pass over. I returned to Dest with Iris, Lily, and Zurara. Well done, Master. Thank you, Dest. Let's get going then. Understood. Dest salutes with gusto. As I am about to get into the carriage, I stop in my tracks. Since I had just built a new bridge, I thought it would be a good to look out from the coachman's seat. When I suggested this to Aris and the others, they all agreed unanimously. So, we went straight to the coachman's seat. The coachman's seat is spacious, with plenty of room for the three of us and Zurara to sit together. Then, we are leaving. Dest shouted, and the carriage began to move slowly. Many onlookers had gathered around the bridge, but no one had yet attempted to cross. Well. It takes a lot of courage to be the first one. As our carriage approached the bridge, the onlookers quickly made their way to the left and right. It's like we're kings. Iris giggled. Soon Dest and the carriage are approaching the bridge. Both are quite heavy, but the bridge is not even shaken. Seeing this scene, the onlookers shouted, oh, 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 oh. They seemed relieved that we had gone ahead of them and followed us. It's like a king or, rather, a procession of lords. I looked at the river at our feet and saw fish jumping happily. Oh. There's a fish. Hello. Zurara extended his right hand and waved to the fish. The sky was blue, and the sun was warm. It was like a natural blanket. I'm starting to feel sleepy. Phew ah, that wasn't my yawn. I looked to my right side and saw Lily with her hand over her mouth. Dot sorry. Lily looked down as if embarrassed. I wonder if it's okay to spend my time so carefree. Don't worry about it. Your mission as a god of war's shrine maiden is over isn't it? Dot yes. After a short pause, Lily nodded. Soon the other side of the river, Surya's side of the river came into view. There was a large crowd of travelers and peddlers gathered there, seemingly unable to decide whether to cross the newly built bridge or not. As the carriage carrying us crossed the bridge, a young man in armor ran up to us, shouting, Excuse me, I'm a guard from Surya. You are the dragon slayer of An aren't you? May I ask you a few questions about this bridge? The guards of each city have been notified through the Scarlet Trading Company that we are going to the royal capital in a big carriage. This must be one of their reasons why this young guard recognized me as the Dragon Slayer. Dest, I'm going to go talk to him. Stop the carriage. Understood. The carriage slows gently and then comes to a stop. Shall I go with you? No, it's fine on my own. Iris can take it easy. As I get off the coachman's seat, the young guard speaks to me. I am sorry to interrupt your trip. You must be Kakauza Kadono, right? Yeah, that's right. I have always heard of your activities. Dot this bridge, if I am not mistaken, was built by Kadono. I just reinforced the old bridge. Reinforced. The young guard rubbed both eyes. I don't think there's a trace of the original. Well, I think so, too. I was embarrassed and said something appropriate, but apparently, it was a mistake. Anyway. Thank you very much for building a new bridge. If it had remained collapsed, many people would have been in trouble. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. The guards bowed sincerely. Around us, many people had already begun to pass the bridge. It seemed that word had already spread among the people that I had built the bridge, and as they passed by me, they would say, Thank you, or thank you so much for your help, the young guard said. I have to make a report about the bridge. So will you come with me to the town of Surya? Of course. We had planned to go to Surya from the beginning, and nothing was going to get in the way. We headed for the town with the guards leading the way. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 12 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Lonely Matter Chapter 12 We arrived in Surya. Soon the carriage arrived at the Surya gate and stopped slowly. The sky had changed from blue to a pale red and the sun was now slanting to the west. Is it already dusk? Time seems to have flown by faster since we started our trip. Despite the troubles we have encountered, I think it is because we are enjoying every day and are very content. When we got off the carriage, we all stretched out. It's really amazing how fast we made it to Surya in just one day. Iris muttered in admiration. Beside her, Lily was nodding her head. Generally speaking, it is said that the distance from Tisaria is four days. Considering that, the travel speed of the Grand Cabin must be quite fast. The reason we were able to get to Surya so quickly was thanks to Dest. I walk over to Dest and touch his steel body. Thank you again today. Have a good rest. Ha ha ha. 
I'm honored, thank you for your kindness. Dest replied in a theatrical tone and dropped to one knee on the ground with his head drooped. The gesture was so human that I couldn't help but laugh. Advanced calculation function A plus granted to Dest seems to be working very well today. I'm starting to feel a little sad to say goodbye, but I remind myself to put him in there. Item box. A magic circle appears on the ground, and Dest and the Grand Cabin are absorbed into it. Soon, they were completely out of sight. At the sight, the young guard who had led us here said, Oh. He was amazed. It is as if I am seeing an illusion. There, item box, really can hold anything, can't it? There are limits, though. Storage capacity is unlimited, but there is a limit to the size of objects that can be taken in and out at one time. For example, City walls cannot be stored in their item box. I don't know the exact upper limit, but since I can take the grand cabin in and out, I can probably carry a two-story house or so. I'll do an experiment next time. While I was thinking about this, the young guard said, Please come to the guard station for the time being. Please come along with your companions. The guard station was located just to the left through the gate. The building was reasonably new and the interior was clean and tidy. It was clean and looked very comfortable. Please come in here. The young guard escorted us into a common room at the back of the building. Soon after, a female clerk came in and offered us a cup of fragrant tea. You must be the dragon slayer, Kakazaku san, right? Welcome to Seria. Please make yourself at home. Thank you. Very well. I'll excuse myself then. The female clerk bowed and left the common room. Like the young guard, Everyone was very pleasant. The tea was delicious. I have no complaints. Then, Kudono, please tell me more about the bridge. I will write up a full report and submit it to the chief of the guard, the town manager, and the lord, Count Maylard. I guess we'll be talking to the lords as well. It's kind of getting more important than I thought. I suppose it is. The Zard Bridge is a major transportation hub and it would be unprecedented for just one person to build a new bridge. That was a real surprise. The young guard nodded deeply as Lily muttered thoughtfully. Indeed, I couldn't help but doubt my own eyes when the bridge extended from the other side of the river. Well then, Kudono, please explain to me. I understand. Let me start by explaining my skills. The young guard prompted me to tell him about the whole process of building the bridge. I see that the new bridge is made of deviltry and drunks. Oh, it'll automatically repair itself, so there should be no maintenance required. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Building a bridge is a kind of public work, and I believe the Lord will pay a reward. You can look forward to it. I wonder, is the Lord, Count Maylard, in Surya? As I muttered this, the young guard's complexion changed. He asked me in a serious tone of voice. Kudono, where did you hear about this? I got a letter from a nobleman I know, who told me about it. I understand. As you know, Count Maylard is in this town for recovery. However, I would appreciate it if you would keep this matter confidential. I don't know the details of the situation, but I guess nobles have a lot going on in their own way. There was no reason to bother complaining. So I just nodded my head. Thank you for your cooperation. The young guard bowed his head slightly. And everyone as well, thank you for your cooperation. Yes. While Iris and Lily nodded quietly, Zurara shouted cheerfully. My mouth is shut tight. Don't worry. I have an image of a slime's mouth as being soft and pliable, though. Joking aside, Zurara is not the kind of person who breaks promises. Despite his childish behavior, you can trust him on that point. I guess that's about it. I said so, and the guard nodded. Yes, I apologize for taking up your time when you are tired. Once again, welcome to Seria. How long do you plan to stay? Four days and three nights. That should be enough for a tour of the hot springs. Tomorrow there will be a festival to celebrate the city's 300th anniversary, so please enjoy yourselves. After we finish talking, we walked out of the station. The sun had set before we knew it, and the sky had turned dusky indigo. Looking out over the streets of Surya, we saw many tourists, as it is a hot spring resort town. It's so bustling. Master San, there's white smoke in the air. Zurara was right, several white vapors were rising here and there in the city. It was probably steam from the hot springs. We would enjoy visiting the hot springs tomorrow, but first, Let's have dinner. I wonder what the specialties of this town are. Surya is supposedly famous for a soup dish called Hotep. I've heard of them too. I've heard that each restaurant has its own secret broth, and it tastes completely different. I want to try everything. Let's just stroll around town for now. I start walking with Iris, Lily, 
and Zurara, I heard that the festival would start tomorrow, and in fact, preparations and decorations were being made all over the city. I took a peek into the central square and saw a magnificent stage with a roof set up in the back. According to the program posted on a bulletin board nearby, there would be a concert with musicians from outside the city, a magic show, and so on. Tomorrow will be a pretty big day, isn't it? I thought they were celebrating the city's 300th anniversary, but it's been around for quite a long time. Originally, there was a city of an ancient civilization here. It seems that 300 years ago, people used the ruins of the ancient city to build Syria. Iris then turned her attention to the fountain in the plaza. In the center of the fountain is what looks like a small shrine. It is made of stone and looks quite old. Perhaps it is a legacy of an ancient civilization. I know it. Zurara shouted. 4,000 years ago. There was a city here called Sassan. There was a facility underground that made hot springs, and I think it's probably still working. I see. So the reason why Surya is famous as a hot spring resort is because of an ancient civilization? Zurara knows a lot of things, Fufu. I'm a clever slime, you know. That's all that matters. Of course. Anyway, it was surprising to learn that Surya was associated with an ancient civilization. Maybe there are some helper slimes living in the underground facilities. After we left the square, we went into a restaurant called White Pot Restaurant and ordered the famous soup dish, Hotep. The quantity should be enough for four people, as we waited excitedly to see what kind of food would be brought to us. A large pot was placed in the middle of the table. Inside the pot, beef, chicken, carrots, onions, etc., were stuffed tightly together and were simmering in a delicious amber-colored soup. The word soup implied a light meal, but the portion was quite large. The atmosphere was similar to that of French pot au feu. When I tried it, the soup's flavor flooded my mouth. As I chewed the meat and vegetables, it's so rich. The soup alone is delicious. It's warm. Munch. Munch. Apparently, Zurara liked the hotep, and he ate it all up in one big gulp. In the end, four servings were not enough. So we ordered two more. We ate quite a lot. Seems like they use more chicken in the broth here. Maybe tomorrow we'll try another restaurant. It seems there are a lot of hotep stalls at the festival, so it would be nice to try a little bit of each. That sounds interesting. We left the restaurant very satisfied and headed for our lodging for the night. The inn's name is Five Star Pavilion and it is widely introduced in tourist guidebooks as one of the best hot spring hotels in Syria. The building is divided into the main building and an annex, and it seems that only a few VIPs can stay in the annex. As I stepped into the front desk, Iris said, Hey Ku, what about Lily Chan's room? Lily joined the traveling party after leaving too. Therefore, naturally, she was not included in the lodging reservations arranged by the Scarlet Trading Company. Kusan. Please don't mind me. Lily muttered in a reserved manner. I have been traveling alone ever since I left the sanctuary until today. I can find a place to stay by myself. But it is lonely to be left out. Zurara raises his voice. Master San, can't we do something about this? Maybe we can get one extra person to stay with us. In the meantime, I'll check with the inn. I said, and headed for the man at the reception desk. After presenting the letter of introduction from Chrome San, I explained that I had one more companion and asked if Lily could stay with us. Understood. I will consult with the manager, so please wait a moment. The man at the reception desk bowed and disappeared behind the front desk. As it turned out, Lily was staying with us. I'm so happy for you, Lily and Eaton. Yeah yeah yeah. Zurara was bouncing around on the spot, shouting with joy. I decided to pay for Lily's lodging. I have the money I earned in Un and the reward for defeating Devil Tree and it's not worth it to save it up, and it's better to spend it when I have to. Thank you, Kusan. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. Don't worry about it. In the future, you can help me out if I'm in a pinch. Dot I understand. Lily nodded with a serious expression on her face. If Kusan is in danger, I will do everything in my power to help you. Don't take it too seriously. Just take it as far as you can. But I can't really picture Ku in a situation where he would be cornered. Iris said jokingly. No, 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 I'm having a rather hard time too. I was pretty close to being defeated by the Black Dragon. While I was thinking about that, a man came to guide us, Kukauzaku-sama, and everyone in your party. Thank you for your patience. Now. Let me show you to your rooms. Our room was on the fifth floor of the annex, in other words, the top floor. As into, the reservation was for two rooms, 
so Iris and Lily used one of the rooms while Zurara and I were to use the other. On the first floor, there is an open air bath exclusively for guests in the annex. You are the only guests staying in the annex today, so please make yourselves comfortable. Now, if you'll excuse me. The man in charge of the information desk bowed quickly and left down the stairs at the end of the corridor. Now that we're at the inn, I guess we should start with the hot spring. I nodded at Iris's words. Yeah, let's go to the open air bath on the first floor. It's kind of like we have the place to ourselves today. Right. It will be a waste if we don't go. Is that okay with you, Lily Chan? Yes, I'm fine. Dot I'm looking forward to the hot springs, Master San. Let's get ready for the bath first. Yeah. Right. So we went into our respective rooms to get ready for our baths. I heard that only a few VIPs were allowed to stay in the annex, and the rooms had the right atmosphere. In addition to the bedrooms, there was a living room and a reception room, and each piece of furniture had a luxurious feel as if it were the residence of a noble family. It's gorgeous. I feel like a big shot. Foo foo. All my stuff is in there. Item box. So the preparations for the bath were quick and easy. I grab a towel and bath towel from the room and leave the room. Bath bath. Zurara seems to be looking forward to the open air bath so much that he bounces around the hallway with a towel on his head. Five minutes later, Iris and Lily came out of their room. Ku, sorry to keep you waiting. Sorry, it took so long. It's no big deal. Let's go then. Let's go. We headed down the stairs to the first floor. Just outside the stairs is a large restroom with several comfortable chairs. Some of the walls were made of glass and offered a view of the illuminated garden. The entrances to the outdoor baths were in the back, separated for men and women. So, Ku, we'll see you later. What are we going to do after getting out of the bath? Shall we go back to our rooms separately? We need to finalize our plans for tomorrow. So why don't we meet in the break room there? I understand. Iris, don't get too excited. Foo foo, I'm fine. Iris hummed as she said this and headed for the women's bath with Lily. We should go, too. Yes. Zurara and I walked side by side through the entrance to the men's baths. There is a changing room with a row of large lockers. All of them are fingerprint authenticated magic tools, but I have an item box so I stored my clothes in it. Zurara also took off his round hat and carefully put it in his mouth. When I left the locker room naked, I found myself in a partitioned shower room. I washed my body here and then entered the open air bath. This system is a little different from that of Japanese hot springs, but it is fresh and interesting. Master San, let me wash your head. Gently rub it. Is there anything itchy? I'm fine. I'll wash myself, and you can take a shower. Too. Yes, I'll make my body shiny too. Shower. After we finished washing our bodies, we went outdoors. The outdoor bath was made of natural rocks, where we could leisurely gaze at the starlit sky and the moon. Phew. I soaked myself in the bathtub, surrounded by the warmth of the hot water. After all, hot springs are the soul of the Japanese people. It warms you to the core. It was healing. Now I am being healed so much. Master San. I'm going to melt. Zurara. I noticed that Zurara was sinking into the bathtub due to over relaxation. I hurriedly lifted him up from the bottom. Whoops. Thank you, Master San. Be careful. I patted Zurara's head and looked up at the sky with his round body in my arms. The white crescent moon was shining bright and brilliant. Its coloring is similar to Lily's silver hair. Lily Luna Loon area. She is a priestess of the God of War and is there, God of War's shrine maiden, and, foresight skills. She had two missions as a priestess, to give the bow of Idrisal to the transmigrator, and to find the magic sword Gram, but both were fulfilled, and she joined us on our journey. She is only 15 years old, but considering that she was able to hold deviltry and at bay by herself, she must be quite capable as a priestess. As for her personality, she is serious and disciplined and is likable as a human being. As I thought about this, my body was getting warm. So I left the open air bath with Zurara. After wiping ourselves off and getting dressed, we headed for the lounge. Iris and Lily had not yet arrived. They must be enjoying the hot spring. As I sat on a comfortable chair by the window, soaking in the afterglow of the hot spring, I could hear the sound of sleep coming from right next to me. Q. So I looked over and saw Zurara sleeping soundly with a towel on his head. I chuckled a little and then Lily came over to me. That was a nice bath. Her expression was one of heartfelt satisfaction. Apparently, 
she had thoroughly enjoyed the hot spring. What about Iris? She's going to relax in the hot springs for a while longer. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait patiently. I don't have any urgent business to attend to, so let's cool off here for a while. Lily sat down on a comfortable chair to my left. I've never actually been in a hot spring before in my life. Really? Not only the hot springs, but also the cooking. Staying at such a luxurious and today was the first time for me to do everything, and I really enjoyed it. Dot is it okay for me to be this happy? Don't worry about it. Lily has completed her mission as a God of Wars Shrine Maiden, and you can think of it as a reward for that. Is there anything you would like to do from now on? Any goals or dreams? Dot when I say dreams, I don't mean foresight. It's okay, I understand. Lily chuckled softly but I can't quite think of what the future holds. It's like your mind was occupied with nothing else but fulfilling your mission. Dot yes, sorry. There's nothing to apologize for. I gave a slight stretch before saying so. I've got plenty of time. In the meantime, you can find something you want to do. I'll help you if I can, and don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much. Dot you are very kind. Kusan. You are exaggerating it. I'm just a caring person. Right after I said that to hide my embarrassment, Iris came into the break room. Ara, uh, everyone's here already. I guess I'm the last one. Did you enjoy the hot springs? Yes, I feel great. My skin is glowing, and I feel 20 years younger. Considering Iris's age, that would take her back to before she was born. But more importantly, let's make plans for tomorrow. There's a festival coming up. So why don't we focus on that? Shall we move the hot spring to the day after tomorrow? Yes. The hot springs won't run away, but the festival is only happening now. Dot I'd like to go to the festival, too. Lily muttered in a whisper but with a clear intent in the air. Then, the answer seems to have been decided. Let's enjoy the Surya festival tomorrow. We'll meet in my room at 10 in the morning, okay? Oh, that's fine with me. I think I can wake up, too. Munya. Festival. Soup. Gulp. After that, we went back to our respective rooms to sleep. Zurara stayed asleep, so I took him in both hands and carried him to bed. Suaka, uh, chuckling at his innocent sleeping face, I laid down on the bed. Perhaps because my body had been warmed by the hot spring, sleepiness soon set in. Tomorrow will be another interesting day. I'm looking forward to it. Well then, good night. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 13 Sponsored Chapter by Patreon Enjoy Ed Lonely Matter Chapter 13 We enjoyed the festival. The next day, we left the inn a little after 10 o'clock a.m. It seemed that the festival had already started, and the town was very lively. From far away, we could hear the sound of fireworks. The main street was full of people, and if you looked to the left and right, you could see a line of hotep stalls on both sides of the street. The aroma of delicious soup wafted through the air, accompanied by white steam. Hotep 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 Tilda. Zurara, as usual, has a white round hat on his head and is bouncing around with a skipping motion. He even hummed a tune and seemed to be in a very good mood. People on the street were making space around Zurara so that nobody would step on him, but Iris picked him up with both hands when I thought that he might get in the way of the traffic. Zurara Chan, it's dangerous so I'll carry you. Yay, thank you, Iris Nain. You're welcome. Dot Tara, you're surprisingly light. Foo foo. I can adjust the weight of my body. Dot and it's getting heavier. If a monster comes along, I'll crush it. That's dependable. I mean, what kind of technology was used to adjust not only body size but also weight? Ancient civilizations really are full of mysteries. While thinking about this, I casually turned my gaze toward Lily. Lily has not spoken a word since we left the inn and she has a thoughtful expression on her face. She seemed to be out of her mind, but I wondered what was wrong. Lily, are you okay? A, ah. Uh. Yes. Lily came to her senses and looked up at me, and nodded. I'm sorry, I was just in a daze. No problem. What's troubling you? Ah, uh, that. Lily seems to be having trouble explaining and is mumbling. Actually, foresight, was triggered yesterday as well. But the content was very fragmented. What kind of dream was it? First of all, Kusan was receiving a trumpet in a place full of people. Me? It's kind of a strange situation. I think so, too. Lily muttered with a puzzled look on her face. Then the scene changed, and near the fountain, Kusan was pulling out a shiny green branch from your, 
Item box. The shiny green branch is probably Yggdrasil branch. It was previously obtained from Devil Tree and branches through material alchemy, and should be a future material for creation. But no new recipe has come to mind. What in the world am I going to use Yggdrasil's branch for in the future? It is a mystery. It is too much of a mystery. At the end, the scene switched again, and we were all in the carriage. It seemed we were leaving Syria and heading northwest. Northwest? Fort Port is northeast and that's a little off in the wrong direction. When I checked, auto mapping, I found large mountains and forests to the northwest of the city. What business do we have in such a place? I don't know, either. Dot I've never seen, foresight, so vague in my life. Do you usually have a clearer picture? Yes, it has been much clearer. I know. Zurara, who seemed to have been listening to Lily and me talking on the side, spoke up. An ancient scholar told me that there is a limit to one's precognition skills. The future of a person with great power like Master San is prone to change. So when it comes to events involving such people, we can't see clearly, and we get fuzzy results. Ku is certainly out of the ordinary. Iris nodded. You know, when I take my eyes off of you for a second, you can use magic, or you can fly, and there is no way to predict what you are going to do next. Putting me aside. I heard that Lily's, foresight, has never failed to come true, so maybe it's a completely confirmed future as far as what she dreamed about. Dot I see. Lily pondered for a while and then nodded deeply. I think you are right, too, Kusan. Then I guess Ku will get the trumpet from someone else after this. Good for you, Master San. Is that something to rejoice about? I've never played the trumpet until today. Well, I should be able to play better than that since I have the dexterity. After we finished talking about the foresight, Lily's expression softened a little. It seems that she was worried about the contents of the foresight, the meaning of which she could not decipher, but perhaps she felt more at ease after discussing it with us. After that, we compared the hoteps at the various food stalls and decided to head for the plaza, the central part of the festival. As we walked down the street, we could hear voices calling out to us from both sides. Hey, there, brother. Our soup is excellent. We use that a beef tails, after all. How about our special dessert hotep with stewed fruit? It's a soup with lots of red wine. It's hearty and velvety in the morning. Perhaps because it was a festival, there were many odd items on the menu. Since it was a good opportunity, I ordered from one side of the menu to the other. Beef soup tastes so good. It tastes like something classic. Fruit hotep. Sweet and delicious. Pippa -pi. I'm feeling good. Pippa -pi -pi. Pippa -pi -pi -pi. Zurara seemed to be drunk from the red wine soup, and his eyes were spinning around and around. Uck, I feel sick. And he had a hangover, in less than ten minutes. His metabolism is fast. Are you okay, Zurara chan? Uck, I'm an osk slime. T slash N, a play on Osuwa slime. He seems to be in considerable distress, so I take out an antidote potion from my item box. The antidote enhancement S plus effect is also effective against alcohol, so it should make things easier. Zurara, here is the antidote potion. Would you like some? Thank you, Master San. I'm so happy. Yay, I feel better. His recovery was instantaneous. Maybe it's the effect of the potion, but perhaps the constitution of the helper slime also helped. In the meantime, we arrived at the central plaza. According to the program on the bulletin board, an ancient lottery game was about to begin. The list of prizes was written on the bulletin board, so I skimmed through it. The first prize was a travel ticket to the royal capital, which would allow us to board a luxury cruise ship leaving from Fort Port. The second prize is a trumpet. It's kind of odd that a musical instrument is a prize. Not many people can play the trumpet, and even if they received one, they would have no use for it or would have a hard time finding a place to put it. Reading the prize description. It seems that there is a world-famous instrument maker living in Syria, and he offered a special model as a prize to celebrate the city's 300th anniversary. I see. The organizers of the lottery game probably decided to give the trumpet second prize as a safe bet since it was a prize made by a locally well-known person and could not be treated lightly. Nor could it be the centerpiece of the prize, since its use is limited. It looks like you're going to win the second prize of a trumpet. I nodded in agreement with Iris. Let's participate in this event as well, just to see if we can verify. Foresight sounds interesting. I want some candy. The lottery game is free of charge, and the registration desk is apparently located at the back of the plaza, 
next to the special stage. I quickly made my way there and found yesterday's young guard standing next to a sign that read Ancient Lottery Game Registration. Good morning, Kudono. Would you like to participate in the lottery? Yes, please. Dot what are you doing here? The guards are also participating in the festival. On the management side, I will be hosting the games afterward. So please come and join us. The young guard bows to me and hands me a rather thick card. The card has a total of 25 squares, 5 vertical and 5 horizontal, with a number printed on each square. Around the numbers are semicircular slits, which can be folded backward by pressing hard with a finger. Dot it's like a bingo game. As I was thinking this, Zurara shouted. I've seen this before. It's a game called Numbers in Ancient Civilizations. The presenter announces the numbers, and if you get five of each of the vertical, horizontal, or diagonal numbers, you're up, and you get a present. You know it well, don't you? That is correct. The guard nodded in admiration. Apparently, the ancient lottery game is the same as the bingo game I know. The number in the middle was zero and it seemed that a hole had been drilled in the middle from the beginning. I didn't know such a game existed. Lily looked at the lottery cards with a twinkle in her eye. She seems to have lived her whole life thinking only about fulfilling her mission, which makes everything new to her. I let out a small smile at her innocent appearance. It seems that Zurara can also participate in the ancient lottery game, and we received a total of four cards. The game will start soon. Please wait in front of the stage. Thank you. Do your best, presenter. I told the young guard this and headed toward the special stage with Iris, Lily, and Zurara. Many people had gathered there, holding lottery cards in their hands. A bench at the end of the stage was empty, so we sat there in a row. This is getting exciting. My heart is pounding. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash o two slash o o o one eight dot jpg iris and lily are looking toward the stage with expressions of half nervousness and half anticipation on the left side of the stage is a blackboard and a rattle for the raffle and on the right side is a white cloth covered table on which the prizes are arranged in a row the first prize a travel ticket, is accompanied by an envelope containing a catalogue and a painting of what appears to be a scene from the royal capital, although it is probably not an image of the city. The castle and the cityscape illuminated by the setting sun are very beautiful. Next to it was the second prize trumpet, which was kept in a transparent case. Soon a man in a clown costume appeared on the stage. Hey guys, are you enjoying the festival? The morning's main event. The ancient lottery game is about to begin. The man's hilarious voice and movements drew laughter from the audience. Then he glanced at me for a moment and gave a small wave. That man is the guard from earlier, right? Maybe. Soon the clown MC began to spin the raffle rattle, singing and dancing along. Come on, come on, let's keep on spinning. First up is number 29. As a side note, I am now 29 years old. The number 29 is also written on the second card from the left and the second from the top. That's a good start. I whispered and tried to push my finger into the square mark 29. However, the next moment, I felt the card shake, and a hole automatically appeared in the square mark 29. What on earth was going on? I looked around and saw that the other participants also had puzzled expressions on their faces. The clown who was hosting the event raised his voice. Ha 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 ha. Surprised? I have the skill to do magic tricks, and I put tricks on your cards. The numbers can be switched or rewritten during the game, so don't give up and enjoy the game until the end. That sounds interesting. The second half of a bingo game tends to be divided into two groups, those who enjoy the thrill of the game with its many reaches and those who are bored and inclined to give up. I guess they used their skills to avoid this situation and keep the audience excited until the end. Dot what a waste of service spirit to keep him as a guard. After that, the numbers continued to hit, and eventually, the second horizontal row from the top was reached. From left to right, 7, 29, 47, and 61 were hit, and only 88 remained. Now, are we starting to get the numbers right? The clown MC leaned forward from the stage and scurried around the crowd. If you have one more to go, please say reach. Apparently, there are also rules set in place for reaching. Kusan, you just need one more, right? Lily looked at my card and muttered. I wonder if I will win the second prize trumpet after all. Well, who knows? I replied, 
quickly raising my right hand and getting up from the bench, reach, yes, me too, me too, oops, apparently, there were other reaches as well, looking around the venue, a young woman with long blonde hair stood up a short distance away, her skin was tanned light brown, and she exuded an air of liveliness, when she turned to me, she rolled her eyes for a moment and then waved her hand in the air, oh, isn't it Kukai? It's been a while. I knew this girl. Her name is Gal, a D-rank adventurer who works around the city of Arn. I had seen her several times before, for example, when I had completed a city quest such as helping in the kitchen of a restaurant. She was light-hearted but sincere in her work and must have had a good reputation among those around her. I didn't realize Gal was in Syria, too. My parents live here. Did you go sightseeing? Well, sort of. Oh. It looks like you two know each other. It's a showdown. When the clown MC raised his voice, the audience caught on and said, Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. the crowd was very excited. The next number was six, followed by 18 and 26. I have a lot of reaches. Zurara happily shows me his cards. There are holes scattered all over the place, and if he hits just one more, he would be in the reach. It's hard to get a hit in a situation like this, isn't it? While I was thinking about that, the clown in my field of vision announced the next number. This time, it's 87. Too bad. I would have been a winner if it was 88. As I was thinking, a change occurred on the card. The number 88 was distorted and changed to 87. If I drill a hole here, I get bingo with 7, 29, 47, 61, and 87 from left to right. That's odd. If I think backward from Lily's foresight, I should be in second place but this would give me the first prize. I raised my hand, still wondering. I've got them all. Me too. This is an unexpected turn of events. I had not expected the two of us to get bingo together. The clown MC exclaimed with a look of surprise on his face. This is amazing. At the same time, at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. You too, please come to the stage. Clap, clap, clap. The entire venue erupts in applause and Cal and I go up on stage. Now, now, we have one first prize and one second prize. Let's let the two of you decide which one you want. Let's see, I'll. Girl glanced toward the first prize. She seemed to be hesitant to say something, perhaps because she was afraid to. I stepped forward and told the clown MC. Give me the second prize trumpet. Hey, Kukai, are you sure? Cal gives a startled shout. I was originally going to the royal capital. I've already secured a ship. So you can have the first prize. You are, you are, a. Hey, wait, are you serious? I'm really happy, but. Cal covered her face with her hands, with a look of half joy and half confusion on her face. Her honest reaction was somewhat adorable. The first prize, then, goes to this young lady. The clown MC then brings from the table where the prizes are placed an envelope with a catalog marked first prize and a painting depicting a scene from the royal capital. Thank you. Kukai, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Cal received the envelope and the painting and held them up high so the audience could see them better. At the same time, the audience went wild. There was a lot of applause and whistling among the applause. What a great turnout. Next up is the second place. Can I ask you to put your hands out in front of you for a moment? Like this? Great. Let's go then. Three, two, one. Ha. White smoke popped in front of my eyes and confetti flew. And the next thing I knew, the trumpet was in my hands. The case that originally contained the trumpet was still on the table where the prize was placed. I don't know what the trick was or how it worked, but I guess it was a magic trick using their sleight of hand skill to move the trumpet at a moment's notice. It's quite interesting. I nodded my head in interest and raised the trumpet high in the air. The audience was excited and clapped everywhere. Thus, I won the second prize trumpet and returned to Aris and the others. The game continued, and Zurara had won an assortment of sweets, as he had originally hoped. Yay, snack. Good for you, Zurara-chan. Yeah, I'll share with everyone. The ancient lottery game came to an end, as the assortment of sweets Zurara received seemed to be the last prize. Oh, well, that's the end of the prizes, but the festival is still going on, so please enjoy it. The clown MC concluded the game with these words and then left backstage with a dashing stride almost falling as he tried to leave, providing the audience with a laugh. <clears throat> Too bad. Iris muttered as she looked at the hole-filled cards. Several of the rows were reachable, but apparently, 
Not a single bingo was made after all. If there had been a few more prizes, you probably would have won. I was close, too. Lily gripped the lottery card gently with both hands and looked disappointed. I'd like to do it again. Hopefully, I'll get a prize next time. Yes. Lily nodded her head vigorously. Now that the lottery was over, it was almost lunchtime. Let's resume eating at the food stalls. And just as I got up from the bench in front of the stage, Cal came up to me. Kukai, thank you so much for earlier. It's no big deal. It's just a coincidence that we meet at this place. I was really surprised, too. And it's not only Kukai, but Iron is here, too. Been a while. T slash N, she calls Iris, Iron. It's been a long time. California. Apparently, Iris and the female adventurer gal knew each other. Well, they were both active in the city of Un. So it's not surprising. That girl over there is a priestess of the god of war religion, isn't she? Wow, your silver hair is so beautiful. I'm so jealous. My name is Gal, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Zurara. I hope we can get along. Wawa, aren't you the helper slime? Let's get along. Get along so much. Gal held hands with Zurara for a while and seemed to be having a good time, but then she turned to me and asked me something serious. Hey, Kukai. Aren't I causing you a lot of trouble? I was happy that you gave me the first prize, but I feel like I forced something on you that you didn't want, and I'm kind of sorry. No, that's okay, I replied immediately. As I said before, I have already secured a ship to the royal capital. Besides, it's not like I can't play the trumpet. Kukai, you can play a musical instrument? Seriously? Maybe. I replied and took out the trumpet from my item box. There, dexterity, was activated. And at this moment, I fully understood how to play this instrument. It's always a strange feeling. Now that I know how to play it, let's give it a try. What song shall I play? Just as I thought that, there, full assist, was automatically activated and suggested a tune to play. The title is Sisson Slumber, and it seems to be a song that was written 4000 years ago. It seems that Surya was originally the city of an ancient civilization called Sisson. And in a sense, this song is perfect for this city. I nodded my head, and the sheet music was installed in my brain. Let's get started. I breathe into the trumpet, and a sweet, moist melody begins to flow. I know it. Zurara murmured with a pensive smile. He was probably trying not to shout because I was in the middle of a performance. This song is Sisson's Slumber. An ancient musician told me it is a very difficult song. Dot it sounds beautiful. Such an amazing skill. Kukai. Seriously, aren't you too versatile? Soon, one by one, passers-by stopped and came toward us. I noticed that a crowd had gathered in the vicinity, and when I finished playing, applause and cheers poured in generously from all over the place. I played the trumpet casually, but it turned out to be somewhat of a big deal. I looked over at Iris and the others and quickly walked away. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 14 Here's the chapter and you can also read up to 4 chapters ahead by joining our Patreon. Enjoy, Ed, Lonely Matter. Chapter 14 I tried to help the feudal lord, the Count. I left the bench in front of the stage and stopped at the fountain in the center of the square. Soon Iris, Lily, Zurara, and Gal follow close behind. Kukai, that's seriously amazing. I'm really impressed. I mean... It's just so amazing. I think you could make a living as a musician, if not an adventurer. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's really it. Iron, you say the right things. Dot oh no, it's already late. Gal looked at the clock near the fountain and sounded panicked. I'm back home in Surya, but I promised to have lunch with my auntie. So, Kukai, Iron, Lily Chin, and Zurara Chan, see you soon. Before long. Lily and Zurara were also being called by their nicknames. Come to think of it, when it came to me, within a minute or so of our first meeting, she said, Can I call you Kukai? Nice to meet you. I remember she said something like that. Some people may find it overly familiar, but as for me, I don't dislike it. I feel that she is easy to get along with as a friend. Cal says, Bye bye. With a small wave of her hand, she rushed out of the square. She was very energetic wasn't she? She's so powerful. I nodded to Lily and Zurara's words. How can I say this? She's full of youth. Immediately after, a voice called out to me from behind. Excuse me, are you Kakao Kadono? Who could it be? I turn around. There stood a well-dressed, tall, middle-aged man. His head was bald, 
but he had a thick beard. His body was slightly thin, and his cheeks were chapped. He may be suffering from a chronic illness. Behind him stood a knight, standing straight and proud, who appeared to be a guard. Dot the fact that he has a guard of some sort, this man must be of very high status. Let me introduce myself first. I am Randolph D. Maillard, a count and feudal lord of Maillard. It's an honor to meet you, Dragon Slayer Dono. Speaking of Count Maillard, I believe he is currently undergoing medical treatment in Seria. The possibility of him visiting the festival in secret is not zero. However, I was a bit surprised that he would go out of his way to call on me. I have already heard of your activities. Besides defeating the Black Dragon in Arn, you also defeated the Devil Tree and Intu, and yesterday you rebuilt the Great Azard Bridge. Dot cough, cough. Count Maillard held his throat and coughed in agony. Apparently, his health was not yet fully recovered. Are you alright? I apologize for this. There was a great flood in the north about four months ago, and I've been taking a hot spring cure in Syria to heal the wounds from that but I'm still not feeling well. It's a shameful thing. A great flood is an extremely frightening phenomenon in which thousands to tens of thousands of monsters appear at once and rush toward densely populated areas. I myself have experienced the great flood in the city of Un before. At that time, it was cleared up in an instant thanks to Dest's super high-powered magic laser, but if we had fought it normally, the city would have been severely damaged. Anyway, Kudono is a great benefactor of this male Ard territory. I will pay you handsomely for your past activities, and I will also inform His Majesty the King. If you have any trouble in the future, please feel free to contact me. It is my family's principle to repay a favor with a favor. I will lend you my wholehearted support. Count Maillard said so, giving a broad smile. Then he holds out his right hand. I responded by offering my right hand, and we shook hands. That's when it happened. Cough. Cough. Jeeg. Count Maillard coughed violently and fell to his knees on the ground. He fell on his back, his eyes flashing white, and remained motionless. At the same time, a black mist oozed out from his entire body and extended toward me. An inorganic voice echoes in my brain. A super high curse has been detected. It is blocked by the state abnormality nullification of the transmigrator. The next moment, a silvery radiance flashed around me flicking away the black mist. The black mist returned to the Count's body with a sizzling sound and continued to wriggle around as if watching us. It looked like a snake stalking its prey. The Count, on the other hand, was in agony and breathing heavily. He was clearly not in a normal state. What in the world is going on? This feeling, Lily muttered, a curse by a monster, perhaps. This is the type of thing that's contagious to those nearby. Coo. Are you okay? I'm fine. No problem. I nodded to Iris. Count, please stay strong. The knight who was guarding him seemed puzzled by the suddenness of the situation, but eventually, he regained his composure and tried to run up to Count Maillard with a loud shout. As if to block his path, Zurara leapt out of the way. As soon as he landed, he became a huge, fluffy thing. Don't get too close. There is something dangerous about this. You were before the knight could stop. He was caught by Zurara's plump body. It was a comical sight, but now was not the time to laugh. We needed information to understand the situation. Dot as I thought about that, I heard the inorganic voice. The first analysis has been completed. The curse name Curse of the Black Death is a lethal and contagious curse, as it has the potential to cause tremendous damage to the surrounding area. It is recommended that you use a Yggdrasil branch to carry out the suppression process. Does the first analysis mean that there will be a continuation of the second and third? I am not sure of the details, but it seems that Count Maillard is under the curse of the Black Death, which seems to spread to the surrounding area. In my case, I was safe thanks to the Transmigrator, but if the curse turns on Iris and Lily, it would be irreversible. It would be better to hurry up and deal with it. I opened my item box and took out the drizzle branch. I saw that branch in my dream. Lily looked surprised. Come to think of it, one of the images in there, foresight, was me holding a branch near the fountain. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Now, how can I use the branch? In response to my question, I hear a whisper from, full assist. According to it, all I have to do is point the tip of the branch at the source of the curse. The source of the curse, in this case, would be Count Maillard. Let's give it a try anyway. I hold up the branch and point the tip at Count Maillard. Then, a greenish glow poured out of the branch and enveloped the Count's body. It was a warm, soft light. Little by little, 
The black mist faded away as if it were melting. The Count's expression was still pained, but his breathing had somewhat calmed down. He seemed to be conscious in my mind, full assist, reported the results to me. According to it, it seems that I succeeded in weakening the curse by using the branch's power. Perhaps you were able to break the curse? No, not yet. I shook my head. I've only suppressed the curse temporarily. But it shouldn't be contagious for a while. The fundamental problem has not been solved, but for the time being, I guess the emergency has been overcome. As I breathed a sigh of relief, I heard the inorganic voice again. The second analysis has been completed. Would you like a fast install of the information up to this point? Apparently, the analysis has progressed. I gave a small nod and there was a feeling of something flowing into the back of my head like a whoosh. I see. I understood the situation reasonably well. I would like to share the information with everyone, but I noticed that there were onlookers gathered in the surrounding area. It's not a very calm atmosphere to talk, and it would be a problem to leave the count lying on the ground like this. I made a suggestion to the guard knight. Why don't we change places for now? Why you are right. Sir, there is an inn called Shadow Cow Pavilion nearby. This inn has a long relationship with the Count's family, and if we enter through the back door, we won't be seen by anyone. Let's head there. All right, I'll carry the Count, you show me the way, dot everyone, let's go. We left the square and headed for the Shadow Cow Pavilion, guided by the Guard Knight. We entered the inn through the back door in the shadows. The Shadow Cow Pavilion was a cozy but elegant and comfortable inn. Although there was a villa of the Count's family in Syria, it is said that the Count sometimes stays there in secret to hold a small drinking party or to have a secret talk with other nobles. Oh, Count Dono, why? The innkeeper was a short, elderly man who seemed to be deeply saddened by the Count's situation. He said, please use this room. If there is anything I can do, please let me know. Now, if you will excuse me. We were shown to a large room at the back of the first floor which was divided into a bedroom and a reception room. After putting Count Maillard to bed, we sat down on the sofa in the reception room. Credono, the first to open his mouth was the guard knight. Thank you for carrying the Count here. By the way, what is happening to the Count now? It's all so sudden and confusing, to be honest. Surely, it's time to get things straightened out. I nodded. With the completion of the second analysis, I now know a lot about the curse of the Black Death. I want to share this information with Iris and the others, and now is the time to explain. It seems that the curse of the Black Death is an extraordinary power possessed by a monster called the Elder Lich. In the beginning, there are no symptoms of the curse, and the subject is unaware that they are cursed. After an incubation period of three to four months, the curse is triggered when the subject visits a place where many people gather, such as a festival site, for example. The subject will die within three hours or so, and in the process, the curse will also spread to the people around them, taking their lives. It is like a vicious epidemic. However, the effects of the curse are currently being suppressed by the sacred power of the Drissel branch, and the lull should continue for another half day or so. There is no need to worry about spreading the disease to others. I explained the information to everyone briefly. Ku. You really know everything. Iris muttered in admiration. I've heard of the Elder Lich, but I didn't know about the curse of the Black Death. Lethal and contagious. That's really a tough one. I totally get it. I nodded and then turned to the Guard Knight and said. The incubation period for the curse of the Black Death is three to four months. Do you have any idea what it is? Dot could it be? The Knight looked aghast. He seemed to have an idea. Tell me about it, if you please. It might be a clue to help the Count. Yes. Sir, dot it was four months ago, during the great flood in the north, the knight then began to talk about those days. Four months ago, during the great flood, Count Maillard had a fierce battle with a skeleton monster wearing dark colored vestments. Perhaps the skeletal monster was Elder Lich. Count Maillard was deeply wounded but somehow managed to fight off the skeleton monster. Yes, he repelled it. It had not been defeated yet. Just before the skeleton monster fled the scene. It pointed at the Count and spoke rapidly, apparently in a language that is impossible to pronounce with a human mouth. I am sure he was cursed with the curse of Black Death at that moment. If only I had realized it earlier. The Knight looked regretful, and his eyes were downcast, but even Iris, who was familiar with monsters, did not know about the curse of Black Death, and it was probably inevitable that the Knight was unaware of it. Um, 
Kusan. Lily raised her voice with a serious expression. I have mastered the highest level of light magic. May I try to break the curse? Of course, there was no reason to refuse. The third analysis is underway, but it is unclear when it will be finished, and we should try things over here as well. Well then, could you please? Yes, I'll do my best. Lily nodded, got up from the sofa, and headed for the bedroom. Me, Iris, Zurara, and the guard knight followed behind. In the bedroom, the Count was sleeping peacefully, although I could hear the occasional groan of Uck. His breathing was generally calm. It seems that the power of the branch has tightly suppressed the curse. I'll do it now. Lily stood by the bed and extended her hands, pointing them at the Count. A sense of tension fills the room. Oh light, purge the curse before my eyes and purify all things. Clear light. As soon as the chanting ended, a flash of silver flashed. But the Count's appearance did not change. He continued to sleep with a nightmare-like expression on his face. I can't believe the clear light didn't work. Lily mutters in astonishment. What kind of magic was that? It is the most powerful of all the light spells. It is said that there is no curse that cannot be broken by this spell. But as a practical matter, clear light could not break the curse of the Black Death. Dot could it be that it is a type of curse for which there is no way to break it? If so, we would be out of options. Just as I was pondering this, I heard an inorganic voice. The third analysis has been completed, and all the information on the curse of the Black Death has been acquired. Would you like to perform a high-speed installation of the information? Apparently, this time all the analysis has been completed. I hope they have found a way to break the spell, but perhaps they have concluded that it is unbreakable. I nodded my head in a small, anxious nod, and the information poured into my head. In conclusion, there is only one way to break the curse. That is to defeat the monster. That put the curse on the Count, the Elder Lich. So we can cut off the nuisance at its root, huh? I immediately informed everyone of this. But then a big problem arose. Where is the Elder Lich? Lily mumbled, looking at the Guard Knight. He shook his head apologetically. When we asked him for more details, he told us that the Elder Lich had apparently escaped from the Flood four months ago blending in with the rest of the monsters. It has not been seen since, and its whereabouts are completely unknown. Dot that's a problem. I don't know how long it would take us to find it if we had to start looking for it on foot now. My skills that would be useful are. That's right. Maybe I should try, auto mapping. How about using your map skills to find it? My words and irises were almost simultaneous. We looked at each other and smiled a small smile. Master San and Iris and Aeen are buddies. After all, I suppose so. I nodded and activated, auto mapping. A blue white window floated before my eyes. There, a city map of Surya was displayed. Kudono, that's. The guard knight asked with a surprised look on his face. It's a skill that produces maps of the surrounding area. And while at it, it can also help you find what you're looking for. I replied, then turned to the pale blue window and said, search for the whereabouts of the Elder Lich. Then I heard a voice in my mind. The analysis of the curse of the Black Death has been completed, and the curse can be traced. The reverse search will now begin. The reverse search has been completed. The result will be reflected in, auto mapping. Not a second has passed from start to finish. That's pretty fast. The blue-white window displayed a city map of Seria, but it quickly zoomed out and switched to a wide area map. In the upper left corner of the map, a red light spot was marked at the back of a mountain northwest of Seria. It seems that the name of the mountain is Mount Rice. It seems that this is where the Elder Lich is. I think I know where it is. Yeah, now we can deal with this. I nodded to Iris. Really? The guard knight turned to my right in a panic and peeked into the window from there. That skeleton is right there. The knight's words were filled with a strong fighting spirit. He must be very angry with the Elder Lich, as his master, Count Maillard, had been injured. He was about to run off on his own right now. When the Count made a shuddering movement, Kudono, apparently regaining consciousness, he slowly raised himself from the bed. His face is pale, and his voice is hoarse. He looks like an old tree on the verge of breaking. I heard your talk halfway through. Was I cursed by that monster? Yes, it appears that there is no solution other than to defeat the Elder Lich. When I returned my agreement, the Count looked thoughtful. Then, 
he began to talk stammeringly. The great flood four months ago dealt a heavy blow to my family's nightly order and has almost completely destroyed it. The security maintenance in the territory has been left to the Adventurers Guild. It will take several years to rebuild. I remember hearing that story from Milia before. Count Maillard's knights had no real strength left which was why the city of Un had no choice but to respond to the Great Flood and the Black Dragon on its own. The air is still young. If I lose my life here, Maillard territory will be in great turmoil, and the situation will be out of control. I understand what the Count is saying. The problems are already piling up, and if the top guy is lost, the operation of the Count's territory will completely collapse. Kudono. The Count looked at me formally and bowed his head deeply. I know I may be asking too much. But would you be willing to help me defeat the Elder Lich? I promise you a suitable reward and honor. Dot please, I beg of you. I ask you to do the same. So said the guard knight. He kneeled with both hands also on the floor and hung his head. It is a complete doge's posture. Please save the count. If there is anything I can do, I will do it. Dot what do you want to do, Kusan? Lily asked, looking up at me. Of course. The answer was obvious from the beginning. Abandoning the count at this point would be half-hearted and would leave a bad aftertaste, and eventually, the effect of the branch would wear off, and the curse would spread to the surrounding area. The people of Surya would then be the victims. Girl, who should be enjoying her return home, and the young guard with his magic trick, will also lose their lives. There is no way I could overlook such a thing. So I nodded. Understood, Count. I accept your request. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 15 Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, Lonely Matter Chapter 15 I found an ancient labyrinth. I took the job of defeating the Elder Lich from Count Maillard, had a brief discussion about future plans, and left the Shadow Cow Pavilion. Iris, Lily, and Zurara were with me. It seems that Count Maillard is leaving town now preparing for the worst. Due to the effect of the Yggdrasil branch, the curse of the Black Death is in a dormant state for the time being. However, within half a day, the curse will resume its activity, spreading to the surrounding areas and causing great loss of life. To avoid this, he will move to a place where there are no people. We avoid the busy streets and make a short run for the North Gate. This way, everyone. The back streets aren't that crowded. Let's hurry. Master San. Thank you for carrying me. Don't mind it. I run through the crowd with Zurara under my right arm, weaving my way through the crowd. It is thanks to my dexterity that I am able to do this. Soon we arrived at the city gate. Many people were coming and going, but not so many that I could not pass through. After quickly walking out of the town, I opened their item box at a little distance and summoned Dest and Grand Cabin. Are you calling for me, Master? Yeah. I'm in a bit of a hurry. I activated auto-mapping, and showed Dest the map of the area around Seria. The destination is here. It's deep in the mountains, so we'll be on foot from the halfway point. Please go as close as you can. Understood. Leave it to me. I nodded at Dest's reply and climbed into the coachman's platform. If any monsters appeared on the way, I would immediately blow them away with my fire arrow. Iris sat on my left and Lily and Zurara on my right. Well then, we're off. Full speed ahead, with Dest's powerful declaration. The Grand Cabin began to move. It reaches its drop speed in just a dozen seconds, and the scenery flows by, buzzing from side to side. Master San, the carriage is moving faster than usual. It's an urgent situation, after all. I nod at Zurara's words and check there. Auto mapping, map. The distance to our destination is still far, but at this speed, we should reach the foot of the mountain in about five minutes. While I was thinking about this, Iris muttered something to me. Hey. Ku. Isn't the current situation just like Lily Chan's foresight? Indeed it is. I nodded. Last night, Lily saw three images through foresight. The first was the scene of me receiving the trumpet. The second was the scene of me taking out a green branch from my item box at the fountain. And the third is the scene of all of us riding in a carriage to the northwest of the city. So all three of my foresight came true. Lily Chan that's great. Dot thank you very much. Lily bowed her head in a small, reserved expression. But I didn't do anything. I just have amazing skills, I think. It sounds like a line I've heard somewhere. Iris thought the same thing and immediately responded. You sound just like Ku. Eh? Ku also used to say that all the time. He used to say, it's not that I'm great, it's just that I have great skills. 
but I don't hear that much these days, though I've changed my mind a little bit, skills, after all, depending on the person who uses them. What do you mean? Even if people have the same skills, some people can use them well and others can't. Skills are part of who you are, including how you use them. A part of yourself. Lily seemed to have something on her mind. She repeated my words and nodded deeply. Not long after that, the grand cabin arrived near the mountain. We got off the platform and looked up toward the mountain. From here, we had to go on foot because the area was a forest. Dest. Thank you. Take a rest for the time being. Understood. See you soon. Dest raised his right arm and saluted. I touched his feet and stowed him and the grand cabin in my item box. Then I checked the map on there, auto mapping, and started walking toward the red light spot that indicated the location of the Elder Lich. The mountain was gently sloping, and the air was somewhat cool. Come to think of it, have you both heard about the Elder Lich before? I asked Tyrus and Lily along the way. Yeah, there are a few references to it in the lore of the Dragonfolk, but all I knew about it was that it caused a lot of damage to the Dragonfolk's land. It's the same for me, too. Lily nodded her head. She continued, in the old records of the God of War religion, there is a story that a large city was destroyed in one night because of the Elder Lich. That wasn't a lie or an exaggeration. It may have been caused by the curse of the Black Death, probably, yes. If the curse of the Black Death is activated in a densely populated area, then the number of victims will increase dramatically. I am so glad I had a branch of Yggdrasil on hand this time. As I sighed with relief, Zurara jumped in line beside me. Thank you. Master San, for bringing me here. It's okay. You're one of us, after all. As for Zurara, there was an option to have him stay in Surya, but there was also the request from the person himself, the slime. So, I decided to have him accompany us this time. Helper slimes can freely change their body size, weight, and shape. Perhaps he could be useful in unexpected places. However, since he is basically a non-combatant, I will ask him to become the smallest size during the battle and shelter him in the pocket of my Fenra coat. After five minutes of walking, we arrived at the bottom of a sheer cliff, a rugged rock face spread out before our eyes. Looking at the map in, auto mapping, the red light spot was shining on the inside of the cliff. Heiku, I kind of remember a situation like this before. I nodded in agreement with Iris. This looks just like when we found the underground city at Arn. As I said this, I knocked on the rock wall and found a rock that made a strange sound. It was a vertical rectangle, about twice as big as my body. I held up my right hand and reminded myself to put it in there. Item box. A magic circle appeared on the ground and the rock disappeared as if sucked in. Behind it, a metal door was revealed. Amazing! Lily exclaimed in admiration. How did you know the door was hidden? We experienced something similar at Arn. I answer and then approach the metal door. On the surface of the door was engraved a symbol that looked like an hourglass. I wondered what this could be, and Lily gasped behind me to my right, the emblem of the Calamity Cult. Do you know it? Yes. I learnt it when I was educated as a God of War's Shrine Maiden. The Calamity Cult was a pagan religion that existed during the time of ancient civilization, and as the name suggests, they worshipped calamities as gods. I know that, too. Zurara said in a more serious tone than usual and pulled a pair of glasses out of his mouth. He put on the glasses and looked sharp and wise before speaking. Four thousand years ago, the people of an ancient civilization were making various preparations to confront a calamity, but the Calamity Cult kept blocking their preparations. Perhaps this is one of their strongholds. The Elder Lich had a very terrible taste to live in such a place. Dot wait a minute. Lyches are often portrayed in fantasy anime and games as high-ranking sorcerers who have somehow become immortal. Perhaps Elder Lich was originally a follower of the Calamity Cult or something like that. Well, whatever the identity of the opponent, what we need to do remains the same. All we have to do is defeat the Elder Lich and break the Count's curse. But the trouble is... The metal door has no knob or handle, and there seems to be no way to get inside. I wondered if this could also be stored in their item box. When Zurara jumped up and stuck to the door, Master San, this door seems to use a system from an ancient civilization, so even I can open it. Just wait a moment while I unlock it. Immediately afterward, an electronic beeping sound rings out from overhead, and the door opens to the inside. It's open. Okay. Let's go. We nodded to each other and stepped inside the door. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest, 
Volume 2 Chapter 16, Sponsored Chapter by Patreon, Enjoy, Ed, Blast. Chapter 16, I tried to capture the labyrinth at a tremendous pace. Beyond the door was a long, narrow passageway. On either side of the wall, there were magic lights at regular intervals, illuminating the surroundings albeit dimly. They were probably installed at the time when this place was built. The fact that they were still in operation 4,000 years later showed just how advanced the ancient civilization's technology was. The passageway was gently sloping downhill and curved sharply to the left. I continued onward with Iris, Lily, and Zura in tow. At the far end was a large door painted black. On the door's surface, there were a number of alphabet-like letters engraved. Ancient language. What in the world is written there? I have learned some ancient languages. Dot, but this text is kind of weird. Iris and Lily both tilt their heads. The Calamity cult used a special code. Zurara, still wearing his glasses, approached the black painted door and turned his eyes to the words inscribed on it. Let me decipher it now. Let's see. What did it say? I also stared at the writing on the wall. Then, full assist was activated, and in an instant, the deciphering was complete. Number 3 Underground Labyrinth Worship Center Master San, have you already managed to decipher it? Kusan, that's great. How about you, Zurara chan Were you able to decipher it? Yes. It's exactly as Master San said, Number 3 Underground Labyrinth Worship Center. What kind of place is that? When I asked him this, Zurara responded, it's a pretty big one among the centers of the Calamity Cult. I'll explain it to you in a minute. The following is a summary of Zurara's story. The Calamity Cult worships the Calamities as gods, and according to their own doctrine, they have been building suspicious facilities all over the world. Among them, the underground labyrinth worship center was very distinctive, with the labyrinth set up to intercept intruders and a worship center at the lowest level. When the labyrinthine chapel was completed, the believers would go into the chapel and hold a ceremony to praise the calamity. Why go to the trouble of building a labyrinth? I don't know all the details either, but some say that the labyrinths and traps were not only used to repel intruders but also to execute believers who escaped during the rituals. What kind of rituals were they performing? I don't want to imagine too much. Dot it's scary. Lily gave a small shudder. Anyway, what's beyond the door was a labyrinth full of traps. I check there. Auto mapping, again. The blue white window displayed a map of the entire labyrinth, and according to the map, this place had a structure just like a dungeon in an RPG. There are four floors in total, and each floor is connected by a staircase. The red light spot indicated that Elder Lich's location was shining on the fourth floor the deepest floor. So the boss character is on the deepest floor, huh? That's a common situation. We were about to enter the first floor, which looked like a huge labyrinth according to the map. A long and narrow passageway continues, and it is complicatedly divided into two several times in the middle. The stairway leading to the lower floor is right in the labyrinth's center, but it seems impossible to reach it by a straight path. I feel like we're getting lost. Iris said, Looking at the map in the window, I wonder how many hours it will take us to get through the whole labyrinth. We cannot afford to be leisurely, can we? Yeah, that's right. I nodded at Lily's words. Once the effect of the Drissel branch wears off, the curse of the Black Death will turn Surya into a dead city. We can't afford to waste time here. Hey, Ku. Iris said as if a thought had just occurred to her. Isn't, auto-mapping, supposed to be able to search for routes? How about using that? That's a good idea. But let me try one thing first. I said that and took out a huge wooden hammer from my item box. A Hykena wooden hammer. It is one of the weapons I made with creation when I first transferred to this world and its granted effect is wild destruction S+. Plus. It is said to be extremely powerful when breaking walls. It was an item of limited use, so it was of little use to me but perhaps it could be useful. I pushed open the black painted door and stepped into the labyrinth. In the end, we succeeded in taking a major shortcut. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I swing the hammer down, and the labyrinth's stone walls crumble and shatter like cookies. It's quite exhilarating, to be honest. Kusan, you look like you are enjoying it. I never thought of that idea of breaking down walls to move forward. Master San, you have a non-standard mind, too. Dot, is that a compliment? Well, it's Zurara, so I'm sure he didn't mean to offend. I smiled wryly and raised the hammer and slammed it down again. Bang! The stone wall crumbled away with a single blow, and beyond it, 
I saw a descending staircase. Now we've broken through the first floor. Not much time has even passed. If there were a time attack on this labyrinth, this would be the world's fastest record. Dot number. Would we be disqualified for cheating? Anyway, we headed down the stairs to the second floor. According to the auto mapping map, this level consists of three rooms lined up vertically, each connected by a long, narrow passageway. The room at the end of the stairs was covered with square tiles in a checkerboard pattern of white, black, white, and black. It looks like it could be a trap. I know it. Zurara's glasses sparkled. There are tiles in this room that, when stepped on, activate a trap. You have to walk to avoid them, or the ceiling will fall down on you. How do you know? One of the people who created the helper slime was a magician who was fighting against the Calamity Cult. That person told us about the traps that are often set up in the strongholds of the Calamity Cult for the sake of a master who will appear 4000 years later. That person also taught me how to distinguish safe tiles, so please wait a moment. In short, we just have to make sure we don't step on the dangerous tiles, right? Yeah, that's right. I see. Iris nodded beside me on my left. Apparently, she came to the same conclusion as I did. On the other hand, Lily had no idea what we were talking about and had a curious expression on her face. What exactly do you intend to do, Kusan? You'll know it when you see it. Cook and fly. A. Hey, don't tell me you've got flying magic. No, not like that. I took out the flying potion from my item box, and downed it in one gulp. A mellow aroma spreads in my mouth. Everybody, hold on to me. I'll take the left arm. Right arm, excuse me. I'll be on your head, Master San. With Iris and Lily in my hands and Zurara on my head, I kicked the ground with a thud. The effect of Thew Wind Blessing S Plus lifted my body up in the air. Wow, you're really flying. Lily exclaims in admiration. We floated in the air and made it to the passageway on the other side of the room without stepping on a single tile. Naturally, the ceiling didn't fall down. The capture is complete. I deactivated the Wind Blessing S Plus and landed on the ground. That was a great trick. I was surprised. That was fluffy. Well, now that we've saved some time, Let's get cracking and move forward. The next room is long and narrow, with 10 steel turrets on each side, for a total of 20. I did a quick, appraisal, and found that they were all magic laser turrets made of orichalcum. What kind of room is this? I ask Zurara. In this room, speed is of the essence. If you don't go through at once, the magic laser will burn you. So don't ever stop. Why don't we just destroy them one by one, eh? With Zurala puzzled. I took out a Hykena wooden axe from my item box. This is the weapon that killed Armored Bear with a single blow in my first battle in the other world, and it has throwing critical A plus and it correction S plus attached to it. I took a big swing with the Hykena wooden axe and threw it with all my might. Oh yeah, the wooden axe flew, slicing through the wind and shattering the Orichalcum turret into pieces. Dot every time I think about it, I think that Ku's weapons are a cheat in so many ways. How can a wood shatter an orichalcum? It is strange to me too, but I guess the granting effect is that powerful. Incidentally, I have a considerable stock of Hykeno wooden axes, and there are 19 left. And there are 19 magic laser turrets left. Dot I threw one Hykeno wooden axe after another, destroying all of the turrets. Okay, let's go. We broke through the second room with ease. On the way. I collected the wooden axe used for the attack and the remains of the magic laser turret in my item box. They might come in handy later. We pass through a narrow passageway and head for the next room. According to the auto mapping map, this is the last room on the second floor. The room was about the size of a school classroom. There is a small pedestal in the center, on which a jet black crystal ball is placed. The floor was engraved with an hourglass emblem emitting a mysterious purple light. The air was heavy and eerie. Master San. It's a bit difficult here. Zurara muttered with a frown. This whole room is under a high level curse. I don't know how effective the spells are, but they are probably quite dangerous. If you pour magic into the crystal ball in the center of the room, the curse will temporarily stop, but one of you will have to be sacrificed. It's a terrible trap. Dot wait a minute. I suddenly have a flash of an idea. I thought, transmigrator had a spell blocking effect and could walk around normally. Just as I thought that, there, full assist, activated, and a voice echoed in my mind. The analysis is complete. The spell name purple poison spell can be blocked by, transmigrator. Apparently, I was right. If that's the case, 
then I know what I have to do next. You guys wait here, I'll go. Ku, will you be alright? Iris asked worriedly. No problem. The curse won't work on me. By the way, Kusan repelled the curse of the Black Death a few minutes ago too. Master San, come back as soon as you think it's dangerous. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. I said this and stepped into the room where the curse is placed. Silver sparks sparked around my body. The spell must have been blocked by there transmigrator. I felt as if I were a sparkler. I walked up to the pedestal and touched the crystal ball. I let the magic flow through me with all my might and energy, as the crystal ball shattered, and the emblem on the floor lost its luster. The air in the room also felt a little lighter. Is this okay? Ma Master San, that's amazing. Zora rolled his eyes in amazement. It seems Master San poured so much magic power into it that it completely destroyed the curse. Your power is extraordinary as always. How much magic power do you have, Kusan? My MP is over 50,000, which is probably equivalent to the magic power of 500 magicians. Anyway, this cleared the second floor. Let's move on to the third floor. When I checked, auto mapping. I found that the third floor consists of multiple rooms and corridors connecting the rooms. As a gamer, I felt that the structure was very dungeon-like. The end of the staircase was a square stone room, with passageways to the left and front connecting to the next room. Zurara, is there a trap here, too? Zurara sounded troubled. There doesn't seem to be any traps, but I have a bad feeling about this. I'll go first. Everyone stays in the back. Be careful, Ku. If push comes to shove. I'll just run away with the good speed blessing X. I answer Iris's words lightly and step into the room. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. Dot. I stop in the middle of the room when I think I hear footsteps in the distance. I listen carefully. It's definitely footsteps. Not one, but several. They are approaching me. Kusan, from your left. I know. In response to Lily's voice, I held up my left hand. On my middle finger, the ring of the flame emperor dragon glows red. Immediately after. A group of skeleton soldiers jumped out from the passageway. On the left, there were three of them in total. They hold swords in their right hands and shields in their left, and their entire bodies exude an aura of black misery. Gah. The skeleton soldiers let out a horrified scream and attacked me. But before they could, I had activated my magic fire arrow. Three fire arrows are shot simultaneously from my left hand. They pierced the skeletal soldiers and immediately turned them to ashes. Did I do it? The next moment, However, the black light seemed to burst, and the skeleton soldiers regenerated back to their original forms. Then, they quickly picked up their swords and shields again and slashed at me with fluid movements. Oops. I activated good speed blessing X for a moment and quickly jumped backward, then activated, appraisal. Skeleton soldier, a monster summoned by the ritual of the immortal soldier. One of the rituals of the Calamity Cult. It repeatedly regenerates itself over and over again until its dark power is exhausted. The number of times it can regenerate is approximately one million. From the description, it is likely that 4,000 years ago, the believers of the Calamity Cult performed the ritual of the Immortal Soldier at this place and summoned the Skeleton Soldier. It is a very troublesome legacy. Being able to resurrect a million times, they are practically immortal, aren't they? I have a time limit and I don't have the luxury of taking them on properly. What should I do? Just as I was thinking, Lily came right next to me and held up her tin cane. Light, be the thunderbolt that clears away evil. Holy lightning. Countless bolts of lightning shoot out from Lily's tin cane, engulfing the three skeleton soldiers. Gah! A white flash popped. The body of the skeleton soldier disintegrates in a flash of blinding brilliance silently melting away. The sword and shield made of Origel can fell to the ground with a clang as they lost their owner. There is no sign of resurrection. Apparently, the blow just struck them down. Lily explained. Holy lightning, the highest level purification magic of light. It can completely annihilate monsters with regenerative abilities. Ignoring the number of times they regenerate the so-called undead. Light magic works well on the undead. This is a familiar setup in fantasy games and anime. But it seems to work in this world as well. To be honest, it helped me a lot because it is hard to defeat skeleton soldiers a million times. Thank you, Lily. No, I'm just glad you're okay, Kusan. Lily, you're amazing. I think we should stick together from here on out. Iris and I will be in the vanguard to buy time, and Lily will use her magic to finish them off. Is that okay? No problem. I'll do my best. Master San, 
What about me? Zurara is also in the rear guard. Look around the entire battlefield and let me know as soon as you notice anything. Yes. I'll watch you closely with these glasses. Yes. I'm counting on you. I pat Zurara on the head and then collect the Orichalcum swords and shields left behind by the skeleton soldiers in my item box. You never know what will come in handy in this world. Well, then, let's get going. Dot just as I thought that, I heard the inorganic voice of, full assist. Data analysis of the undead named skeleton soldier has been completed. The forced purification process using Idrissel branches is now feasible. It seems that, full assist was analyzing the battle just now. Forced purification process, huh? It sounds like a strong word, doesn't it? The method of execution is very simple. Just bring the drizzle branch into contact with the skeleton soldier's body. That's all you have to do to trigger the purification process. Next time I encounter a skeleton soldier, I will try it. I take out the drizzle branch from their item box, and hold it in my right hand. Seeing this, Iris said, Hey, isn't that the branch you used to suppress the curse of the Black Death? Yeah, apparently, it can also purify the skeleton monster. Skeleton soldier. It can do that? That's an amazing branch. Iris sighs in admiration. I have to admit, I, too, am amazed at the Yggdrasil branch. I didn't expect it to be so useful, even though it is still in the raw material stage. My expectations for what kind of items I can make out of it with, creation, are only getting bigger. Well then. Let's move on. According to the, auto mapping, map. The room on the left was a dead end. We took the front passage and stepped into the next room. It was a square stone room with narrow passageways on each side. Skeleton soldiers popped out of the left and right corridors simultaneously, one by one. A chance to test the Drissel branch. Iris and I look at each other for a moment. You take the right side. I understand. No further words were needed. I took the Drissel branch and started to run. My target was the skeleton soldier on the left. Gaewich. The skeleton soldier let out a cry and swung down its Orichalcum sword. The slash was quite sharp, and a direct hit would have cut me in half from the skull. But it was too late. I avoided the slash just in time and pushed the Drissel branch against the skeleton soldier's sternum. The forced pure purification process is executed. A flash of green popped. Pop. The skeleton soldier was gone before it could make its final scream. No resurrection occurred. It was a scene that could only be described as a forced purification. Iris, holding the dragon god's shield in her left hand and a large red spear in her right hand, crossed over to the other skeleton soldier with light steps. She moved with fluidity. Her pony-tailed red hair fluttering as she moved. Her figure was dignified and very beautiful. I was tempted to admire her but now was not the time. Iris. Yes, please do the rest. Just by calling her name, Iris seemed to have guessed everything. Breathtaking coordination is probably what I would call it. Iris pushed the skeleton soldier away with a thud using her left hand shield and then backstepped away. I ran past her and quickly approached the skeleton soldier. Got it. When the skeleton soldier regained its stance, I had already pressed the Yggdrasil branch against its ribs. A flash of green popped, and the skeleton soldier disappeared. No enemy reinforcements appear. For the moment, we can assume that the place is safe. Thanks, Ku. Nice moves there, too. Iris and I raised our left hands to each other and gave each other a vigorous high five. Master San and Iris and Ain, you're breathing perfectly together. Zurara shouted happily. Behind him, Lily looked surprised. Ku San, that branch is so powerful. I was surprised too. I didn't expect it to be over in an instant. I'll try my best to chant faster, too. Lily seemed to be competing with the branches. Her eyes shining with motivation. Lillian Eaton. An ancient magician told me that fast speech is the best way to speed up your chanting. Fast speech, you say? Yes. Zurara nodded, opened his mouth wide, and said, Red water strider is delicious. T slash N. He said Amiibo Akena Oishi. Red water strider is delicious. Are you eating it? Iris couldn't help but put in a tsukomi. Perhaps the correct phrase is Amiibo Akena Oishi which is a vocal exercise, not a rapid speech exercise. T slash N, click here for more info. After that, we continued to follow the shortest route to the downstairs, looking at the, auto mapping, map with my eyes to the side. Each time we stepped into a new room, a number of skeleton soldiers attacked us, but we were able to get through them smoothly, 
thanks in part to the forced purification process of the branches. Eventually, we reached the room before the last room skeleton soldiers attacked. Or number. We had killed about 30 or more of them, and they must have been wiped out by now. Ara. Iris suddenly shouted as if she had noticed something. Hey, Ku. There wasn't a single trap on this floor, was there? Certainly. Yes. Could the skeleton soldier be a replacement for a trap? Lily tilted her head. But I have a feeling that if they are going to intercept an intruder, it would be better to place the skeleton soldier and the trap together in the same room. In that case, though, the skeleton soldier is likely to get caught in the trap. Based on the battle so far, I think the skeleton soldier is not that clever a monster. Therefore, it seems highly likely that they will inadvertently self-destruct in a trap. Anyway. The next room is the last one. Let's be on our guard. We step into a narrow passageway. We went straight ahead, but then we came to a turn to the right. It's a little scary not being able to see what's ahead. I have a bad feeling about this. I looked back at Iris, who seemed to be feeling the same thing I was, and said, It kind of makes my skin tingle. Dot how about you, Lily? I feel a lot of evil. Master San. Maybe there is a lot of undead waiting. That's a possibility. I nodded to Zurara's words. After breaking through the third floor, we're on the fourth floor, where Elder Lich is located. It's kind of a standard thing with a large number of supporting characters waiting in front of the boss character. I quietly stick my head out of the corner and look over there. The distance to the last room is about 10 meters, and inside the room, skeleton soldiers were gathering in droves. There were probably more of them than we had defeated so far. After thinking for a while, I said to the others, I'm going to surprise them from the front. At the count of five, I want you all to come with me. Kusan, isn't that called a frontal attack, not a surprise? Lily makes a calm comment. Beside her, Iris nodded in agreement. So you're going to use the good speed blessing X, right? How did you figure that out? We've known each other for a long time. If you attack at super speed, that's certainly a surprise attack. That's what I mean. Be careful, Master San. Thank you. Zurara. Well, I'm off. I told him that and ran out of the turn. As soon as I ran into the last room, I immediately activated Good Speed Blessing X. My concentration explodes, and my thoughts accelerate. In a world that seemed to stand still, only my body moved normally. I look around at my surroundings. More than a hundred skeleton soldiers were waiting in ambush in the room. With this number, I can do it. I set up the drizzle branch and turned it into a gale. I swung the branch, and swung, and swung, and kept on swinging. Then, I stopped just before the stairs and deactivated Good Speed Blessing X. The next moment, the time that had stopped began to flow. Pop 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 pop. Over a hundred flowers of light bloomed at once. The scene was fantastic and beautiful. Dot few. Is this a total annihilation? No. There were only three of them left in the corner of the room. Share. Skeleton soldiers rushed toward me with their orichalcum swords at the ready. I didn't move on purpose. There was no need to move. Holy lightning. Lily, who came later. Brandished her tin cane. A bolt of lightning shot out from the tip of the tin cane, obliterating the three skeleton soldiers. Lily, nice follow up. Thank you very much. Dot I did my best for a bit. Lily rushed toward me and bowed her head. Iris and Zurara also came up behind her. This must be the end of the third floor. Master San. We're almost there. Let's do our best. Yeah. You're right. Let's have a strategy meeting while we wait for our magic to recover. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 17. Here's the chapter. Enjoy. Ed. Blast. Chapter 17. I tried to defeat the Elder Lich. The Elder Lich was located in the deepest part of this labyrinth. In other words, on the fourth level, the battle would be fought after descending the staircase in front of us. However, there was still a small matter of concern. The Elder Lich was a type of undead, so naturally, it must have an unlimited regenerative capacity. It seemed to be quite strong, and there was the possibility that even Holy Lightning, the highest level purification magic of light, may not work. What about a forced purification process using Yggdrasil branches? However, this had only been used for defeating the skeleton soldier. Will it really work on the Elder Lich? Full assist S answer to my question was as follows. A forced purification process is prepared for each type of undead. To execute the forced purification process for the Elder Lich, 
An estimated 60 seconds of construction time will be required. It takes 60 seconds? That's a bit too long, considering that we will be in the middle of a battle. When I thought that, there is more info from, full assist, according to it, by performing, appraisal, against the Elder Lich or by attacking it with Holy Lightning. You can shorten the construction time of the forced purification process twice in total. That's a good thing to hear. Then, let's make a strategy based on that. After a brief strategy meeting, we decided to go down the stairs. The further we went, the cooler the air became. It's eerie. As we reached the bottom of the stairs, I said, it's about time. We're going to stick to the plan. Yes, leave it to me. I'll do my best. Take care. Everyone. Zurara will stay here for now. I've asked him to stand guard in case of reinforcements from the skeleton soldiers coming from behind. I exchanged glances with Iris and Lily. The three of us gave each other a small nod and ran down the stairs. We arrived on the fourth floor. It was a small chapel surrounded by rugged rock faces. There was a large altar in the back, and a mysterious magic circle was painted on the floor in red paint. It was glowing faintly so it might have been in the middle of some kind of ritual. In the center of the magic circle stood a skeleton in dark colored vestments the Elder Lich. It looked up to the sky with its arms outstretched wide and its body turned up. It looked as if it was trying to summon something. If this were a game, there would be an unskippable cutscene or a conversation with the boss, but this was reality and time does not stop. You have to be the first to win and the element of surprise is always a good thing. Lily, Holy Lightning. As part of the strategy, I had Lily start chanting on the way down the stairs. We know that Elder Lich was on the fourth floor, so there was no need to go through the trouble of chanting after the battle had begun. Just get it done first. Lily's tin cane shone with a silvery white light. The Elder Lich stopped moving for a moment as if dismayed by the sudden activation of magic but quickly came to its senses, jumped back and mumbled something in a rapid voice. It was in a language that should have been incomprehensible to humans, but their, full assist, effect translated it, and the meaning poured into my brain. Darkness, become the thunderbolt that corrupts all that shines dark lightning. A jet black bolt of lightning shoots out from Elder Lich's right hand. However, Lily's holy lightning, which had been activated earlier, reached the opponent first. A flash of silvery white struck the Elder Lich's entire body. Gawah! A scream echoed through the chapel. The Elder Lich staggered and fell to the ground. However, it did not seem to be a fatal wound, and Elder Lich was still there. In a way, this was to be expected. Immediately afterward, a black bolt of lightning approached us. Iris, leave it to me. Iris had already prepared her Dragon God Shield. The granted effect Dragon God Barrier X was activated. A wall of light appeared to envelop us, repelling the black lightning. Then, a few seconds later, I heard a voice in my mind. Data analysis of the use of the light magic holy lightning on Elder Lich has been completed. The time required to build the forced purification process is reduced to 24 seconds. The original time required was about 60 seconds, so the time required has been reduced to less than half. This is a big help. Then, let's give it one more push. I activate, appraisal, Elder Lich. The highest rank of undead created from flesh and blood of the great calamity the emptiness gluttonous dragon. Summoned by the ritual of the immortal king, he is a priest of darkness who worships the gluttonous dragon and performs the gluttonous ritual. An undead created from a calamity. If so, this certainly explains its strength. The description included ominous phrases such as great calamity and gluttonous ritual, but let's leave that for later. Defeating the elder lich is our top priority right now. The execution of the appraisal further compressed the time to build the process to less than 10 seconds. We are very close. Meanwhile, the Elder Lich had already regained its position. A reddish black horror arose from its entire body. Oh, 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 oh gluttonous dragon. Give me strength. The next moment, crack crack crack. The entire chapel began to shake. Coo. This is not good. I feel a tremendous evil. Iris and Lily shouted at the same time. The two had a look of impatience on their faces. The Elder Lich was now more vicious than ever. If this continues, something irreversible may happen. Three seconds left to complete the analysis. I held up the drizzle branch, with that, Iris knew what to do next. Their dragon god Barrier X was released, and the wall of light quickly disappeared. Let's go. I kicked the ground and started running. I instantly activated good speed blessing eggs and approached Elder Lich with a single breath. Just at that moment, I heard the voice of, 
full assist, a forced purification process against the undead name Elder Lich was constructed. Now, I put all my strength into it and slammed the drizzle branch into the Elder Lich. A flash of green bursts out. A desperate cry echoed through the chapel. As expected, the Elder Lich's body turned into silky particles and melted into the light, although it did not die instantly like the skeleton soldier did. Eventually, it disappeared completely leaving only its dark-colored vestments behind. The subjugation is complete. I would like to think that all is now safely resolved. Phew. As I was taking a breath after the battle, I heard an inorganic voice. With the defeat of the Elder Lich, the curse of the Black Death has been lifted. It seemed that Count Maillard's curse had also been lifted. That was honestly gratifying. I am so glad that Surya did not become a dead city. Furthermore, the voice in my brain tells me, your level has reached 99 with this acquisition of experience. The Elder Lich was quite a formidable foe, and it seems that I received a large amount of experience because of it. My original level was 95, so I had gained four levels at once. Would this be the end of it, or will I hit the 100th level? Frankly speaking, I was quite curious. As I was thinking about this, Iris and Lily approached me. The plan went well, didn't it? Kusan. That was amazing. It was thanks to the cooperation of the two of you. Thank you. I held up my right hand and made a gut pose. Then Iris and Lily also raised their right hand in the same way. The three of us chuckled together, feeling somewhat amused. Then, as if sensing that the battle was over, Zurara comes down the stairs. Master San, good work. Iris Nain and Lily are Nietzsche too. Thanks for the good work. Thanks for keeping an eye on things, too. Zurara. Are there any enemies coming? No, there was no problem. So, the skeleton soldiers must have been wiped out. Ara. Iris suddenly raised her voice in wonder. What's wrong? I was just thinking, the Elder Lich probably used this underground facility as a stronghold. Perhaps it is. How did it get in and out of the fourth floor? It is certainly a mystery if you ask me. I think it might have been using some kind of spatial teleportation magic, but it's also possible that the Elder Lich like the rest of us, was trying to conquer the labyrinth on the first floor and the traps on the second floor. The Elder Lich was getting lost in the labyrinth. The Elder Lich walked stealthily so as not to step on the tiles where the ceiling falls down. The Elder Lich ran as fast as it could to avoid being burned by the magic lasers. It's a little funny to imagine the picture. Putting the joke aside, speaking of Elder Lich, there was something worrisome written in the description of the appraisal. It is a dark priest who worships the gluttonous dragon and performs the gluttonous ritual. When we stepped into this fourth floor, it seemed as if the elder lich was performing some kind of ritual. Perhaps it was the gluttonous ritual. Looking at the magic circle on the floor, it had somehow lost its light. Could this be interpreted as the ritual being interrupted? It worries me. As I thought that, full assist started up and suggested something like this. Would you like to analyze the magic circle? To start the analysis, please touch the magic circle. Of course, the answer is yes. I have a bad feeling about this, and I should perform the analysis. I walked up to the magic circle and got down on one knee on the ground. Oops, I touched the magic circle with the fingertip of my right hand. The silver light spread out and enveloped the magic circle. It's beautiful. Iris let out a few words unintentionally. It's kind of warm. What are you doing, Kusan? Analyzing the magic circle. The Elder Lich was doing some kind of ritual here. As I answered Lily's words, Zurara, who was dancing beside her, suddenly stopped moving. I can't let Master San work alone. I'll do something too. What was he going to do? Zurara looked around, and then he shouted, Ah! and headed for the altar at the back of the chapel. Master San. It looks like I can access the facilities system from the altar. Let me see if I can't rewrite the ownership. Pippipi. Does that mean he's going to take over the facility? Zurara is quite multifunctional, isn't he? Perhaps I should say that as expected of a magical creature born in an ancient civilization. Then, in about 30 seconds, the analysis of the magic circle was completed. The analysis results and the accompanying supplementary information on full assist were installed in my mind. The amount of information this time was unprecedentedly large. Thanks to this, I felt dizzy for a moment. Dot I see. I muttered to myself as I held my right temple. Ku, are you okay? Are you alright, Kusan? Iris and Lily rushed over to me, 
looking worried. No problem. I found out more about the ritual that was taking place here. Have you finished analyzing it already? As expected of you, Ku, that it was quick. May I ask you to tell us about it? Of course. Please listen to me. I nodded and began to explain. In the underground labyrinth, it seems that three rituals were being performed in sequence. They were called the Ritual of the Immortal Soldier, the Ritual of the Immortal King, and the Gluttonous Ritual, respectively. The Ritual of the Immortal Soldier summoned the Skeleton Soldier, while the Ritual of the Immortal King summoned the Elder Lich. It was the believers of the Calamity Cult who performed both of these rituals. It seems that 4,000 years ago, the believers sacrificed themselves to complete the two rituals. Thus, more than a hundred skeleton soldiers and an elder lich were summoned. The role of the skeleton soldiers was to defend the chapel. As for the elder lich, its role was to carry out the third ritual, the gluttonous ritual, which would take a very long time. This was a very long process, and it was said that the elder lich had been going out to the surface once every few hundred years to collect sacrificial souls with the curse of the Black Death and had been preparing the gluttonous ritual all the way up to the present day. If you were human, you'd die of exhaustion after 4,000 years of hard work. No, they would die of old age long before that. Anyway, the Elder Lich mentioned in the records of the Dragonfolk and the God of War religion is probably this guy. That means Ku has avenged all the victims of the Elder Lich up to this point. Kusan, that's amazing. Lily exclaimed in admiration. The number of victims of the Curse of the Black Death is said to be in the tens or hundreds of thousands at any one time, so the total number of victims may reach around 100 million. The problem is the gluttonous ritual. It is said to be a ritual to summon an entity known as the Great Calamity. The Great Calamity, not only a calamity. Iris raises her voice in wonder. On the other hand, Lily seemed to remember something and blinked a few times before saying, I have heard before that there is a calamity that surpasses calamities. Perhaps that is the Great Calamity. Yes. That's right. You know it well. I nodded. I heard that the gluttonous dragon summoned by the gluttonous ritual is even more powerful than the black dragon. I don't understand why it's stronger than the black dragon. Iris sighed. If such a thing were to appear on the surface, there would be a big problem. Did the summoning stop? Dot I wonder. I let my words trail off. As a finishing touch to the ritual, the elder lich planted a curse of the black death on Count Maylard. Originally, the people of Surya would have died out and all their souls would have been sacrificed to the gluttonous dragon. However, when we defeated the Elder Lich, the curse of the Black Death disappeared, and the ritual was suspended. I would like to hope that the summoning of the gluttonous dragon failed. But, Full Assist, was withholding an answer on this point. This is the first time that, Full Assist, has not given me a clear answer. That's ominous. Just as I muttered that, the ground shook intermittently. Sand grains were falling from the ceiling. Dot an earthquake. Iris turned her gaze above her head. There was an earthquake yesterday, too. I feel a kind of uneasy feeling in my chest. Lily looked around anxiously. It was then. Suddenly, there was a sharp metallic sound, and a magic circle appeared from my item box. From within the magic circle, a large silver sword appeared by itself. Gram. I shouted unintentionally. How did it come out of the item box? on its own. As if in response to that question, an inorganic voice echoed in my mind. The resurrection of the gluttonous dragon has been detected. The magic sword Gramstragon Slayer S Plus is activated. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Chapter 18. Sponsored chapter by Patreon. Enjoy. Ed. Blast. Chapter 18. I tried to fight the great calamity. I picked up Gram and pulled it out of the magic circle. Once again. A metallic sound ringed from the silver blade. As if in response, the dragon god shield held by Iris also made a similar sound and vibrated violently. ki -a -a. Iris made a startled sound, but she immediately seemed to have guessed everything and turned her head toward me. Hey, Ku, could this be question mark? Yeah, the gluttonous dragon is coming. I can feel the horrifying presence. Lily gulped. Her face was pale and her body trembled faintly. It's like my soul is being crushed. Are you okay? Yes, somehow. Lily seemed to regain her composure as she took several deep breaths and nodded with a stout expression. Kusan, let's go back to the surface. You are right. Let's hurry and go back. Just after I answered, Zurara shouted from the altar, Master San, I've changed the owner of this facility to me. I will use a transfer device to get to the surface, so please come closer to me. Nice work. 
Zurara, that's what you call a godsend. I immediately ran over to the altar. Iris and Lily followed me. Touch me. Zurara's voice was heard, and we touched his body. It felt nice and cold. Here we go. At the same time as Zurara's voice, our entire bodies were enveloped in a floating sensation. The landscape around us distorted as we stood at the foot of the mountain. It was only a moment. Iris shouted in surprise. I wonder if the Elder Lich was using the transfer device too. Maybe. I looked up at the sky. The sun was shining in the afternoon, but for some reason, it was as dark as night. It was clearly an unusual situation. Kusan, Iris San, look at that. Lily pointed to the right. A translucent sphere like a soap bubble, was floating in the mountain meadow area. It was pretty large. Its diameter must have been over 50 meters. The translucent sphere was expanding little by little, quivering and pulsating. Eventually, as if unable to bear its own weight, it began to fall. It hit the ground and burst from the inside. Gram and the dragon god shield emitted a violent metallic sound as if to warn. Then, the great calamity appears. It was an oddly high-pitched song-like cry. It was so far removed from what is generally imagined when one hears the words dragon's roar. The form of the gluttonous dragon was also too bizarre to be called a dragon. It had neither wings nor fangs. If I were to compare it to an earth creature, it would be similar to a chambered nautilus. It carried a bone-like shell on its back, and countless tentacles extended from the front part of its face. Master San, is that a dragon? Zurara muttered in bewilderment. I felt the same way. Can he call such a thing a dragon? With a feeling of bewilderment in my heart, I activated, appraisal. Emptiness gluttonous dragon, imperfect form, a great calamity dragon that flew in from the outside of this world. It is the natural enemy of all life. The gluttonous ritual was interrupted so it was resurrected in an incomplete form. From the description, it seems that our defeat of the Elder Lich was not in vain. By interrupting the ritual, we at least avoided resurrection in its full form. The question now was whether or not we could defeat this gluttonous dragon. If we escaped at this point, Surya would surely be destroyed. I would not accept such a bad ending. I had no choice but to do what I could. At the same time as I regained my grip on Grams, the gluttonous dragon let out a cry. The giant body of the gluttonous dragon begins to move, raising a cloud of dust. When I looked closely, I saw hundreds of centipede like legs sprouting from the underside of its shell. The gluttonous dragon was not heading in our direction, but in the direction of Seria. Iris shouted, Ku, the city is in danger. I know. I called Dest and Grand Cabin from my item box. What do you need? Master? Get everyone on board and go after that monster. Full speed. Understood. What about you, Master San? I answered Zurara's question while taking out the flying potion from my item box, with my left hand. I'm going to go ahead and stall the gluttonous dragon. I swallowed the flying potion in one gulp and activated Wind Blessing S+. I soared into the sky and chased after the dragon at full speed. Anyway. I need to draw its attention to me. I held Gram on my right shoulder and put magic power into its blade. Thegard of War slash S plus is activated. I swing down the sword. A silver flash was released, tracing the trajectory of the slash. It struck the shell covering the back of the gluttonous dragon. A large crack appeared in its shell, and its rainbow-colored bodily fluids gushed out like a fountain. The gluttonous dragon screamed then slowed down while making clouds of dust. Made a U-turn, and turned around to face me. It was easier than I thought it would be to slow it down. U -u 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 -u. The tentacles of the gluttonous dragon turned toward me one after another. Each tentacle had a mouth-like feature with jagged teeth on the top and bottom. Countless mouths opened wide, and they emitted dark-colored heat rays all at once. The number of heat rays exceeded hundreds or even thousands. It was as if a dark-colored wall was closing in on me. Q. I activated good speed blessing eggs and quickly raised my altitude to avoid the heat rays. It was close. If the activation were delayed even for a moment, I would have received a direct hit from the heat rays. Now it was my turn. I readjusted Gram as I lowered my altitude. My remaining magic power is about 80%, and I put 20% of it into Thegard of War slash S plus. With determination, I swung Gram down, and a silver slash was released, cutting off the tentacles of the gluttonous dragon in one fell swoop. Rainbow-colored bodily fluids gushed out from the severed surfaces and poured down onto the grassland like heavy rain. 
The surrounding area was transformed into a burnt field with a sizzling sound. Whether it is a strong acid or poisonous, it seems that the bodily fluids of the gluttonous dragon are quite dangerous. But that aside, at the moment, the battle was progressing in my favor. The gluttonous dragon was already heavily wounded. Its back shell was cracked, and more than half of its tentacles had been cut off. If possible, I would like to push through this battle. Rao area you 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 you. The gluttonous dragon screamed. At the same time, the tentacles began to regenerate. That's troublesome. I muttered to myself. Maybe I should take care of it all at once before it becomes a drawn out battle. I offered 50% of my magic power and activated Thigard of War slash S plus U <laughs> Gram, which became a sword of light so huge that it pierced through the heavens, slammed down toward the gluttonous dragon. I will decide with a single blow. Dot that was the plan. Re -e 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 the gluttonous dragon emitted an unprecedented high pitched squeal and its body became translucent. The slash of light slipped straight through the body of the gluttonous dragon and struck the ground. A huge crater was born with a thunderous roar. However, the gluttonous dragon was not even scratched. What's going on? While I was making puzzled voices, all the tentacles had finished regenerating. The gluttonous dragon, still translucent, aimed thousands of tentacles at me and released the heat rays. Q. I used Thu Wind Blessing S Plus to acrobatically weave between the heat rays. When I thought I couldn't avoid it, I activated Thigard Speed Blessing X. In order to ensure my safety, I retreated and kept my distance from the gluttonous dragon. My remaining magic power was less than 10%. I can't waste any more. I muttered to myself as I looked at the semi-transparent gluttonous dragon. It was at that time. The figure of the gluttonous dragon disappeared in a flash. Wow. I turned around when I felt a deadly presence behind me. I looked back and saw it at close range. You 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 While maintaining its translucent state, it slammed one of its tentacles toward me. I immediately activated good speed blessing eggs and tried to take evasive action. But for some reason, I couldn't move at all. It was as if I was being drowned in a muddy swamp. Eventually, my magic power ran out, and Thegard Speed Blessing X was deactivated. The translucent tentacles, however, hit me directly without any difficulty. Gah. I felt as if I was being blown away. I wore the Fenra coat over my armored bearer armor. In addition, I had the black spider gauntlets on each arm, so my defense was very high. Thanks to this, my body was not harmed but I lost control of the wind and was knocked to the ground from the hit. I quickly activated my dexterity and rolled to absorb the impact of the collision. Looking at my left arm, I saw that the black spider gauntlet was half broken. Gram was not in my hand, and it was sticking into the ground quite far away. Apparently, I had let go of it when the tentacle struck me. Dot what a fool. My attack slipped through, but the attack from the enemy connected. I don't understand. Immediately after, I heard the inorganic voice of, full assist. The analysis of the unique ability of the emptiness gluttonous dragon has been completed. It is presumed to be, spatial manipulation. What on earth kind of ability is that? As if to answer my question, information poured in. It seems that the gluttonous dragon can cause various phenomena by interfering with the space around it. By becoming translucent, it can slip through enemy attacks, warp a short distance, or even block an opponent's movement by fixing the space around it. Dot. However, there is a limit to its effective range, and it seems that as long as one maintains a distance from the gluttonous dragon, their movements will not be blocked. Fortunately, the gluttonous dragon did not pursue me. It turned its back from me and resumed moving towards area. What should I do? The gluttonous dragon had spatial manipulation. As long as that power exists, the result will not differ even if I challenge it to a rematch. It's the same as before, a return blow. Worst case scenario, I may even lose my life. However, fortunately for me, the gluttonous dragon prioritized the attack on Surya over me. As long as I did not provoke the gluttonous dragon, it would be possible for me to escape. I would be abandoning the town of Surya, but it would be meaningless if I died. So if I think about it realistically, this is a situation in which I should retreat. Well, I know that, but, the guard guy who had the, magic trick, girl, 
the people who applauded my trumpet performance. I don't want them to be killed. Running away from this would not just leave a bad aftertaste. I would regret it for the rest of my life. Then there was only one answer. I'm going to challenge it. I haven't exhausted all my options yet. There are still plenty of items and skills that I haven't used. If I try them one by one, I might be able to find a way to break through there spatial manipulation. I will not give up. At the moment I made up my mind to do so, a warm golden light enveloped my entire body. What is this? I knew this glow. It was the one that saved my life in the battle against the black dragon before. Then I hear an inorganic voice. The seal of Idrissel's bow has been lifted. It can be used at 20% output. At the same time, magic power filled my whole body. My MP increased by the equivalent of 50,000, 100,000. 200,000 exceeding the upper limit. The momentum was even more tremendous than before. In the blink of an eye, it surpassed 10 million and reached 100 million. If this is the case, will I be able to beat the gluttonous dragon? I took out the Yggdrasil bow from my item box. The bow emits a green divine light. When I held it in my hand, I heard the voice of full assist. To use the Yggdrasil bow, you will need the magic power of the God of War's Shrine Maiden. This will nullify the spatial manipulation, of the gluttonous dragon. Is it necessary for me to join up with the, God of War's Shrine Maiden? Lily? Right after I muttered that, the Grand Cabin came to a halt in front of me with a cloud of dust. Nice timing, Dest. I felt the momentum coming my way. Are you alright, Master? Yeah, I'm fine. But, more importantly, go after the gluttonous dragon. Go as fast as you can. I told Dest and activated Wind Blessing S Plus to jump onto the roof of the Grand Cabin. There I found Iris, Lily, and Zurara. Ku, are you okay? I mean, you're kind of glowing. Well, a lot has happened. I can't explain it well either, so I'll answer in vague terms. Master San, you look so shiny and cool. Oh, your left arm gauntlet is broken. Are you hurt? I'm fine. My body is strong. I answered and put the broken gauntlet in my item box. Kusan. So you have broken the bow seal. Lily has a thoughtful expression on her face and stares at Yggdrasil's bow. Dot why does she look so sad? I understand how to use it. I've seen it many times in, Foresight, since I was little. Then that makes things easier. The magic power. Thank you for everything you have done for me until today. I give my life to you. Kusan. Dot, huh? I was a little confused by this unexpected statement. I don't want your life. I just need your magic power. Eh? Lily looked stunned and blinked repeatedly. Then she regained her composure and replied. I I'm sorry. What I said earlier was a misunderstanding. Please forget it. No, indeed, that excuse is too forceful, isn't it? But that's not the point right now. The first priority was to defeat of the gluttonous dragon. In response to my intention, an inorganic voice told me, please ready your boat to get there with the God of War's Shrine Maiden, Lily. Let's talk about the details later. Draw the bow with me. Understood. Dot so it's the same there as in my dream. When Lily muttered something meaningful, she turned to the right side of me. The two of us were going to hold the boat together, but there was too much of a height difference between Lily and me. This means that Lily's back would not be able to reach it. Fortunately, the flying potion was still in effect. I activated the wind blessing S plus and lifted Lily up including her within its area of effect. Thank you, Kusan. No problem. Dot let's go. Yes. The two of us exchanged glances and prepared to fire the bow. The silver light from Lily's body overflowed and took the form of an arrow. https colon slash slash Nike's translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash two thousand and twenty two slash oh two slash oh 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 two eight dot jpg. The Calamity Killer arrow was summoned. Forceful punishment will be initiated against the Great Calamity. The emptiness gluttonous dragon. Such a message echoed in my mind. At the same time, a frightened cry was heard from the gluttonous dragon in front of us. You 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 you. Perhaps it understood that the presence of the arrow was dangerous for it. While continuing towards Surya at the same speed as before, the gluttonous dragon pointed several tentacles at us and shot out a series of heat rays. Iris, leave it to me. Iris raises her dragon god shield and activates her dragon god barrier rex. A wall of light enveloped the grand cabin, blocking all heat rays. Kusan, 
Now, yeah, we synchronized our breathing and fired the arrow to kill the calamity. The arrows sparkled and turned into silver meteors. ra a u r o u u u u The gluttonous dragon let out a cry and activated its spatial manipulation. The outline of its entire body blurs and becomes translucent. Then, the silver meteor hit it. A flash of light popped, and a voice echoed in my mind. There, spatial manipulation has been nullified by the calamity killer's arrow. Ryuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
Purify the disaster with absolute heat. Levitine. That was the key phrase to activate the divine technique. Something inside my body shook, and then the black dragon roared loudly. <laughs> its huge body gradually disintegrated into red particles and was sucked into gran. The silver sword blade emitted a crimson glow. The countdown began for the anti-calamity divine technique. Levitine. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four. The gluttonous dragon squealed impatiently and fused all its tentacles into one, releasing an extreme heat ray. Realizing that it was in danger of extinction, it unleashed a desperate blow. But it was for nothing. The golden light that had enveloped my body spread wide and became a huge shield of light, blocking the heat rays of the gluttonous dragon. Now, three, two, one, zero. I raised Gram high in the air and with over 10 trillion of magic power swung it down. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2022 slash 02 slash 3 dot jpg. A crimson flash was released. It struck the gluttonous dragon with a ferocious force, engulfing its entire body and causing a huge explosion. A roar resounded. A gust of wind blew. A huge pillar of flame rose up. Scorching the sky red. The screams of the gluttonous dragon echoed through the air. Its huge body gradually became smaller and smaller in the flames, and eventually, it disappeared completely. The darkness that had covered the sky cleared. I won. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2, Chapter 19. Read up to four chapters ahead by joining our Patreon. And here's the chapter. Enjoy. Ed. Blast. Chapter 19. I reported to the Count. After defeating the gluttonous dragon, I slowly descended to the ground. Phew. Perhaps it was because I had fought a very hard battle this time, I was exhausted. The strength drained from my legs, and I sat down on the spot. The golden light glittered around me for a while and then vanished as it ascended to the heavens. Dot thank you. Although I am not sure what the light was, I should thank it for saving me. Soon, an inorganic voice tells me. You are now at level 108. Speaking of 108, I thought of the bells on New Year's Eve. I thought to myself and then suddenly realized that it was nothing. Three digits level, huh? Apparently, level 99 is not the upper limit, but there are more levels beyond that. The inorganic voice further announced, limit break, has been released. This is a skill that can be used at level 100 or above and can temporarily raise the magic capacity significantly. The effect seems to increase in proportion to the level number. However, it cannot be used continuously and requires a cooldown time of 24 hours for each use. In other words, it is like using a special move once a day. Depending on how it is used, it can greatly expand the range of strategies, and as a skill, it is quite useful. Speaking of skills, let's also check out Calamity Summoning. Since we defeated the gluttonous dragon, I wonder if it has been added to the summoning list. In response to my question, full assist, is activated. The control sequence of the empty gluttonous dragon has failed. It is presumed that the main body of the gluttonous dragon has escaped to the outside of the world. Therefore, it cannot be summoned with, calamity summoning. It is rare that, full assist, fails. As I was thinking, as expected the gluttonous dragon called the great calamity. Full assist, continued. The pursuit sequence succeeded in taking away, spatial manipulation, from the empty gluttonous dragon. It is acquired as a skill of Kukauzaka. Huh? Spatial manipulation, is now my skill? What on earth does that mean? I thought about it, and then detailed information flowed into my brain. Apparently, by consuming magical power, I can perform the exact same tricks as the gluttonous dragon. This skill can nullify attacks, warp over short distances, restrain enemies and do almost anything else. Isn't this extremely convenient? And since the gluttonous dragon has lost its spatial manipulation, even if it challenges me to a revenge match, I will be in a better position to fight it next time. The results are not only favorable, but it is a win-win situation for us. The control sequence had failed, but somehow the profit was very large. I felt as if I had discovered a bug in the game. While I was thinking about this, Dest came from the opposite direction. Pulling the Grand Cabin. Master. Thanks for the good work. Did you come for me? Yes. Thank you for defeating the gluttonous dragon. Dest slowed down a little and brought the Grand Cabin to a stop. Iris, Lily, 
and Zurara were on the roof of it. They descended to the ground using the ladder at the rear of the carriage and came running up to me. Ku, good job. Can you stand? Yeah, somehow. I took a deep breath and slowly raised myself off the ground. I've killed the dragon. At least it's a relief. How do you feel now that you've slain your second dragon? I'm tired. I just want to go home and rest. Foo foo, that just sound like you? Iris giggled. I get caught up in the moment, and I smile a little too. By the way, Koo, what were those sparkles? Iris was probably referring to the golden glow. I don't know what it is either. Then Lily opened her mouth as we both had a question mark on our heads. I can make a guess. Can I have you listen to it? Of course. If you have an idea. Let me know. Thank you. Lily bowed her head and began to speak. According to the law of the God of War, it is said that the soul is a golden light. Perhaps that light were the souls of those who were gathered as sacrifices to the gluttonous dragon. I think so, too. Zurara nodded with a serious expression. The souls of the sacrificed people may have been freed after Master San defeated the Elder Lich and interrupted the ritual and they may have lent their power to repay the favor. I see. The golden light disappeared at the end as it soared to the heavens. Is it safe to assume that the souls of those who were sacrificed by the Elder Lich had safely ascended? I looked up and saw a beautiful azure sky without a single cloud. Then we boarded the Grand Cabin and headed back to Seria. It was not far from the city. While relaxing on the sofa, the Grand Cabin came to a slow stop just before the city walls. Dest's voice echoed from the ceiling's magic speakers. Master, we have arrived in the city. I got out of the Grand Cabin with Iris, Lily, and Zurara. The castle gates were tightly closed. Well, of course, just a few minutes ago, the Black Dragon and the Gluttonous Dragon were battling like they were in a monster movie near the town, and the town of Sria would want to fortify its defenses. Well, if we waited here for a while, the gates would open, I headed for Dest. Thank you again today. Have a good rest. Yay. I'm honored to be of service. Well then, see you later. I nodded at Dest's words and stowed the entire grand cabin in their item box. As I did so, the gates opened and a familiar face approached from inside. It was the young guard with the magic trick. Kudono, are you safe? Oh, thank goodness. Thank you. Is there any damage to the city? Yes, don't worry about that. In the first place. What exactly was going on? I was watching from the top of the city walls a few minutes ago, and to tell the truth, I don't know what's happening. The guard's face showed a look of confusion. While I was pondering where to begin explaining, the guard came to his senses and said, Oh, I beg your pardon. Actually, Count Maillard is waiting for you and would like to talk to you and your friends about this matter. If you don't mind. I would like to ask you to come to the guardroom. I don't mind. What about you guys? I'm fine too. We were originally commissioned by the Count to defeat the Elder Lich, so we need to report back to the client. I think it would be better to explain about the gluttonous dragon too. I hope Count San is feeling better. I don't see any objections. Well then, please take me to the Count. Understood. Thank you for your cooperation. The guard gave a brilliant salute as he said this. We were escorted by the guard toward the guardroom. We entered the building and headed straight down the hallway, eventually arriving at a lounge in the back. The Count is this way. Come on in. The guard said and opened the door for us. We entered the lounge, and there was Count Maillard. He got up from the sofa and welcomed us. Oh, Kudono, you're back. I'm glad you're all right. Please sit down. Thank you very much. Sorry to bother you. I sat down on the sofa. Iris sat next to me on my left, and Lily and Zurara sat next to me on my right. When I looked at the door, the guard said, Well, I will take my leave now, and bowed to me before leaving the room. Speaking of Count Maillard, his complexion is still a little pale, but he does not seem to be in bad shape. The curse of the Black Death had been lifted, and his body was probably feeling better. First of all, let me thank you, Kudono. Thanks for defeating the Elder Lich. Without you. Not only I but also the people of Syria would have lost their lives. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Count Maillard bowed his head deeply as he said this. When he thanked me so deeply, I felt somewhot embarrassed. I only did what I was supposed to do. Dot moreover, let me report on this matter. Oh, of course, of course. I'd love to hear about how you defeated the Elder Lich. Count Maillard nodded with a curious expression on his face. If you know more about the tentacled monster that was rampaging outside the city and the black dragon that appeared later, please let me know. As a lord, 
I must know exactly what is going on. I understand, I will tell you everything in order. I explained the events that had taken place since our departure from Surya one by one. When I told him that I had discovered an underground labyrinthine with a place of worship in the mountains, Count Maillard looked surprised. My goodness, I had no idea such a thing existed in our territory. I am very grateful to you, Kudono, for finding it. No, this time, it was just a coincidence. I would have overlooked it under normal circumstances. You are a very humble man, aren't you? Um, I like you more and more. Count Maillard smiled. Oops, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. What kind of place was the underground labyrinthine worship center? I began with a brief explanation of the structure of the labyrinthine worship center, followed by a description of how I conquered each floor. The first floor was a huge labyrinth but we got through it quickly. As for the specific method, we proceeded by using hammers to smash through the walls. Iris used both hands and made a gesture as if she were making a rice cake with her floppy hands. Ha ha ha, that's very interesting. Count Maillard laughed and began to imitate Iris's movements and began to make the rice cake motion. Dot it's a somewhat surreal sight. I have explored the labyrinths of ancient civilizations in my youth. I got lost that time and had a hard time, but if Kudono was there, you could have easily conquered it. I have no doubt about that. Lily nodded. The traps on the second floor were also easy thanks to Kusan. The third floor was crawling with undead, but Master San got rid of them all. As expected of Kudono, you have done as good a job as they say. Did you use the same momentum to defeat the Elder Lich on the fourth floor? No, the Elder Lich was quite a formidable foe. I don't think I could have won without everyone's cooperation. I explained the process from the start of the battle to the completion of the defeat. Now, I would like to say that my report is complete. But there are still some important details left. The resurrection of the gluttonous dragon and its defeat. Looking back on it, I think it was a last minute victory. If the wheels of fate had shifted even slightly, I don't know what would have happened. In that sense, I guess I am very lucky. I am truly grateful for that. After we finished our report on the case, Count Maillard muttered to me with a deepened expression on his face. Leaving the details aside, it means that Kudono has protected this city from the gluttonous dragon. I will have to increase your reward. I'll have the calculations done and an estimate delivered by tomorrow evening. Is that all right with you? Yes, that's fine. Tomorrow. We will still be in Seria. If we get the estimate delivered to the inn, we will be able to confirm it at night. Count Maillard smiled at me and said at last, Without you, the gluttonous dragon would have made a complete revival, and many of us would have been sacrificed. I will never forget this favor. If you ever have any trouble in the future, please do not hesitate to rely on my family. We will always be here to help you. It seems the production skill acquired in another world is the strongest. Volume 2 Epilogue. Here's the chapter, enjoy. Ed, blast. Epilogue, celebrating it with everyone. The next day, we decided to stay in Surya for a while. The Adventurers Guild was going to investigate the incident and keep a detailed record of it. We apologize to all of you while you are exhausted. However, we would appreciate your cooperation in our investigation in case a similar incident occurs in the future. An official of the Surya branch came to our inn and bowed to us in a very courteous manner. Of course, we had no reason to refuse. Iris and I belong to the Adventurers Guild, and as members of the organization, it was only natural that we should provide information. In addition to testifying about the incident, I was also present at the site inspection for the underground labyrinth worship center and helped write a portion of the report. As a result, I had to extend my stay in Seria, and the Adventurers Guild paid for my extended lodging. Considering that the Five Star Pavilion was the most luxurious inn in town, this was a very generous offer. I wish Japanese companies would take a lesson from this. As for the travel schedule, we contacted the Scarlet Trading Company to rearrange it. Since there was plenty of free time in the schedule to begin with, it seemed unlikely that we would be late for the awards ceremony in the royal capital. It was the evening of the sixth day of our stay when we finally completed all of our business. When we left the Adventurers Guild building, we all stretched out. It's finally over. I think this was harder than the battle with the gluttonous dragon. Iris sighed deeply, and Lily nodded next to her. I'm a little tired. Too. Lillian Eachin, are you alright? I'll give you a massage later. We started walking toward the inn as we talked. Tomorrow morning we would finally leave for Fort Port. Today is our last night in Surya, and since it's our last night here, we might as well do something out of the ordinary. As we were thinking about it, 
A woman with long blonde hair came from across the street. It was Girl, the D-rank adventurer. I was told that she has a family home in Syria, and I guessed that she was on her way back home. She was dressed in a short-sleeved shirt and shorts and was carrying a large square box in both hands. Yahoo, Kukai. Hello, hello. I was just on my way to your inn. You wanted to see me? Kukai, or rather, Kukai Sama's party. You see, you protected the city this time as well right? So, here's a present to thank you. Cal offers a square box to me. I took the box and lifted the lid to find a large decorated cake inside. It was filled with cream and fruit and looked very luxurious. Did you make this cake? When Lily asked that, Cal puffed out her chest. My parents have a cake shop. My auntie and I made this cake together, and it's so good. Wow, looking forward to it. Oh, Zurara, that's a great response. Cal patted Zurara on the head then turned to me and said in a light tone. By the way, Kukai, I heard you defeated another dragon. To think you slew your second dragon, you're really the strongest one. Isn't that crazy? It's definitely crazy. Iris nodded her head. Was it a sign of camaraderie that she was matching girl's tone of voice? At this rate, I'm sure he'll be slaying the third dragon in the near future. Iron, I know what you mean. But, I'm not only talking about three dragons, but four, five, or even six dragons. I'd rather not do that. If my record of dragon slangs continues to grow, it means that many more calamities will be resurrected. I honestly don't want to see that happen. I don't like the rough stuff, though. Dot. Huh? Iris, Lily, and Kala all tilting their heads at each other. When it comes to Zurara, he bent his body and made a mark on his body. Dot well. Putting aside Kukai's joke, Cal clears her throat with a small cough. I've given you the cake, and my business is finished. So I'm going home. See you. With a quick raise of her right hand, Cal runs away with light steps. What can I say? She's so free, isn't she? Well, I have a magnificently decorated cake on my hands, but what should I do with it? Hey, hey, Master San. I want some cake. Right. I thought about it for a while, and then I suggested it to everyone. Since we are here, Let's have a moderate dinner tonight and eat cake at the inn. That sounds good. A lot has happened in Syria, so let's consider it a celebration. How about you, Lily? No problem. Yay. Me too. Me too. Then we're all in. I nodded and stored the decorated cake in my item box. If I accidentally drop such a magnificent thing, the celebration party will be ruined. After a light dinner, we returned to our inn the five-star pavilion. We gathered in the living room of my room and began preparing for the party. I took out the decorated cake from my item box, and the sweet aroma wafted through the air. Master San, I'm getting hungry. Can you wait a little longer? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Zurara's eyes sparkled as he looked at the decorated cake. I smiled at him and took out knives, forks, and plates for the four of us from my item box. I had previously created them with creation. Using the Haikino tree, I picked up the knife, activated my dexterity, and cut the decorated cake into pieces. The original size was too big, so I cut it into 16 equal pieces this time. Ku, thank you. You are really skilled at it, aren't you? It's no big deal. I put one cake on everyone's plate. The drinks were wine and grape juice, both of which were a thank you gift from the ranch into. There were wine glasses in the room so I decided to use them. I'll have the wine. I'll have the grape juice. I'll have a glass of juice too. When the drinks had been dispersed, I raised my glass. Well then, in celebration of our mutual hard work. Cheers. 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 Yay. Cheers. https colon slash slash nikes translation home dot files dot wordpress dot com slash 2022 slash 02 slash 008 dot jpg. The sound of glasses clinking against each other echoed through the living room. And so the celebration party began, and the cake was even better than expected. The rich cream, sponge cake like sweet filling and the sourness of the fruit accentuate the flavor and keep you coming back for more. Dot it's so good. I could eat many of these. Master San, I love this cake. Phew. Lily was eating the cake with a dreamy expression on her face as she took bite after bite to savor it. She was kind of cute, like a little animal. Everyone, including me, was crazy about the cake at first. However, perhaps due to our growing bellies, we gradually began to talk more and more. The topic of conversation was the events in Syria. The open-air bath on the first day of arrival, 
the festival on the second day, the encounter with the Count, the defeat of the Elder Lich and then the battle with the gluttonous dragon. We did well to win, didn't we? Iris muttered to herself, and Lily nodded beside her. If it weren't for Kusan, I think we would have been in a lot of trouble. No, I couldn't have defeated the gluttonous dragon on my own. It's also thanks to Iris and Lily for your help. Thank you, Fufu. I'm glad I could be of help to you. Um. Yes. For some reason, Lily's expression clouded over as she turned her head. What happened to her? As I recall, just before I used the drizzle bow, Lily was saying some strange things. I offer you my life. That's what she said. It was a very disturbing word, wasn't it? I have a feeling that something terrible will happen if I leave it unattended. Lily is an important friend of mine, and if she is having problems, I want to help her as much as I can. Dot I'll ask her while I can. Lily. May I have a word? A, R, yes. Before you use the bow, you said something like, I'm going to give my life for it. What on earth does it mean? That's. Lily looked troubled, and then she just clammed up. Well, what's going on? Iris opened her mouth while I was pondering. Lily, is it something you are having trouble talking about? Dot number. It's not like that. Lily shook her head. I just have so many things I don't understand that I haven't been able to sort them out myself. Then you might want to talk to us. Zurara said in a slightly more serious tone. Ancient scholars say it's easier to get things straight in your head if you talk to someone. That is certainly true. I've had my own experience that conversation helps me to organize my thoughts. I nodded my head and again addressed Lily. Why don't you just tell us what you think? Surprisingly. There is a possibility that this will solve the problem. Dot I suppose so. Kusan may be right. Lily pondered for a while but eventually nodded her head. As I explained to you before, according to the law of the God of War religion, there, God of War's Shrine Maiden, is said to have two missions. Do you remember that? Oh, yes, of course. I answered immediately. One is to give the bow of Idrissel to the Transmigrator, and the other is to find the Magic Sword Gram, right? Correct. However, there is actually another third mission that is not mentioned in the traditions. I learned about it in A. Foresight, when I was a child. What kind of mission is that? When I asked this, Lily's gaze wandered a little hesitantly, and then she answered in a whisper. Dot when the seal of the bow is broken, it is to summon the Calamity Killer Arrow in exchange for my life. I see. Was it because of the foresight that Lily, upon seeing the bow, said, I will offer my life? But what was actually needed was not life but magical power. This is probably why Lily is confused. Does that mean that their foresight was off? When Iris said so, Lily answered with a puzzled expression on her face. Dot I don't understand. It may be that the future has changed due to some factor, or it may be that another battle in the future will be just as their foresight predicted. For my part, I think the latter is more likely. Lillian Nietzschean. Are you going to die? Zurara muttered sadly. I don't want that. Thank you, Zurara-san. But I'm proud of the fact that I'm a god of war's shrine maiden, and I'm prepared for it from the very beginning. Lily turned to me as she said this and continued speaking in a strong tone. Her voice and expression showed her unwavering will and conviction. When I fought the devil tree and into, Kusan saved me from a dangerous situation. In order to repay the debt. I will give my life whenever necessary. Lily Chan. Next to me, Iris was speechless. She seemed confused, not knowing how to talk to her. Dot okay, I replied, looking straight at Lily. If that is Lily's decision, I respect it as a friend. But I don't want Lily to die. Dot if the situation should turn out to be as foresight, in the future, I will continue to search for a way to prevent Lily from being sacrificed until the very end. Is that okay with you? Dot yes. Lily nodded. I will not change my resolve to fulfill my mission, but I would also like to live longer if possible and visit various places with Kusan and the others. Dot do you think I'm being selfish? No, it's not. Right, Iris? Yes. I think it's a natural thing to do. Lily and Eichen, I'll help you, too. If you have any problems. Just let me know. Dot thank you, everyone. After saying this, Lily smiled softly. The smile was fragile and beautiful, like a melting snow flower. After that, we were still talking about our experiences in Surya, and the next thing I knew, Zurara was peacefully sleeping. Munya, I can't eat any more. MMMM, refill, please. You say you can't eat any more. But you want a refill? That's some incredible sleep talk. I chuckled and turned my attention to Lily. You 
Siu Lily also closed her eyes and fell asleep using the sofa's armrest as a pillow. Her sleeping face was innocent and age-appropriate. Hey, Ku. Iris whispered to me. Do you want to go out for some air? I'd love to. Lily and Zurara are both sleeping comfortably, and I feel a little sorry for them if I wake them up. Iris and I nodded to each other and quietly got up from the sofa. There is a door at the back of the living room that leads outside, so we go out onto the balcony. Looking up at the night sky, we saw many stars shining. Lily Chan is sleeping soundly. Maybe she felt better after letting a lot of things out. She's a little like for lice in the way she holds things over her shoulder like that. Iris gave a small sigh and muttered as she looked into the distance. Her profile is somewhat tinged with melancholy. Felice is Iris's twin sister and another, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden. Three years ago, she was killed by a monster attack. Felice also had a foresight. Looking back on it, I think she knew when she was going to die. She had organized her belongings and even left a suicide note. Maybe she knew everything through the dream. I think she probably did. Iris nodded and continued. When Felice passed away, I regretted it so much. If I had been there, I might have been able to save her. I thought about that a lot. That's why. You don't want to make the same mistake. Yes. I'm sure I'm comparing Lily to Felice. It's not a bad thing. It's natural to take the past and make use of it in the future. It's natural. Thank you. It's a little comforting to hear you say that. Iris gave a small smile. For a while after that, the two of us quietly gazed at the night sky, and then Iris murmured, Hey. What's wrong? You used a flying potion in the battle against the gluttonous dragon, didn't you? I wondered if it would work on me if I drank it. That was very sudden. Iris looked a little nostalgic for the old days when I replied. In the past, Felice used to say that she wanted to be a bird and fly freely. I'm also kind of interested in that. Well, why don't you give it a try? I took out two flying potions from my item box and offered one to Iris. I have plenty in stock. Feel free to drink them. Thank you. Then, I'll have one. We took our first sips of the flying potion at about the same time. We both float in the air. I'm used to it, but this is the first time for Iris to fly by herself with few wind blessing S+. Apparently, it was difficult for her to keep her balance, and she lost her posture in midair. Kaya, are you okay? I hold out my left hand toward Iris. Why yeah? Iris took my left hand in hers and tried to stand up, and almost fell over again. However, as she repeated it over and over again, she seemed to get the hang of it, and her posture eventually stabilized. Dot it's quite difficult. It was a good job for the first time. Then, let's try to gain altitude next time. How do I do that? Straighten your back and look up. Likely, like this. Iris stood up on her tiptoes. Then her body began to rise gradually. Iris was rising at a very slow pace, but that's how it goes at first, I guess. Iris was going up at about the same speed as I was, and I called out to her. Are you alright? I'm getting the hang of it. But if I'm not careful, I'm going to fall. Can I hold your hand? Of course. I'll support you, so you don't fall. Yeah, I'm counting on you. Iris answered and squeezed my left hand. The two of us then ascended into the night sky together. As soon as we reached an altitude where we could see all of Surya, we stopped for a moment. Dot beautiful, Iris said while looking at the town of Surya from a high altitude. The magic lamps here and there in the city are twinkling, illuminating the area with a soft light. It is as if there is a starry sky on the ground. Dot I wish Lily Chan could see it too. Next time, the three of us should try flying together. Yes, I am sure she will be very happy. Iris giggled, then squeezed my left hand a little tighter. I hope we can all continue to travel together. Of course. Dot how are things going for you, Iris? What do you mean by how? You know, there is a hidden third mission for there. God of War's Shrine Maiden, isn't there? I preface this by saying so before continuing. Then, doesn't there, Dragon God's Shrine Maiden? have a similar mission, one that she would give her life for. Dot I wonder. I responded for a moment and then answered. At least, I don't have any idea. I swear. Dot that's alright then. My impression of Iris was that she was not lying. However, I could not deny the possibility that there was actually a third hidden mission in the person's mind that they just don't know about. Iris is an important companion. Dot please don't suddenly disappear. I know. Foo foo. What's wrong? I'm so lucky to have you say that to me. The expression on Iris's face as she smiled was one of the happiest I have ever seen.